Brace yourself. I can see the end inside. Three, two, one, hardwired.
my dude. and welcome to the Aurora Series First Light Tournament. Thank you all for joining us today. I'm your host, Nerdy Bird. Sometimes my friends call me Artie. Just please don't talk to me if you're angry with me because I don't do well with angry people. With that being said, we are about to, we are introducing our brand new tournament circuit. So why don't we take a quick moment to introduce the entire circuit to everyone who's here today. So without further ado, let's take a quick look. Welcome to the Aurora Series, a brand new collegiate marginalized gender Valorant circuit. We're eager to show you all what we've been working on. So before registration goes live, let's break down how it all works. The Aurora Series is a tournament circuit, which means that multiple events will all ladder into one another. And this starts with our open qualifier stage. The first three events of Aurora Series will be the open qualifier. Three tournaments where any collegiate marginalized gender team can fight to be the best. These events will all run with the same format. Each event in the open qualifier stage will have a cap of 32 teams per event. Once registration closes, teams will be divided into groups, where they will fight through a best of one round robin style group stage to make it into the single elimination bracket stage. Group sizes and the number of teams that qualify from them will vary based upon the number of entered teams. The quarterfinals and semifinals will be best of three, while our main event grand final will be a full length feature best of five. Even if your team doesn't make it all the way to the top during first light, be sure to stick together. Teams placing in the top 16 of any open qualifier tournament will receive circuit points, which will help qualify them out of the open qualifier after the final one has concluded. If teams change players between open qualifier events, the points will carry over and stay with the university that the team registered under. After our open qualifier concludes, we move on to the playoff stage, where the top six teams that have accumulated the most circuit points during the open qualifier will get some time off with a direct invite to New Dawn, Aurora Series' biggest event of the year. In the meantime, the next eight teams on the circuit point ladder will receive an invite to Rebirth, our last chance qualifier tournament with two final tickets to the biggest stage of the season up for grabs. Rebirth will see these eight teams fighting to keep their season alive. They will enter a round robin group stage where only the top six teams will make it into the bracket stage. Then, as with our open qualifier events, the single elimination bracket will play out until two teams reach the grand finals. These two teams will still battle it out for seeding in the best of five grand finals, but both will earn a ticket to Aurora's biggest stage, New Dawn. We'll have more details on New Dawn later in the season for you, so keep your eyes peeled. We're so excited to welcome teams into the Aurora series, so here's a few final things to mention before registration opens. Teams must have at least three of the five active roster players be from the same school, instituting a three-fifths style rule, while the other two may be from other schools. So grab a group of friends and get ready to play. Can your team write a legacy in the stars? And welcome back. Now that we've taken a moment to introduce Aurora and First Light and what this entire tournament circuit's going to shake out to look like, let's also introduce our beautiful casters, Anima and Janice. Thank you so much for joining me here today. And I do know that you two have information regarding what teams we'll be seeing because we're covering group stage first, right? Absolutely, sir. First, we got Toronto Metropolitan University's TMU White playing against Grand Valley State University's Game Changers. I'm very excited for this match, first and foremost, not only because 
fun college teams, but hey, first time, first, uh, first tournament, first match of the series. I'm excited. And Janice, do you have any opinions about the teams that we'll be able to see during our group stage today? I haven't got to much dive too much into this match, but um, I'm from Michigan. Grand Valley State is like, you know, an hour drive for me. So if I have a preference, I'm leaning towards there. But I know TMU White's going to show up and really have a fun match either way. So I've not been able to see much from TMU White nor Grand Valley. However, our second match of the day that's taking place between Scarlet and Carlton, I have seen these two teams go head-to-head -head before. It was really awesome to see that. I'm excited to see how far they've come since then, since it was nearly a year ago the last time I actually got to cast them. So that's going to be exciting. But at the end of the day, I'm just your host. You two have to do all the heavy and hard work, and that is call all of the action while remaining unbiased as much as you possibly can. With that being said, I do know that you guys are going to have the opportunity to introduce what maps we're on. I might have heard what map it is, and I personally disagree with the map choice of every team. You two are more than welcome to call me crazy, but uh, yes, with that being said, have fun and take it away, you two. Thank you so much, Nerdy Bird. Anima, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. A uh, little bit of a late start to the morning, but outside of that, I'm just happy to cast some Valorant. Absolutely. And the weather, at least where I am, is starting to get a little bit nicer. So it's not completely just like I am buried in like six feet of snow. We're kind of vibing. My heater's working on like someone's. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Nerdy Bird. I'm sorry. Why? Why? <laughs> Jeff, you're mean to me. That is... For reference, everyone, I have two blankets on me right now. I am so cold. It is 56 degrees in my house. Skill issue. <laughs> oh, come on. Let's be a little bit nicer. Okay, uh, I'll be a little nicer. I'm the newbie here. I'm the newbie here. You guys know what you're doing. Throw as much shade as you want at me. Just don't throw it at the teams. That's all that I ask. You should be throwing heat your way instead. That also would be appreciated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of heat, we are going to be headed to a nice, uh, very warm location for our first map of the day. Uh, I believe we already got the map picks and bands. And we have struck all the way down to bind for this best of one between Grand Valley and Toronto Metropolitan. Uh, yeah, I know bind, little bit of a, maybe not controversial map pick, but not everybody's favorite. And I'm excited to see how both teams handle a map where the comps are relatively static, all things considered. It's been a really similar meta that has been played for the last couple of months on this map, right? Not a ton of changes. You're still rolling out with very similar composition. You know a raise is going to be a staple here. I mean, you have been seeing the Reyna or maybe a Jet being thrown in there, or even a Yor if you see at the, like, the high levels of play. But either way, it's been pretty similar for the controllers, the Sentinels, the Initiators. I'm excited to see what we're going to get, though, either way, because you can always see something weird coming out once we get to Agent Selections. What do you expect we're going to see today? I mean, given that it's mined, it's probably going to involve a Raze, a Sky, a Brimstone, and a Viper. But that last pick, there have been a lot of different uh, meta adjustments, especially since Champions and Game Changers Champions. Uh, we've seen the Yoru get a lot more popularity with teams like Shopify and Sentinels running it. Uh, Chamber has uh, picked up in popularity over in EMEA, uh, but I wouldn't be sleeping on the Cypher. He's always been a solid pick for Bind, but especially now uh, after the buff that he got a while back, those trips are very, very hard to deal with, and having a little bit of extra defensive uh, pressure can really help for sight holds on Bind. I, I absolutely agree. That Cypher pick for me is something that I've been seeing a lot, especially with like the premiere going on um, right now, the map being split. So I've been seeing a lot of Cypher, and those buffs are ridiculous, man. I hate those trips, especially when you get those sneaky Cypher players that are just like throwing these um, ones that you just can't shoot, and you're just like, all right, I'm, I walk in, I'm dead. That's how it be. Yeah, no, Cypher, always annoying to deal with. That being said, Bind isn't a map where Cypher is particularly uh he's not always going to be played but when he is he's very strong i'm more interested to see if we get more of an aggressive style that a, uh, a double duelist comp might provide i'm hoping we see some aggression you know it's our first series first series of this uh, tournament cycle either way i would love to see some really high fast aggression i want to see a good match either way um 
defensive holds either way. We hope we go the distance, maybe, even though we have a very long day. Again, this is their first of three best of ones, and then we also have our quarterfinals best of three later on tonight. TMU White will be starting on our attack once we get in there, and Grand Valley will be heading onto that defensive side. So I'm just really excited all the way around. I mean, this is my first <laughs> first really big <laughs> cast in a hot minute. I'm excited to work with you, especially. I've seen really good things from you. Yeah, I mean, I haven't been doing a lot since uh, since January, but you know, I've been I've been kicking around the scene a little bit. But I believe that you aren't going to have to look at us any longer. The Valorant action is about to begin. We're gonna throw it a game soon, and we're gonna be seeing what five agents they're gonna bring out. And already we see the double duelist. Yep. If you look over here, at TMU. Jet and Ray's already kind of locked in a stage potentially, which is more very old school. Um, um, bind, I believe. Am I correct? Yeah. Uh, the Viper is still like going all the way back to like the Ascend comp that won champions way back when. Uh, that was the Brimstone, the Viper, the Rays, the Sky, and the Sage. It seems like neither team is actually opting for that Viper, so we're going to be seeing a lot of aggression. But the Sage being brought in shows that these teams are willing to take fights, take them a little bit messier than normal, and just patch themselves up right back after. Gonna be a, fighting a lot for that truck control, getting onto that site. A lot of lives potentially, but if you look over at Grand Valley, you see Sadie already on the Cypher potentially, so opting to go with the single duelist in the Rays and Slim, and then Sadie playing that um, a Cypher to go for double uh, Sentinel. I'm excited to see, especially with them being on the defense first. That's going to be a really hectic first half if they lock yeah. that in. Select your especially agent. with the double duelist coming out for the side of TMU, you want that extra little bit of uh, stalling power, and while you don't have the Viper, Sage does have a lot of stall in her own right, and Cypher provides that little bit of extra oomph that might get the uh, the defense a little bit further over the edge. Comps are locked in. Anima, I'm very excited. This is Aurora Series' first light, the first tournament in this cycle. I am very excited for this. On the defense, we have Grand Valley State University. Game Changers on the right. On the attack, Toronto Metropolitan University's TMU White. Really fun compositions. Either side, very traditional style of bind. I just can't wait to get into this match. The <laughs> anticipation. And here we go. Yep. Get into the game already. Seeing a lot of presence over towards that uh, left side of the map from the attacking side of TMU White. I wouldn't be surprised if this is going fast up towards B, but that's right where the cypher is going to be set up. It's going to be a really big push, so this Cypher all by themselves, Sadie's going to be running into so much pressure, but I wait, let's look at this buy, you know, typical buy for both of these sides, so at least I believe Sadie will have some trips, will have some cages to hold out for themselves and wait for that retake. But yeah, the only having the Cypher there is going to be really, really important for Team U White to notice. They do also have Aloe Vera over towards Showers, poking around in much the same way that you'd normally see a Viper, but they're not going to have much play this round. Seed Toad already grabbing so much pressure with that Stim Beacon, and here we go, execution on B, inevitable. Ellie on this jet, just looking out, waiting for anything. Trailblazer goes out, trying to spot anything. Sadie playing very safe, but the rotation from Grand Valley is already on its way. The Brinstow Smoke will hold off on Garden. And now they're stuck between a rock and a hard place, but it looks like they are going to want to execute this. But the reinforcements have arrived for Grand Valley. Smokes go out. Spike attempts to go down, but it's going to be stuns and flash but It's going to be the kills first going to TMU. Trigger Sheet finds two with the nade. Sadie able to trade these out as well as Biscuit. But it's going to be Sugar Sheet and Sammy staying alive. The flank. Grand Valley State left to one player left, and that'll be a 1v2 situation if the spike makes its way to the A side. That lurk. In dividends. Yeah, and the wall plays so deep. That's going to force Toria to go up planted. through uh, CT all the way into heaven. That is exactly where Team U White wanted her to go. Flash out. So let's find anything. Toria still stuck in their spawn. Sees the wall. Knows the play. No util. Just a classic in hand. Two enemies playing locked and showers. They're going to be able to hear this jump too. Just patient play for the site of TMU White. The Flash going to confirm that Toria is somewhere on site. There's the drop. The drop might be audible. I will not die here. 
Going for the hold. Gets a headshot. That could be close, Satoria, but still, I don't think there's enough time at all whatsoever. The spray through comes through. Sammy cleans things up. And TMU White will get the first round. Very strong play right off the bat. They don't keep any alive, but I think it was only classics for the two TMU White players, so not the biggest loss. And all five going for full shield inspector. No judges, no um, marshals or anything. This is a tournament. We are banning Outlaw for this first tournament, just so you guys folks know. So the new gun from Valor will not be allowed in this tournament. So no big snipers just racking body shots and clearing things out in the second round. But it's going to be a pretty spread default for the side of TMU. So no big pushes or anything. Just trying to grab some space, clear things out. Meanwhile, the defense playing a 2-3 setup, leaning towards A and potentially going for a shower push. Grabbing orb control, and yeah, Biscuit will be just one more point away from that ult. Well, not one more point, one more towards the ult. Trailblazer does get hit trip. Yeah, that's really important. Again, based on the pistol round, you can kind of assume that Cypher's probably going to be towards the B site here. Is, does TMU White actually want to... Go out into this. No, the spike is still handing out A. Those two members of A are still here, and uh, Grand Valley has already brought in two people for the rotation. So that's going to be looking like a callback potentially to just hold still. Some spot. Sugar She will get a couple shots with that Spectre. Backs out. So some light damage done to Biscuit. With 46 seconds remaining, TP still available, but it's going to be Holy looking smoke. like this Stim A site is going to be the play. Stim Beacon, it smokes out. That should be a very free plan until so Grand Valley with Classic are going to have to go for a very difficult retake now. Yeah. Granted, it is 5v5, and in numbers, those Classics can do a lot of damage. Plus, Toria still has the wall. If they can get into a good enough position, she might consider investing it. But this is just going to be so hard for Grand Valley State to work their way back into. Especially Sugar Sheen and Sammy already fighting to so much pressure. Not a lot can be done. Toria with a classic looking for anything. Sadie still potentially trying to push into lambs, but it's going to be a death squad waiting for them. Spike still playing for truck. Nothing cleared out. Share shots misses. Flawless round for TMU White. The Spectres go absolutely crazy, and they have won their second round, and now they're on their bonus. And I know the X has already disappeared from the minimap, but. If you look at where all the deaths occurred for Grand Valley State, you can see that TMU White was letting them have as much access to the back of the site as they wanted. They went for the classic Sage, Plant, and Wall for Truck. But the post-plant positions that they were holding were very well set up to counteract the weaker weaponry on the side of Grand Valley State. And they just played the Spectres to perfection, not losing a single one Stim and Beacon keeping the Spartans strong. Very fast push right off. Rip, Stim Beacon, and us. Gonna be invested here on A short. Smoke out there, the clear and slim. Trying to play tough, trying to find a huge angel. It's gonna get flashed out. Here comes Sugar Chief, but it's gonna be taken down. Slim finds one and finds another one, and that's the spike down. As Sammy's finally able to take down the raids, but the spike left in A short, left in that little cubby, and all the TMU are now just trying to fight a way, find a way to fight back in. Not going to be a whole lot of give for the side of Grand Valley State here. The Cypher has all the B locked down, so they can just rotate all three players Healing. to A. And they're just going to have such a hard time playing back into this. Weapon disadvantage for TMU. They are on their bonus, so not something absolutely, like, works. But they're going to try and get into this. Here comes the dash into the smoke. This was able to take down Sammy through the spam. Finally taken down, but not before taking Aloe Vera and leaving things into a 1v3 alley. Pushing into lamp, seeing if they can get these 1v1s, but a timing absolutely brutal, and UA will be able to find that kill. Three for Survivor Grand Valley as they get on the board. Yeah, not exactly the ideal situation. Obviously, you want to keep all those guns, uh, all those guns into the next round, but you're able to deny the plant. You only have to rebuy two, and honestly, on bind, a judge might as well be as good as a rifle. Uh, and actually, we're gonna see Biscuit buy up into a judge just to sort of mitigate the economy a little bit more what a way biscuit one away from that orbital stripe on the other side sugar she and sammy already also won both of these duels <laughs> ultimates ready to be popped at a moment's Blinded. notice with just a killer and alt orb and it's going to be tmu white playing things slowly going for a little bit of shower control this time once again time and prowling up b long but there's a wall invested very early into this round in showers yeah just 
Sage being able to stall things out, Grand Valley identifying that TMU White really like to get some sort of Shower's Presence. There's the What's rotations. That? Yeah. You, That's all five. Yeah, Grand Valley is very paranoid. They're already here on A, but the spike has been just hanging out on B. The spike is going to go down for basically free uh, if they can get past these trips, so it's going to be a full retake situation for Grand Valley, most likely, and yeah, that looks like exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. Seeker's I'm available kinda, for Sammy. I'm kind of curious. That Cypher Cam, if it's the one that I'm thinking of, should be able to spot long. Yeah, but here comes the Seeker, Sammy. They're understanding this site is completely clear. Those um, little cabbages are going to go right into the spawn, finally taken down, but not before the rest of the team who are able to get onto the site. Spike planted, and here we go, 5v5 retake situation. Overall strike not here for the offense quite yet. Now Lil Vera is still stuck on B2. Judge in hand, healed up, plenty of spam damage done, and it's going to be Ellie finding first blood, taking down Sadie in the back of Elbow, and Molly's going to take down Biscuit. That's absolutely devastating. Rifle picked up the slip, trying to find anything, finds the first kill, goes for the flick, but Ellie's able to take down UA. 2v4 situation. Only one member of the attacking side taken down, and Toria still trying to get past this wall. Spike takes standing. down, and the uh, corner is available for Slim. Opponent's able two. to find one is Toria. Finds a second, potentially doable. No, not able to do it. Alovera finds the last kill, and TMU win the first rifle round. 3-1 to one now. Again, TMU White showing that they're perfectly content playing these 5v5 retakes because their sight holds are just working. Grand Valley State isn't being given any sort of way back in. The Sage Wall is being used exactly how TMU wants it and routing Grand Valley State into positions that they don't necessarily want to be in. And it keeps forcing these really awkward retakes out of them that they just haven't found a way to navigate yet. Weird fly coming out from Grand Valley on this defense. Now watch their rifle round, that first rifle round. So really devastating, but Slim tried to make a play with that ghost. Not going to find anything. Showstopper comes out for Sugar She. And it's pincered as Toria falls with, with Ali pushing showers. Spike's going to go down relatively for free. Biscuit trying to get some spam damage with that classic. Not going to find much. Finally taken down. And that's going to be already two players remaining for the side of Grand Valley on this retake. Sadie with a judge. Just going to be left to try and do anything as they're... Teammate UA in heaven. And I almost wonder, Sadie, I don't know if she's going to be able to get a kill right now. I wonder if she's overplayed her hand just a little bit. And it's not going to matter. They've fallen in. Yeah, UA with a Sheriff, seeing if they can do any damage. A couple of these players are like tagged up a little bit, but the spike already ticking so fast. These players playing so close, playing so hungered in together. They don't have to be aggressive, they're just going to try and save these rifles as long as they can. UA looking for any chip damage, not going to find it. Four on the board for TMU, and they are starting to roll here on Bind. Yeah. Going back to the flank from Cypher earlier, I'm kind of surprised that we haven't seen as much aggression out of the side of Grand Valley State. I know that they do only have the one duelist, but Team U White don't have a proper Sentinel to play with, and the character that most uh teams would run for the sort of like flank watch and lurk control viper isn't there for tmu white so there's a big opportunity for grand valley state to start pushing out and getting more aggressive to sort of counteract that uh lack of flank control but they just haven't done it as much shower control seems to be the name of the game this kid going for a peek at but sugar she and sea toad holding that angle Nicely, Toria going to push out, trying to make a play. Already down numbers so early on in this round. Prowler, even from the opposite side, from B, from UA, is not going to really get too much. It will clear a little bit of space out for Toria, but UA is now stuck in gardens. Could be running into two members of TMU. Will they be cleared? Yeah. The trip will get early info. Yeah, Sammy's found it, but UA is able to find one. Tries to go for the second. No. Able to be traded out by Ellie. Running into the Cypher setup is this Jed, dashes out, Sugar She's able to find one in short. It's going to be a 2v4 situation, and Sadie's alone on the side, finds one, can't find another. Sea Toad able to go for the trade, and now once again, it's down to the Sage by themselves. The Spike goes down, Toria left in a 1v3 situation, nearly insurmountable at the rate that this is going. I think she will have enough to buy next round, so she might try and get some play back into this. But 
definitely not an easy situation to deal with. And the crossfires look good for Team Me White. Has to go and make a play. One playing Hookah. One playing Garden. One playing the TP for a very long trade, but Spike Ticks planted in such an awkward position. Here's the tap. Yeah. Flick is good for Toria, able to find one, knows where the last two members are, but they I have to get onto the spike it. now, they gotta get it to half. Goes for the heal, unable to find that kill, Aloe Vera wins the stage 1v1, and we are already halfway through this attacking side for TMU, and they are feeling very confident, you expect the timeout soon. On the bright side, Grand Valley State does have four ults on the board, they don't have the Seekers quite yet, but ultimately the Cypher does provide a lot of info, so having the Seekers not the hardest thing to mitigate or not having the seekers is not the hardest thing to mitigate but they need to figure out a way to use these ults to get something going they need to figure out a way to get back in and they have to figure out a way to either prevent tmu white from getting on the sites in the first place or figure out a way to retake them and it's gonna be looking like a b a short push so exactly what you're saying they're trying to get a little more aggressive trying to find anything but low is holding this angle slim's got to be very careful only Ghost in hand, it's a very important crossfire, and Aloe is able to easily win that with that Phantom Spray. Nothing much Slim can do in this situation, and the Spike is already sprinting its way towards B. They understand that it's going to be just this Cypher here on the side by themselves. Here comes the dash out. Ellie is going to get tripped, potentially spam through, and yes, Sadie's able to find that kill. And here comes the reinforcements from Grand Valley trying to find anything, but the Spike should be able to go down. Nothing to delay, nothing to stop this spike from going down. Yes, it's going to be a 4v4 retake situation. Rest available for Toria. One player on in the box, Spectre in hand, has to be forced to heal super early. Not much from there, and smoke goes down, goes up, and Biscuit's able to get that trade. 3v3 situation, weapons once again still not in favor of Grand Valley, but they are looking oh, to fight as best they can. Here comes the Ultimate Strike, Biscuit. Look at the clear side, it's always able to find Sea Toad. The last two members playing away. Playing from Garden and the TP, a flash out. Sammy knows where that opposite sky is. An attack is going to be absolutely huge. Spam through, spike half. Biscuit able to find one. Left to a 1v2 situation. Forced to reload. Sammy can't win it now. A 3k for Biscuit, but there's no time on the board whatsoever. So TMU will survive. And it's a huge clutch coming out from Toronto. Wow. I really like the investing of the ultimates from Grand Valley State. It was just, I think the orbital strike was a bit off. You know that they've been playing Garden. You have no reason to su suspect that they won't play Garden. Why not just ult Garden? Especially if you don't have a smoke to cover it. But ultimately, they figured it out. They figured out how to retake the sites, and they did it with weaker weapons. So now, Grand Valley State, they know how to get back in. They just have to execute now that they're on a full buy. They'll have the Seekers saying, do that that showstopper from Slim if they want to make a big play, but that Flash is not going to catch anything, so no big aggressive plays for aim main, but it's going to be Sadie playing such a risky angle, is able to find one, nearly finds a second, but Tori is there for the trade, and looks to go find for another as Biscuit is able to find that, Spike is now left here in Sands, but that's going to be sprinting towards that B site. 2v2 situation, and we're not even 30 seconds in, the low Vera getting the heal off for their jet. That will be the B side open. It's gonna be a two v two retake. What just happened? I like the aggression for the side of TM or for the side of Grand Valley State. It's just one trade too few. Not able to come out in time. They do still have the numbers after the res. But still, very risky situation that they find themselves in. Showstopper could absolutely be huge, but they're gonna have to find a way to clear these players out. Sage 1v1 here. Toria's gotta win this out. They want a chance to get another round, and they do win it. A 1v3 situation. Ellie will have knives, a cloud burst, and an updraft. But the spike's already tapped. They don't know where this last player is hanging out. Spike looking to get half. We'll be able to, too. We've gotta win this out, and they do. Ellie falls, and Grand Valley State will be able to get their second round on the board. Excellent stuff from them. An okay, excellent heads up play from like UA. After realizing that Long is cleared, yet? Garden's cleared, there's only one more place that Ellie could have been. UA just able to get the kill, able to secure another round on the board for Grand Valley State. It was a big investment though. Two ultimates invested, both the res and the seekers, and on the other side, Sugar She once again one away from that showstopper. Knives still available after like feels like forever. And a res for Aloe Vera, and one away from the orbital strikes. So really big ultimates coming out from TMU. And they're looking to hit A hard. 
That was a really instinctive wall. Wow. Really well, unfortunately, not gonna do that much. Team U White just kind of blaze on to site yet again. Shower's gonna be pushed. Biscuit's able to find one. Is gonna be take. Um, they do lose their race. So a four v four situation. And Dorian looking to get a very aggressive. This has three members of TMU and they're able to find that Sage. So it's going to be the spike going down here on the A side unless Biscuit can say anything about it. No, Showers is cleared. Sito will make their way onto the site. Orbital Strike in hand if they want to get this Sage Wall out. So much needing to be done from these retakers. UA, Sadie. Don't see anything. Finds ahead. Sadie unable to finish the kill. Three players playing here. And lamps, a sage wall to break through. The heal comes out for Sadie, uh, Sammy. Pardon me. Here comes Uwe, trying to find anything. The spray through just won't be able to find anything. Sadie left to do it by themselves. Cage triggered. Trying Cage to go for triggered. a sneaky tap. We'll be able to go for one. Looks finds the first head. That's a start. Goes for a second tap. Flashed out. Tries to jump out of there, but it's gonna be a 3K for the Brimstone for TMU. They are seven here in round nine. Yeah, really nice flash from Sammy right there. Way to play the numbers. But more importantly, Grand Valley State has their economy full reset. That one round win that they won, it's coming back to bite them. They don't have the full loss bonus anymore. And so that means that they're pretty much just going to be left with these weaker weapons. Presumably, they'll be able to buy next round. Uh, I think yeah, they, they should be the with economy. This economy. Yeah. But it's still just something to be careful about. It looks like they're going to try to get aggressive with the weaker weapons again. All these smokes now potentially prowler in it, but here's the showstopper for showstopper. Sugar she's able to find one, and somehow Slim doesn't find anything, but they're able to get one, not before being traded out by Sammy. So, 3v4 situation. Toria's already found. Just Spike stuck player. right there. Sage Wall's gonna go out. Spike goes down relatively easily, and Retaker's gotta be huge. Biscuits unable to find anything. Sadie can't do anything as well, and Toria's left to do it by themselves once again. Keep seeing the Sage having to do so much so late into this round. The spike's already down. Four players to clear out. Finds the first gun barrel. Able to find one. Goes for the flick. Unable to find Ellie. Eight on the board for TMU, and they are absolutely dominating here on Bind. Again, just really well set up for the post plant. Really well played in terms of the crossfires. Way to just play the numbers, not get too over aggressive. They've done such a good job at not letting Grand Valley State get back onto the sites. And now they've shown that they can overwhelm a site. Granted, it was on uh it was against a weaker buy, but still very good sign for Team White for both the rest of the game and the rest of the tournament. Here we go, round eleven. G Grand Valley State has two more rounds that they want to bring it back and make their attacking side as easy as possible. You know, we were talking about earlier in this half. Double Sentinels for Grand Valley. This is a composition that seems to be really great on the defense, but just hasn't formed out that way. TMU has been absolutely overwhelming this defense. And even still, playing a very slow default. Plenty, they did get B short pretend, uh, pressure, though. All the way there, if you can look at that. And potentially could hear these rotates. It's going to be a flash out TP play. And now three members leaning towards this A side. Rotations have it come through, and if you can. Slim in a huge position to potentially getting this killing. Yes, and that's the spike! Spike down A. Huge flank from Slim. Gonna push all the way up. Now, let's just see if Grand Valley can actually hold on to the spike. See who's going to be invested from TMU White to try and play back into this. And he is going to be so strong at shutting him down. That's going to be so much damage, and you always have to find Sammy. So, what turned to be disastrous. Well, a very slow route turns out Slim a. getting a 3k, UA finding one, and it's Ellie left to do it. The spike is basically in their spawn with 23 seconds remaining. This is a disaster round for TMU. All the way around. Slim will be able to find the final kill. 4k for the raise, and it's the momentum exactly what you want going into the last round of the half. Round before the switch. And especially with that 4k, Slim who initially was not projected to get another ult on by the end of the half, there's an outside chance that she can wind up with a showstopper in a very crucial moment. However, I'm assuming that orb is probably going, or the shower's orb is probably going to go over to Biscuit, so that way the orbital strike can get online. But still, two big ultimates to keep in mind for this last round of the half. 
going to be relatively safe for both of these sides. So that spike this time just can be planted, you know, um, kept a little further back, but Orb Control seems to be in the game. Biscuit forced to run away. The spray through just a little too strong. And yeah, that orbital strike will not be available just quite yet as the orb is pushed back. But still, very slow play. Trailblazer will jump out. Don't think it hit that trip quite yet. So Got the still going to be unaware, but here comes the spike. 30 seconds into this round. They're still playing this very well. You is going to be able to Let's find that, but it's going to be slim finding the first pick, actually. And that's the spike. Huge hookah play from this raise, and um, Boombot's not going to find much. There's a little bit of details right there. It's got to be a slim finding another kill. Two kills for fight. the raise, but before they fall, it's left to a 3v4 situation. Smoke goes out. They're playing the safe as possible. Sadie's playing in a really big They've got off another angle. flank as well. Yeah, oh, UA has to come up here. has to get at least one, but won't be able to do it. Ellie's was completely prepared the crosshair. Perfect as it's now even everything out. 3v3 is slow to try and stop these defend uh, attackers coming onto the site. Left. It's going to be Toria seeing whatever they can do to slow things down. Page tells to clear things out. Left to stand on boxes by themselves and they can't hold the site. It's going to be a 2v3 situation. What turned to a huge advantage for Grand Valley has turned to a huge disadvantage. They're left to try and clear as many of these attackers. No utility for Sadie. Flash going to be spotting the cipher out. They really Meanwhile, wish Biscuit. they had that orbital strike. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, no, there no. it is in the pocket, but looking to still get aggressive is Biscuit. And they will be able to find a 2v1 situation now. Sugar Sheet holding showers by themselves. Here comes the orbital strike. Force to push out against Sugar Sheet. Orbital strike does so much damage and is able to clear out Biscuit. 3k for the Brimstone. And Grand Valley State University will make this a 4 to 8 half. Absolutely huge comeback coming out from Grand Valley State University's Game Changers. Switching side. And great job by Sadie and Biscuit to mentally reset after losing two of their teammates and starting to go down on the down on numbers. They're able to reset. Great plays by Biscuit to get both of the players in lamps by herself. Right and here. And then just a phenomenal heads up play to know that the last player has to be Showers. So Grand Valley State able to get a little bit of momentum going back into this attack side. They do have a slightly weaker comp for the attack, but on the other side, TMU White does have a slightly weaker comp for the defense. So as long as uh, they can prevent Ellie from getting an op online, Grand Valley State have the potential to go on a bit of a run. Well, good like B Orb Control is the name of the game for the defense. TMU looking to just get that B long control. And meanwhile, Grand Valley State now on the attack once again, just holding A short, but it's going to be showers push. Already for TMU, it's going to be looking like a really big fast hit for the side of the attackers. Slim taking first contact, looking to find anything. Pushing into lamps, not going to find much. The spike should be able to go down relatively easy. Sadie trying to hold this angle, will be able to find it. The ghost headshots run clean. And now Sugar Sheet knows the Cypher is on that flank, but the spike is down. 5v4 situation, TMU are down people, and Sadie backs out smartly. So the shower control still right remains TMU's but the spike is behind this wall sugar sheet looking to break it Ellie finally here for reinforcements and here comes the clearing out the flash out Ellie looking to find anything will be able to find slim so 4v4 situation evened out again but spike continues to tick Ellie continues to hit headshots though the second one found a third for the jet and Sammy joins in the fun but the molly comes out Sadie able to find one the spike still needs to be defused I don't think there's time they might have been able to get half. One enemy remaining. No. Nope. Yeah, the spike does get half, but Sadie's able to hold things on. A huge molly at the end for the Brimstone, and Grand Valley State wins their first pistol. Biscuit coming up huge, holding things down. It's concerning that the retake wasn't there, or was there for Grand Valley State. The site hold wasn't there for TMU White. But at the same time, Biscuit able to save the day with the lineup. Preventing either of the TM or either of the Grand Valley State players from getting onto the spike. It, I just need to see more. And Grand Valley still down three rounds. Potentially, you assume they would win this round with the huge weapons advantage, winning that pistol does. But still, a long ways to climb, a long ways to go if they really want to change. Aggressive out of food. Oh yeah, TMU is already down B short. And it's going to be countermanded by this really fast towards A short. It's just the Sage left to do it. Are they going to expect? Someone on the flank. 
Potentially not the Cypher Trip. So, that'll be something. I just don't still know, playing? know how many. They're still playing from truck, though. They're still going to be playing as if they have this ace short control. They have lost it completely, and the Molly's going to come out. Seatail's going to fall, so Biscuit's able to find one, but that Molly is out of play. Slowing down this retake from the flank, and that's going to be some very low health defenders trying to retake this. Here. And although Vera's able to find one here from, at, um, from CT, but Yui is able to trade that out. About time with that Bulldog. Classic out for Ellie, not able to find anything. Biscuit goes, but is traded out. 2v3 situation. Spike trying to get tapped, but it's going to be the mow down from Sadie and Tori at the Sentinels. Hold things down 6 to 8. Grand Valley Statens, they're able to hold on three of these weapons. Yeah, and most importantly, they do hold on to both of the Bulldogs that they brought into the round. So that's something that they can lean on going into this bonus round. I believe uh, Tori has still also had a Ghost in her back pocket, so that can just get dropped over to Slim. And ultimately, not a bad buy coming out for Grand Valley State. Yep, yeah, they'll still like have the three rifles. The this time. Yep. Biscuit already halfway towards that orbital strike. Now on the attack inside. That could be absolutely huge if you feed these orbs, feed those spike plants. But Guiding Light, be long control once again for TMU. That's the same third time they've done this now. Just looking to play Ellie's, but Ellie's looking to get aggressive. Flash out to find fight showers. And yeah, all TMU have put showers and Ellie's now kind of stuck here on B long. Both Clappers have to invest, be invested super early and they've lost a little bit of garden. Nothing hookah, but the rotates are going to be coming in. Grand Valley State have pushed all the way through A. They know where this attack is coming. It's going to be a very fast brawl. Cage triggered. Here comes the initiation. Wall up towards elbow. It's going to be broken fairly easily, but the spike should go down just as easily. So 5v5 situation, as I was saying. Grand Valley able to get that spike down. But the rotates are available for TMU with one on that flank and Sugar She's able to find it. Toria falls and the race is now going to be a pain in the backside of Grand Valley. They are forced to play on this site right into Ellie's hands and that's exactly where you want it. But Sadie kills the flank, finds one, finds a second is the Cypher, but Ellie's able to trade things out. Slim forced to move to attack. Ghost finds one, but it's a 2v1 situation. Sadie left to do it with 16 health, goes for the spam through. Not going to be able to do it as the spike is diffused. A ninth round for TMU as Grand Valley State. University do not win their bonus round. Looking to do any more damage, but Sadie won't be able to do it. So rifles now can be in the hands of Grand Valley State University as we go here into round eight sixteen. And also very important, Sadie forced to hold on to that bulldog. I think she had an opportunity to pick up a gun that uh Sugar She would have dropped, but not quite able to find it. Grand Valley State, they do still have a good buy. They're one off the res. Uh biscuit. Coming close to that orbital strike, that's going to be huge. On the other side, orbital strike also two away, so the ult starting to rack up. B is Grand Valley State leaning towards B. Ellie goes for a play with that trail blizzard, not able to find the shot, forced to back out. As they, I think they saw like at least two or three of these members here at B long, but they're already stacked towards this site, the defense, so they'll be able to just hold on. Still playing things nice and slow. Keep the paces wherever they want it, but early smoke towards elbow for the side of Grand Valley State University. Countermanded Grenade. by smokes from the defense. Slim locked out of there. Trying to find any damage with those pain shells. Not really. We'll just be able to clear a little bit of space. Still under a minute to go. Plenty of time to rotate out of here. They're opting to just hold as Sadie pushes towards shallow. Potentially good for a pick. No phaser out, Sammy. They'll spot a couple of these members, and yeah, that's going to be Ellie backing up a little bit. Molly yeah. out from Hookah, and there's the TP play for the entire side, but Sugar She just on Sadie. That's going to be a 4v5 situation. A slow going to hold these attackers so terribly. Slim potentially goes for a pick if they're able to find it, but no. Slim falls. Sugar Sheet wins that raise 1v1. Rez is already going to be invested early. Trying to even the numbers out, but it's a little too late. But Aloe Vera gets cleared out. Sugar Feed finds a third with the Guardian. Ellie joins the party. Showstopper available. Finds one. Toya up in the air as Sito clears things out. An excellent defense for TMU as they get the double digits. Yeah, I really like what Sadie did there, trying to play off the timing of the wall being broken. But unfortunately, that Sage is so good at slowing down showers with the wall and the slow orb. And there was just no play in for Sadie. Eventually, she had to take some sort of a risky fight once her team had already committed to taking the teleporter and there. just 
didn't go her way. That's one of those fights that makes her break the round, and unfortunately for Sadie, it ended up breaking it. Grand Val State forced onto a very weak body. The only rifle in the hands is their Cypher, Sadie. Looking to find a pick, but all five members of these attackers group on the A short. They will be able to spot Sugar She here hanging out on truck, and there's an early smoke just to slow things down. Pinch shells to clear the raise out, but slow, countermanded slim. Looking to see if they can find anything in this opposing brim smoke. But still, that's stacked here towards A. Not a lot of utils to be used. Only a blast pack for this raise, and this smoke is going to fade, so they're going to be left to just try and find any of picks, and those smokes fall. Slim just makes a play towards Lamp. Here comes the spike, trying to find anything, but it's going to have to be a pick needing to be found. Orbital Strike going to be invested towards Lamp. Clears that out, and Slim left to do it by themselves. Toria falls with that spike, but this is able to go down at the very last minute. Sadie, the only rifle remaining. Trying to find a pick as they're going to be trying to fight two of these defenders looking to retake towards the site. Molly line up in the back potentially, but here comes the tap of the spike. Tito able to find the slim and aloe vera grabs one 3k for the defending brimstone. The molly is good and that brings up orbital strike. Ellie falls 1v3 situation fights two on for the ace. Tito has to hold this and win this out. Smoke going to be invested. The spray through not good enough potentially. Yes, and that'll be the defenders holding on a 4k. Takes down the opposing 4k as Biscuit falls and Sea Toad will be the last brim standing. TMU, two away from taking bind. Yeah, that's a huge play out of Biscuit, but unfortunately the orbital strike just invested a tiny bit too early. I think with just a little bit later she might have been able to hold on, but... Still a phenomenal effort from Biscuit, working her way back into a round that she had no business being in in the first <laughs> place. But ultimately, it's not enough, and TMU White is able to get to 11. And more importantly, Ellie has that operator. You were mentioning that early on. The jet does allow that operator to be used much more easily and more predictably than most other composition, most other agents. You know, So that operator will be devastating, holding B long, and that's going to be so much pressure Ellie can put on once the attackers realize what they're running into. Assuming they don't get picked. Yeah. And Maybe this is effectively their Cypher. <laughs> cypher has so much control over B normally, but as we can see there, Jet can hold down B long, and there's just nothing that TMU White can do about this. They've lost, or Grand Valley State can do about this. They've lost their sky. They don't have a good way to get Ellie off the angle, unless Biscuit just takes the fight then and there. All right, Sammy able to get that trade, and Tori's just a little too slow for the trigger. Sammy pushes back into B, so a 3v4 situation for Grand Valley State. They're still waiting on these teammates to move over. 45 seconds remaining, but it looks like TMU might stack towards A. No information found on B. Yeah, it's going to be a full four stack for TMU and a free site for Grand Valley State if they're able to recognize this, but with 30 seconds remaining, 30 seconds left. they got to start making a move. I know exactly where Earl you are. going to be coming out. That'll give them a lot of information, but it also tells TMU exactly where Grand Valley are going. Well, that's the green light they needed. Tori is able to get the spike down for free, and potentially a Molly to slow things down. Paint Shell is going to be slowing down the defense for sure, and it's going to be a really big side hit slim. Looking for anything. Trying to be left in this corner, able to find one, goes for a second, none able to find it. Sugar She able to trade that out. 2v3 situation. Toria left to guard and by themselves. Looking to try and spam this spike. One player, Sadie held an elbow. Looking to find a huge crossfire, but can be Sadie able to get one left to do it by themselves. Trying to make a play. Tapping the spike is Sugar She left to low health. Sammy takes a little bit and is left to fight, but Sadie comes up with the 3k, holds things down and avoids match points. Grand Valley State University. The game changers have made it to seven. And unfortunately, I think it was Sammy just playing a little bit too far ahead of the spike. Normally in situations like that, you want the uh the diffuser and the uh person that's protecting them to not be on the same angle per se, but be on a little bit closer of an angle, so that way they have to swing out into both players. And they can't isolate the 1v1s like that. Anima, this is the yeah. first time TMU has been on a light, on a, a save. This is the first time in this half they have been rolling so far, and now they're finally left with pistols for the first time. And that's going to 
this. So it's supposed to be a very push. Fast push A, and Sugar She's able to find Biscuit. Showstopper out to countermand it, but that's already a man down for the side of TSU. But it's the Showstopper takes things a step further. Slim able to find two. That's going to make the numbers easily in Grand Valley State University's favor. They're able to find that out. GVSU looking to get themselves back to this match. Cypher Cage to push through for these two remaining defenders in TMU. Looking to find anything. Running with the rifles. Weapons disadvantage once again for Toronto. Three for me. 3k for Slim. Absolutely huge coming out for this great fast man remaining. through. Sadie joins in on the fun. A spike already getting to half for Sugar Sheet. Finally pushed out. Gets one, gets two. Potentially winnable. Yes! 4k for the race! Left to a 1v1 situation. Sadie versus Sugar Sheet once again. Spike tapped. Once again, has to be held. Tap on the spike and will not come in time. Sadie gets the kill at the last moment and what turned from a very easy 4v3 situation went down to the wire, but Grand Valley State University able to hold on at the very last minute. Sadie just doing so much for her team in these clutch situations. It's very good to have a safe pair of hands that can like sort of ride that sort of storm out. And Sadie and Biscuit have both done phenomenally at being that safe pair of hands for Grand Valley State, and it's let them get back in. But they don't have any ultimates online. They're three. They're one off of three of them. But Team U White currently do have a little bit of an advantage in that department. I did like their aggressive play that Team U did have with that huge shower push. Just the showstopper just completely blew up all that control they had for a little bit. But this time Grand Valley looking towards that B site. Two defenders here holding on. No operator for Ellie this time, just the Vanda, but Slim. I want to take a moment with Slim only having one clip of bullets remaining. 20, 36 bullets remaining. That could be come back to bite later on, potentially. It's a very risky situation. Only the one. Essentially, just one magazine. Yep. Team U's already pushed all the way through showers, and the rotations are starting to come through. A side is completely clear, so Grand Valley State has inadvertently left all the cards onto the table. They know, um, Team U knows exactly what's going on, but Grand Valley able to get the spike down potentially. Yes, we'll be able to get into playing it very safe, so they're going to be playing it a little bit further away. Nope, they're actually going to move that spike. So that's going to be planted for a more standard default situation. Ellie. Trying to lead the charge. Tip of the spear for this, but it's going to be Sadie exactly fighting that. first blood. And with partner, partner Crime Slim able to find that. Neural Staff can be invested. Slim allows the raise to get a second kill. Sadie left to do. Right. And Hookah finds Sammy. Can't find anything is the sky. And now it's going to be one player remaining. A low Vera. A name I haven't had to say too much in this half. In a 1v5 situation, able to find one, nothing else can be done. A 3k for the Cypher. 9 on the board for Grand Valley State University. They are back in this map. You know how I mentioned uh, at the start of the round that they were one off of three ultimates? They got every single one of them that round. They have the Sky, they have the Sage, and they have the Brim ults all online. Sadie also, with the 2k, was able to get uh, her Neural Theft online. And that ended up helping out a lot. Sadie and Slim just both locking down their respective areas okay, of the map. And let's get Grand Valley up. State starting to get a little bit of momentum going. And they're going up against another eco round from Team U White. So if they can weather this aggression, they're in a very good place to tie things up. Sugar She pushing it to the very common off angle, which is an oxymoron. But you, know, you always got to make sure you're clearing someone out here. But only a sheriff, so they got to hit their shots. So I've a got slow your play from Grand Valley State. Secrets can be invested in this, so there's Sugar Sheep flicked out, but able to find the first headshot, looking for a second, forced to reload, unable to find anything else. 4v4 situation, res available for Tori, and yes, they want to make sure this round is as clean as possible as they get to double digits. Potentially, they do have the ability for a TP play once this wall goes up, but it looks like, no, they're going to just plan safe, potentially. No, forced to back out. That wall breaks fast, but Fisk is able to take down Sea Toad, so no orbital strike available. Ellie's able to find one click. 4v3 situation, a Cypher here on the lurk, but that's going to be the TP play, as I was mentioning. Torio hooks it towards the B site, Sadie finds Ellie, stops those retakes, and that's going to be the spike going down for B in a 4v2 situation. The defenders, TMU White, left to try and retake in a very difficult situation. 
And that's exactly what I was waiting for Grand Valley State to do. You have the Cypher lurked all the way through B, just hit the Teleporter, don't even mess with the stack, and get that safe plant. And now they're set up in a really, really strong 4v2 post-plant situation. Yep, Slim just playing here in Elbow. Has the Sage right behind for the trade. Flash not going to find anything, and that's going to be Biscuit mowing things down. Slim gets a little bit of damage, but that's going to be the 3k for the Brimstone. Absolutely huge as Grand Valley State University have pulled within one of TMU White, and there is our first timeout of this match. What I've been waiting for for a hot minute, but TMU has started to slide, and what can we see on this defense that has been so difficult for both of these sides? What can TMU do to get themselves back with a little bit more momentum, Anima? I wouldn't be surprised if we see TMU White start pushing out of B a little bit more. They found a lot of success when they've been clearing A, but unfortunately B has just been so hard for them to retake. So I'd like to see them switch it up a little bit. You've got Sage playing great stall and showers. You've got Sky and Jet working really well together on B long. Just push out B long. Get some information with the Sky Flash. Just have Sage wall off showers and leave it alone for the most part. And then maybe get Raze or Brim to sit Hookah with a Judge and just wait for them to come to you. If it's B, then great. You have a setup where you can just push out, get aggressive for a little bit, and then fall back once you get the information. And if it's on A, sure, you do have to deal with the Brimstone ult for the retake, and you will have to deal with the Cypher trips that have been leaning towards protecting the flank from B. But you will also have a good flank and ways to force them to play in hookah or sorry play into lamps or showers where you have a brimstone ult of your own to deal with them tmu white on a four round losing streak as grand valley state university has clawed their way back from a four to eight half to ten to eleven they are one round away from tying things up and if they win this round tmu are going to be forced to fight for overtime Smoke's going out. It's going to be a very fast hit into the A, so that B pressure that you were talking about is exactly what TMU did, but Grand Valley State countermands that, and they've reached A fairly easily, planting for triple box. Orbital Strike going to be Hero Truck, but that's not where the Spice planted, so Grand Valley State at University, and they have outplayed Team White, but Aloe Vera finally from heaven able to get one. Orbital Strike going to be invested very early for Biscuit. No utility for this Brimstone, as it was just a TP from the defenders trying to get anything that's gonna not do too much but ua finds one finds a second tucked here but the wall goes up torius gotta get it they have to break this wall into the half aloe vera trying to find anything left to do nothing aloe vera falls and s look at that tmu and grand valley state university are tied up here where it's 11 11. Yep. and a lot of ults invested, but you're two off that showstopper, and getting to 11 is so crucial. TMU White's economy, not the greatest. They're forced to go down to a Judge, uh, a Stinger, or not a Stinger, a Spectre for Sammy. Not exactly the ideal buy. But again, really? I'd like to see TMU White get a little bit more aggressive out B instead of just sitting back so much. Not a lot of passive information for TMU. That's the one thing about their composition. It doesn't bode well, but here comes the Stim Beacon for Biscuit. Following Slim. Tip of the spear for this Grand Valley State University squad. Spike will be planted for long, and Slim goes for one, finds a second. Nearly, but Aloe Vera is able to get that trade out. Sugar Sheet with that showstopper helps clear things out, but that's a piece of utility they won't have, but a spam through from the Sage is going to be huge, and here comes Sammy for the reinforce from the TP. Ellie's got to find one at least. Unable to find the Sage. Tori able to stay alive by the nick of their teeth. They're slow to try and wait for reinforcement. The spike is still gone down. Time is ticking. Ellie's got to try and find anything, but won't be able to do it. Biscuit and UA find their picks. Aloe Vera forced to hold things down. Barely gets it to have. No, not even. Sugar She left to try and hold this as long as they can. Finds nothing. Biscuit with a 3k match and series point for Grand Valley State University. Match point. And unfortunately, it seems like Team U8 is just playing things a little bit too hesitantly. Like I said, I've been wanting to see aggression out be long for them, and they haven't really gone anywhere. They've pushed out showers, sure, but they barely ever actually go past the shower door and these sight holds are starting to not work out especially well for them they don't have that extra stall power that the cypher brings that 
GVSU were relying on. So they've had to try and mix things up, and unfortunately it just hasn't worked out for them. Knives out for Ellie. Sheriff. Biggest rifle weapons they have for this defending side. If they want to bring our first match here in Aurora series to an overtime. Gun barrel spotted out. I don't know if Ellie's recognized that. I'm staying. Bulldog's gonna be able to find that. So Slim falls. It's a huge first pick for the side of TMU to get themselves back in this. Things slow down. Spike still leaning towards B. All of Grand Valley State is still leaning towards B. But thus passive information from A requires one or two members of the defense to still stay on the A side. So it's still a weak hold here on B. Just to save to slow things down. And Ellie holding hookah. A very, very patient round this time. GVSU trying to figure out where they can go, but they're scared to go back towards A because they don't have any information about what's over there. So now we see the spike just sitting outside of the teleporter on B-Long, just waiting to figure out where they can go with it. I think it's probably going to be back towards left. A, but... Unless they can clear the out. 26 seconds I remaining. And say he's able to find Ellie. That's an absolutely huge pick because it activates the neural theft. 44 situation. 20 seconds to move. Grand Valley State University looking towards this B site. Toria has to find these picks or wait for the reinforcements to try and get them for it. 12 seconds remaining. They have to get onto this site. Knife in hand. Looking for the plan. A blast pack to slow things down. But Biscuit's able to find the pick. 3 before situation. Biscuit finds a second. Finds a third. Sugar She looking to do anything. They will not be able to do it. Grand Valley State University takes takes the map, takes the series, and they will be our first winner here in the Aurora Cup series sponsored by the Xfinity. It's just a phenomenal comeback from them. <laughs> Going all the way back from 4-8 to eight, all the way to 13-11. to 11. Sure, They lose a little bit on the attacker side, but ultimately they showed resilience, they showed strategy, and I'm very, very excited to see how both of these teams do in the rest of the tournament. Because that was a very close game, and... Ultimately, it's only the first best of one of the day. There's still a lot of Valorant left to be played. Absolutely. Nerdy Bird. We're going to have Nerdy Bird come in in like a hot second. Hey, look at that. Hey, that. You warmed <laughs> up from that first match. Nailbiter all the way to the end. What do you think about that? Okay, so I love your choice of language referring to warming up because I can't feel my fingertips. But with that being said... I have some insider intel for both of you. That match, incredibly close. All the other group stage games that were coming in up until about the halfway point when I just kind of started looking at the screen and zoning out because everyone loves ADHD. Everything up to that point was 13-0. and 0. So oh, wow. these two teams have set the bar insanely high being the first team on broadcast, but not to mention to take it the farthest. I predicted we'd go into OT rounds, but, you know, I'm in the prod room. And like there's we're not there yet and i'm like but i'm predicting it because i like to be everyone's bane of their existence and predict ot's in the very first round of the day with that being said that was an incredible first series honestly i think you two deserve a quick break and everyone involved also deserves a quick break so we'll hop to a quick one let everyone get set up and ready to go for later and we'll be back here in just a few minutes so don't go anywhere the sound back to the sound <laughs>
Welcome back to the, to the Aurora Series First Light Broadcast. I'm your host, Nerdy Bird. Alongside me is Anima and Janice. We just had one heck of an incredible first game. So with that one in the books, what do you anticipate going into our next one between Scarlet and Carlton, considering all the things that we discussed before we hopped back into our broadcast? Yeah, we were talking about this quite a bit during the break, but this is a grudge match. We've been fully briefed on the happenings of Scarlet versus Carlton uh, between a qualifier for an Arlington land and then playing at the Arlington land itself. These two teams have a lot of history and I'm very excited to watch it play out. All right, Janice, with that, with this information coming out from Anima and I, what do you think, how far do you think this next series is going to go? Considering our last one almost went to OT, do you think we're going to go see OT group stage second series of the day? If it's anything, I like. I hope we keep going the distance with these matches. I mean, I love these teams training blow for blow. You see players popping off all over the time. You saw that like in their original couple series, and here we go. A new tournament, a new cycle, a new chance to make themselves known to one of each other. As we get ready for map bands, I'm really excited to see what we're going to get out of this. Well, since we are about to jump into map bands, I'll let you two beautiful human beings take it away from here. Best of luck, have fun, and cast great. Thank you so much, Nerdy Bird. Anima, we just saw Bind again. I'm hoping we don't get another uh, the same map, but either way, I think we're going to be really excited to see where these players are going to clash with one another. I have some unfortunate news for you in that department. Looking ahead, it's looking like these two teams are fully content to just run it back. Very similar vans as we saw last time, and... Yeah, we're going right back to bind. People don't like Breeze. I I play as a, I play a lot of Viper, so I love Breeze personally. So man, seeing like you know professionals just hate on it, I get it. But still, let's see some fun. Now that they're adding holes back in, I did see that. I'm I'm that's gonna I I know like uh. <laughs> No, some people are very excited about their halls lurk that they're gonna be, gonna be able to do. I'm not personally, but you know. But bind once again, so not much to talk about because we already seen like like two very different sides of bind. We saw the double duelist with the rays and jet from um, TMU. We saw the double sentinel with the cipher and the sage over from Grand Valley State University and a decisive thirteen eleven victory. So maybe we get a different version. Maybe the viper comes back out again potentially for this time, as you were talking about. I would not be surprised to see the Viper, especially with these two teams having as much history as they do. I wouldn't be surprised if they've looked into the Viper, they've tried to get it going. And barring any surprises, I'd assume that we're probably going to see some variation of the classic Ray Sky Brimstone Viper comp that we uh, somehow didn't see last time. 
Yep. As we get ready to go into Agent Select, we kind of know what to expect once again. We've already seen Bind today. Hopefully, this next match and will uh, maintain its intensity and how close it is. And there we go, Tranquil already holding on to that Viper. But if you look on in the other side, potentially a Harbor pick out. Oh, nope, never mind. Going right back to the Brimstone. And yep, double Viper this time. I think we're going to be seeing the mirror match. The uh, the classic Fnatic comp with the Cypher alongside the Harbor Viper, or the Brimstone Viper, excuse me. And it seems like these two teams, knowing each other so well, even are just going to play the same comp straight up. Blow for blow, and that's exactly, we are getting a mirror match here on Bind for our second match of the day. Once again, if for some reason you can't reach the Twitch tile, you're watching the Aurora series first light. This is day one. We're in round robin stages. You, uh, Scarlet versus Carlton. Both of these teams very familiar with one another, playing identical composition. It's going to, going to be Scarlet starting out the attack and Carlton on the defense. Again, we've got double Cypher, so that means that flanks aren't going to be as great, but sight holds are going to be that much stronger. And I'm very, very excited to see how these two teams play it. We got a little bit of a preview of how the Cypher would play out, but when you have that Viper, there's just that little bit of extra defensive stall power that Sage doesn't let you do in the same way. There's a lot more refreshing and a lot more sightline blocking as opposed to just straight up slowing your opponents down. And the Cypher can really, really benefit off of that style of play. Blinded. It's gonna be a fast push for Scarlet. They're gonna be running things up. Trailblazers are already gonna grab so much information. Be long and we'll be able to spot two thing, two players out, but here comes that Viper wall. The very common B wall that gets so much value for the defense. Just gonna be kept up there. That passive pressure, as you were talking about, something that was completely absent from the last series. Now such an integral part for this one. Orchard. Orchard pushing out. Hans looking to see if they could find anything. Any information. They do have full util with that classic. Looks over the peak. Does spot one left in a little tight situation. But here comes the TP play. Pushing the showers. And that's going to be running into the Brimstone. So Helen looking to find anything. Won't be able to find the first kill with the paint shells a. from Plunk. Will be able to do enough damage. And that's a 2k for the race. On the other side though, B. That's going to be an Alita. Able to find one, ducks back into lambs, but here comes the spike, being able to plan for box, Plink holding things down, looking for anything, trying to deny that spike main. being planted, that's going to be Hans and Plink finding two, a. Manic able to find one before taking down Alita, left to do it in a 1v2 situation, a classic in hand, Trailblazers are going to spot the Cypher out, and they are left with nothing, a camera in 40 seconds, not enough time to get that, they'll have to do everything on their own. Potentially a 1v1 situation. Heard the jump. Goes for the right click. Won't be able to find it just quite yet. Playing forced to reload. But Hans is there for the trade. Two players survived. And Carlton are on the board for the first pistol. Yeah. And already a lot of different styles of play coming out compared to that last match. As you mentioned, the Viper has that passive refresh util. And that's just allowing Scarlet and Carlton to play around the different sight lines so they can block off a little bit more. We see the classic Lurk Wall coming in from Scarlet. We see the now standard uh, Viper Wall blocking, I believe, uh, normally the Viper Wall blocks Hookah and Long as well as outside of showers, but I don't think they've thrown this round. I, yeah, it's gonna be a, no, there's a Hookah and Garden, yep, so this is the wall for the defense, but it's gonna be a very fast hit for Scarlet, they're just looking to try and break through this weapons, weapon area, but with Hans, the spray through too, good with the Spectre, and that's a spike left on the open, goes for a third kill, Alita's able to find one, but that's all she wrote, left to do it by herself once again, the classics aren't gonna be good enough, Helen cleaning things out, Alita falls, and Carlton gets their second, with four members standing. And we mentioned at the start of the last game that the Cypher versus the Double Duelist can be a little bit volatile uh, between Cypher having a little bit of extra stall power, but a second agent able to go over them. It's a little bit even. Here, we get to see Cypher in full force. There's not really anything that can stop the trips that uh, Levici is throwing. 
it's just working out so so well for Weapon's gonna be in the hands of Scarlet, but that's gonna be uh, oh my goodness, Carlton going for a huge push and they're able to get one, but Manic falls in that so there's a lot of viper pressure gonna be gone traded out but it's gonna be a 4v4 situation carlton and once again looking to try and get onto the site i mean scarlet pardon me and looking to try and get out of the site they won't be able to find anything well let's find the first kick find the first pick spike still yet to be planted where they want they're gonna go for a backside plan here strangely enough and that's a very strange plan considering helen's already fine the opposing Prince there. There's the spike planted. A 3v3 situation. Vandal gonna be handed yeah. to Hans, who's absolutely been huge with these first couple kills. No are trying to find anything. We'll get flash, and that's gonna be forced into a weird position. But Orchards finds the first two kills. Finds a third from themselves. Cap will be able to grab one more, and Hans only grabs one, but that's gonna be the attacker. Scarlet finally able to gain their first kill on the board. And first round on the board, pardon me. And just very well played. I actually like the uh, the plant for CT there. You know that you have full control of site, but you also know that they've pushed out A, and you don't have something super hard flank watch. I know you have the cipher, but you still want to give yourself as best of an opportunity to take the round as possible. And planting for CT there lets you play a little bit more with what you know about. Smoke. Juvage, Scarlet looking for a big push in Orchard with that showstopper, able to find one, a trade out as Helen goes for the trade with that Stim Beacon, doesn't be able to find anything as Tranquil looking to try and pincer people in, finally gets a little bit of help, but that's going to be Spike looking to go down relative Italy, Alita finds one, Orchard goes for 3k for the raise, a 4k for the raise, Alita denies the ace, but that's going to be a very fast round for Scarlet as they're able to even up this map. And that's one thing that not having Cypher on that side of the map can do. It leaves you a little bit more vulnerable to quick pushes out towards one site. But ultimately, that can. A lot of agents are going to struggle with that. And if you're not ready for it, like Carlton was there, it seems like Scarlet can definitely get one over on you. You now see Carlton stacked all towards the B side of the map. Yeah. And they will have a. They do have the Seekers, and they do have that Orbital Strike for denying and for that retake. So really big retake ultimates available. That's going to be a very huge beach, uh, long push. Going to get Counter Man to flash out, but won't be able to find anything. Orchard able to get that first pick. Finds a second once again. I keep seeing these, these multi-fracks from the Rays from Scarlet. Been absolutely huge, but here comes the last three members of Carlson chasing down UVH Scarlet. But this spike's going to go down for free here on the A site. That's going to be a really awkward retake situation for the defense. All pushing from the T-spawn. Looking to see whatever can they do. With the Cypher, tri Cypher trip being broken, Scarlet know exactly where Carlton's coming from. Alita positioned very, very well to receive the pressure alongside Orchid. Completely unaware. The sky flash is great, and Alito with a 3k to close out the round. Another flawless in a row for Scarlet. They are playing this. Uh, I mean, you just said it. Second round in a row, flawlessly. They are playing flawlessly. These attacking sides. It looked a little rough, you know, losing the pistol, losing the anti eco. Obviously, expect expected. Once they got those rifles in hands, they have been on a tear. And Alita now still has that uh, neural step that they've uh, been holding onto for quite a minute. But it's going to be Carlton. Three ultimates available. They need to start using it. They need to start getting back into this. Yeah. It's three rounds in a row they've lost. Yeah. Again, we see the Cypher and the Sky both positioned over towards this B site. Blinded. That's a lot of early information there, but well, on the rest of the map, Carlton's uh, just going to have to get a little bit more aggressive in order to actually figure out what Scarlet's plans are. Cat's Trailblazer will be able to find spot a little bit, but here comes the opposing Seekers. Hans able to Seekers, finds two kills with Levici here, holding down and anchoring this beast site, but the spike still in a very awkward situation, falls at the hands of Hans, and Tranquil cleans things up. Altair left in a 1v5 situation. This, is, this aggression you've been wanting, that's exactly what they've given. And after seeing a flawless two rounds in a row from Scarlet, we're potentially going to be seeing a, uh, a flawless on the other side in return. 
and indeed Flink going to close it out a flawless for Carlton and we see exactly why this is such a grudge match. Only one investment ultimate invested and Hansa Seekers came up huge, spotted and slowed things down immensely along with that Cypher trip so I think they've, um, Carlton have started to figure out how exactly want, they want to hold this map. Now let's see if Scarlet can see if, they, um, if they're able to maneuver around this and figure something out. You're still quite a way from the orbital strike, but you are getting pretty darn close to a couple other ultimates, including that showstopper, which could burst open a sight at a moment's will. Yeah. It's going to be a yeah. slow default this time. Yeah, a much slower round. Both of the lurking agents over towards that A site. We can already see some of the adaptions from these two teams. If Carlton want to get a little bit more aggressive, then, well, let's send a player to hard counter down. that, both the Cypher and the Viper. We know that Carlton like to play a little bit lighter towards the B site. Well, let's poke around and see what we can find on the A site and whether or not that's still true. These two teams just playing very, very well off of each other. And it's what makes these games between them so great. Trailblazer invested in less than a minute to go, but it's still crickets, practically. It's, you know, some small skirmishes towards showers, towards garden, but still... No one showing their hands completely quite yet. Panic is in a pretty tight angle. Looking to get some more of this passive energy. The standard attacking the wall and Orban. There's the uh, defender spotted out. And that's the rotation from Carlton. But it looks like the spike. Oh, there it is. The TP play here and the Seekers for the attacking side. But 30 seconds remaining. That Molly's going to slow things down to a halt. And now the defense is fully prepared to hand it. Um, Hold this off, but Manic's able to find one. Orchard does fall from Luigi, and there comes Helen for the reinforcements. Able to find one. Neural Staff gonna be invested, but Plink slowing things down. 2v3 situation. Such low health, but that's not gonna be enough time to get the spike down without being taken down. A 3k for Manic. But what can't more can this Viper do? And Neural Staff just not in time. Looking to try and get any more damage possible, but that's gonna be a fourth round for the side of Carlton on this defense. Hans cleans things up. Manic will be able to bring that gun into the next round excellent stuff excellent retake and adaptation for the defense yeah and i love that after these two like these three flawless rounds that we got back to back we're right back to just trading blow for blow both teams using that round just kind of a way of feeling each other out and then as soon as the action starts it just does not stop we have a lot of just ultimates flying, the showstopper getting popped and then denied, and ultimately the round comes down exactly how you want it to in a 1v1 that's just played perfectly. Here. Similar setup up for Scarlet. They're still running this the second time in a row. So Cypher and Viper is just getting just passive pressure towards A with those abilities. Three members pushing up B long, and they're gonna go for this orbital strike. So now Altair has that in the back pocket for either getting onto the site or they just want to use it for post plan, but they're just going to back out of there. Nice and slowly. Manic with that Viper's Pit. Three huge kills. So big ultimates for Scarlet. For, if they, if they can get back into this map. And already you can see the value of the Cypher and the Viper. Britstone already rotating over off of the information that they've gathered. But meanwhile, the Viper and the Cypher on the other side, allowing Scarlet to lurk up all the way. But the Viper on Viper going to work out in favor of Tranquil, and that's a huge pick for the Orchid does get the showstopper, barely gets it off on top, but not before Folly and Plink's able to find another kill. Orbital the strike from the defense, trying to deny the spike plan. That's going to run right into Blink as Altair falls. Plink with a 3k as Cat grabs one, not going to be enough. A 3k! Once again, four of the Rays and five on the board for Carlton as we go here into round nine. We're getting towards the end of this half. Anima, this is starting to get very dicey. It yeah. blows back and forth. As we start to see Carlton pull a little bit further ahead, they've done a great job of cycling their ultimates. They still have the Viper's Pit online, but they're working their way towards having both a Sky and a Rays ult. Well, on the other side, Scarlet going to do, uh, going to have a Brimstone ult and a Viper's Pit of their own, so they could try and go fast and get the spike down, try and secure the round that way. But it looks like they're going to be playing a little bit slower. Viper's Pit going to be invested for the defense very early on here, and a short and Manic just has to back up, almost gets taken down. 
was able to just run away, but there is so much map control gone. A quarter of it basically lost to Carlton. This Scarlet once again, B orb taken, and they're just holding here. Again, this is the fourth time in a third time in a row basically since this losing streak has happened. They've just been holding here, just hoping something will be different. Here comes Orchid in the back with that Mantle trying to find anything. Alter's there for the trade, and Manic's able to find one for themselves, but there's such low health on these um, defense attackers, including Cat, who had the spike, falls, but Manic's able to find a second kill. 50 seconds remaining. Alita here for the reinforcement. Viper pits, Viper's pit goes out. And these two defenders from the A side run through the TP, and they are now in Hookah, looking to fight into this pit. No, in, no utility for Tranquil other than that wall that doesn't really get too much out. Three defenders to clear. Both last packs can be invested early as well. Such slow things. Tranquil does get taken down. Oh, ooh, I'm not sure how I feel about that orbital strike going to be invested so early in on, but that's going to guarantee Scarlet winning a round. So the three round winning streak for Carlton does end here, and Scarlet looking to bring one of their own to even things out. Yeah, and I really don't mind that or orbital strike. You use the ults to secure the round, and sure, you don't have it for this round, but you won the last round, and that's what really matters. Meanwhile, it's actually put Helen onto a little bit of a weaker buy. I think she could probably force up a Bulldog or a Guardian if she wanted to, but instead of opting for the Spectre, I don't really blame her with how close of a, like how close range of the map bind is. That Spectre can still put in work. B short, A short pressure for the side of Scarlet. They haven't done this too much in this later half of this first half. It's really been the first couple rounds they've done this, but now going to be stopped by both of these orbs. So a Brimsmoke and a Viper orb. That's really nice little one way for Tranquil to use, but going to be forced to back out. Molly to slow things down, and here comes Manic. So Viper mollies for Viper mollies for orbs and just slow, excruciating pressure. With a minute to go, no one making a move. So nervous. They, these opponents, once again, been playing each other so often this last year, fighting each other neck to neck, and they. This sums it up. They are stuck right now, waiting. And you kind of feel like this has to end A or start working back towards B already. Only to the push up so far, but ultimately not able to do too much. The side flash is not going to spot her. That flashed and hit. Still two defenders left. only here on B. And if Ichi forced to like peek out, might be a good hit. There's the trip down, but Levici and Tranquil hold things down. Altair looking to try and find anything. Levici forced into the tube. No bullets remaining in that rifle. And that's gonna be a 3v3 situation. So what turned into like a slow battle turned into huge picks coming up for both sides. But here comes Cat holding in a very strange angle. Tranquil's aware of it. They are aware of this, but they're going to try and outrun this. Yes, that's exactly what they're going to do. Blink left to try and win that 1v1. Can't do it. Falls. Cat will be able to get things out for Scarlet. And Cat is trying to hold things on as best they can. Finds one. Find, almost finds a second, but Tranquil is left in a 1v2 situation. Still yet to get to the spike. Still yet to go for the defuse. Molly out early. They know where these last two defenders are. And this time with the first pick. 3k for Tranquil. Gets the spike to half. Alita has to push out. Finds the headshot and is able to even things out. Five to five here on Bind. We are in for a series, if you haven't noticed, Anima. Yeah, there's just such great reactive utility coming up from both of these teams on both their sight holds and their sight takes. We had the Viper Orb and the Brim Smoke, as you mentioned earlier, on A Short, just completely denying Scarlet from utilizing it. But meanwhile, once they realized that they had a little bit of pressure up towards B long. Scarlet made the great decision to pivot. They sent in the rays and the sky with the Viper wall to make a little bit of presence towards Hookah and force the rotates out exactly how Scarlet wanted them. And we're able to just end it with a very nice B site hold. Carlton left in a very weak buy. Sheriff's here on round 11. That's going to be a little bit of information given, but it's just a cipher. Alita just backing up. Moving towards the spawn, but it's going to be a four-person push here on being long and they're going to look to take that Cypher down, and yes, it will go exactly as planned. The Spectre paying off for Plink as they're able to find that kill, but here comes the Seekers for the side of Cat, for the side of Scarlet, as they're able to get the spike down, and now it's going to be a 4v5 situation, retaking, weak guns for the retakers still, and 
Banana getting a very strange opposition. Trailblazer spots one. Molly to slow things down. Runs through the Molly is Helen, and they're gonna get mowed down along with Levici. 2k for the Viper. Tranquil, the opposing, trying to get into this. Wall goes up, and they're cut up with so much information. Walking through the Molly again, just trying to find any picks whatsoever. But Orchid finds another one. Hal has left the 7 health and falls. So 2Ks, 2Ks, and Cap cleaning things up. It is 5 to 6 as we last approach the last the round of the half. Don't save yeah, Scarlet retaking the lead, and I love stuff. how in that round we got to see just how good of an agent Viper is on Vine. We saw the uh, the wall being used as a way of walking up A, and then later on, when uh, when Carlton wanted to walk up A, the wall completely stopped them from getting anywhere else but lamps, and that just ultimately isn't a very uh, structurally sound way of retaking the map. Scarlet just showing off how good of an agent Viper can be in the right hands. Orchid is one away from that showstopper. Absolute can burst open, especially with a Viper. That's a devastating kill. But Manic's going to be tucked in very close already. Potentially expecting some aggression from Carlton, but no, they are holding strong. They are playing so conservative. Want Prowler? Yeah, Prowler will be able to spot that out. So here comes the showstopper from Orchid after getting that orb. Looking for anything. That's the site clear. That's the spike moving on to the B site. Showstopper won't find anything, but here's the information. But they didn't clear. Who got it? Tranquil grinds one and finds two of a huge flick. Devastating for the side of Scarlet. For Cat looking to even things out just a little, ever so slightly. Able to find one, but here comes the neural sets from the defense. Oh, uh, Showstopper comes along. Blink finds Manic. Orchid finds another spike. Is down, but Helen and Tranquil clean things up. A 3k for the Viper to hold down the B site. Perfectly, and we are tied up here at the half. Phenomenal job by Carlton to tie things up. Great attempt out of Orchid to actually Switching hold back sight and just try her best to stall things out. Drink some water. She's had we a really good half. And let's get back out there. Unfortunately, not good enough to make it anything other than a tie. Which, to be honest, with these two teams, you kind of expect it to go to a tie at the half. I wouldn't be surprised if we see it tied throughout the rest of the game too. Maybe even to into a few overtimes. Once again, these teams have faced each other so many times, as you've talked about. And you can see it culminating. These teams are neck and neck. Mirror compositions, a mirror score line. The kills, I can't count that fast. Can't do math that fast. But as we switch sides, Orchid now on the attacking side. They're looking to push into this Scarlet defense. And it is crickets. Oh, that flash did spot one. So a little bit of information for Talks the defense, but down. Tranquil's just holding very passively. So there's a more there's like that new age Viper wall that like cuts off a that goes through the TP, gets extra Talks shower pressure, but Orchid. Looking to see if they can get anything. Goes for the orb pressure and it's gonna be taken down. Tranquil finds the body shots and they're able to get a man advantage for the side of Carlton as they have to now push out through the smoke now. B side seems to be the answer. Trailblazer will be with the spot one before taken down, but they are aware these two defenders are, but they're still holding a minute to go. Rotates in. Still they're still holding a garden. They're waiting for something. They're waiting for a little bit more information. They're waiting for a defender to stick their head out. They're waiting to see if they can play off of Tranquil. And it looks like they are going to. Full TP in with only the Cypher left on the B site to try and catch the rotates out. Yeah, well, they're trying to see if they can hold on to can stop anything. Manic's able to find one. Evens out the numbers ever so slightly, but Altair pushing the lamps. Are they going to expect this? Potentially. Wall goes up and oh, what a little dink from Altair, but won't be able to find the kill. Lapchi able to find one and Tranquil and Helen mowing down the competition. Cat left to do in a 1v3 situation. Won't be able to find it. A 2k for the Cypher as Carlton once again win their pistol. Yeah, I believe that is both pistols for Carlton on the map, and that's a great start for them. Especially since this composition tends to lean a little bit more defender-sided. Having that pistol around to give you that little bit of extra momentum is a very, very solid way of ensuring that you can sort of weather the storm a little bit more. Weapons bought up for the size Carlton as expected. Standard save for Scarlet. 
New H, just a sheriff in the hands of the Viper. Looking to see if they can, she can get any extra kills or dinks. But it's going to be a full five stack here on B. And four players. Carlton leaning towards his side as well. A little bit of a rotation potentially. So a Viper v Viper on the A side. But it's going to be a 4v4. Isn't this just what Valorant lore is? Basically, the Vipers going at it one another. Everyone else just kind of grouped up together and forced to fight. Here comes the Stim Beacon. Here comes a fight. Classic's going out and Orchid finds the first kill traded out by Helen. Page Shell's going to go out for the raise, looking to slow things down and potentially go for a little bit of spam with the Classic. They do have the ability to the range and Orchid finds another pick. Spike is out. They know where that is a little bit. And that's a very strange situation for Carlton as they're now forced to look for more map control. Tranquil has pushed all the way through short, looking towards Lamb's Manic with this Sheriff. Potentially be given the timing. Try to find the shots. We'll be able to do it. The last bullet in the clip brings things to a 4v2 situation. A huge opportunity for absolute upset here on round 14. Left. One and now has access to the Bulldog. Going to find the 1 and the 2. Perfect headshot on the flank to end the out the round. And Scarlet just answers right back. A 3k for the Viper. Weapons now given, and now the bonus is given to Scarlet as they have now evened things up once again. 7-7 seven to seven is our scoreline, and what a little, little defense that was. The little stack over on B just worked perfectly. I mean, I love that type of aggression. When you have the weapon disadvantage, you've got to figure out a way to do something. And that type of play... Sending all five, to or sending four rather, towards B long, and just letting your weaker weapons play in areas where they can actually hold their own against the stronger weapons just works out very perfectly. I like this Viper Wall from Manic. Ooh, it's yeah, this is a. I haven't seen that wall before, so that's gonna hold Hookah and all of B long. So that's just dividing up the map over on this west side, but it's gonna be Carlton. Opting to just avoid the B site, looking toward to get the showers control, which they very firmly have it, but now they're just holding, they're waiting, they're looking for picks as well, just as the um, opponents in the last round. So Carlton left to just hold here. Low health for the race. Potentially could come up later, and that is the tip of the spear, that is their main center point. The only duelist for that side. But for a minute to go, plenty of time, but we are in a 5v5 situation all 10 players on the right side of the map. Manic is running back though. They are a little bit worried about a late lurker or potentially a very fast hit, but it's going to be Crankle evening the numbers out. A really nice little Sheriff headshot as Hans pushes out of showers looking to find anything. And it's going to be a fight for A now as the spike starts to slowly try and work its way out, but still they're stuck in showers. I'm only to cut out CT, but maybe Manic still holding heaven. That Spectre, this Viper's been absolutely huge. Altair grabs a kill. Hans finally able to take down the raid boss, but it's going to be Altair, the Brimstone. The 3k for the other controller, and Scarlet have taken the lead once again. Yeah. Scarlet just playing that really, really well. I mentioned how uh, last round they played in a situation where their weaker weapons could hold their own. This time, they specifically avoided playing in situations where the weaker weapons of Carlton could hold their own. Lots of long angles, lots of just seeding ground tactically, because you know that even if they do get into lamps, they still have to find a way to get out of lamps and get onto the site proper, and that's where those long angles Smoke are down. so good for your weapons. So, this is a proper bonus for Scarlet, I believe. They kept so many of those guns in, so they're still going to just hold on to it. Meanwhile, Carlton... Finally able to buy up to those Vandals and Phantoms. But they're still just going to hold very passively towards A. Don't want to make too much. But there's that strange Viper Wall from the defense once again. Just cutting off B long. Just cutting that uh, that Cyrus like area of the map in half. But looking like Carlton wants nothing to do with it. Still looking towards A. Tranquil get caught out a little bit with that. Cypher Cam, Molly to slow things down, but here comes Plink with the satchels, looking to get fight for Lamps control, but it's gonna be Tranquil finding Alita, stuck in uh, Lamps. Um, showers parted me, but here comes Spikes, goes down fairly easily, 
And now the defense, Scarlet looking for a huge retake. Spike planted towards Truck Tranquil. Looking to try and hold things down as best as possible. Won't be able to find anything. That evens the numbers out. Helen playing, holding lamps. Manic trying to find anything. We'll be able to find the first one. Viper's Pit online, but we'll fall before getting a chance to use that 3v3 situation. Spike, Orchid trying to get a tap. Orbital Strike will be invested fairly early on off that information. Altair looking for a push. Does spot two members. Only to find those kills. But Cat and Orchid able to get those out. It's left to Hans to do it by themselves against Orchid. Low health for the raise. Looking for the kill. And it's going to be Hans winning things out. We are tied once again here on Bind. This is a war. Really big stuff coming out from both of these squads. You saw that retake. That was absolutely incredible. But it's going to be able to hold things on is the side of Carlton. But this time, they won't have the weapons. A Guardian, a Bulldog. A second Bulldog, actually. Yeah. And the only ultimate in the hands right now is that Neural Theft with one away from the Seekers, from Hans, their top fragger. Scarlet. Just trying to play this defense as best as possible. Once again, on that west side, left side of the map, you can see that weird Viper wall. The cutoff be long, but Carlton haven't yeah. run into it at all whatsoever. They have not even fought it. They haven't even seen it, I don't think. So that's going to be in for a surprise if they, the spike stays on this left side of the map. I think Levici's going to make the rest of her team aware of it. But still, that yeah, Viper wall is going to be very interesting to deal with, especially now that the sky's already established that... There's not really anybody I've on that angle yet. Trail. And as soon as she spots one or gets any indication that they might be headed that way, that wall can be used to hold garden control so easily. But it's not even needed. Orchid's going to go ahead and find one, finds another with the showstopper, and can just retreat back into the health. Manic grabs one for himself, but Orchid's there for the trade as Hans does find one, but Levici is left. Guardian in hand, looking to try to find anything with 42 seconds remaining. The spike is left in a very... Precari uh, precarious situation. And it's just going to be a slow, slow round as we just wait for the inevitable unless Lapici can hit some crazy headshots with that Guardian. They will give the spike to the Cypher, so potentially a chance to move towards the A site. But that's where all that opposing Cypher utility is. Door going to open. Cage triggered. So here's a chance, potentially, if they can win this 1v1, Levici, potentially can get the spike down, yeah. Actually, yeah, they're going to be able to get the yours. spike down. So it's going to be a 1v3 retake situation. They're all set for Levici, but just a Guardian in hand, and they have no idea where these defenders are coming from. There's one. You hear the footsteps, so you kind of know where you're getting into. Trying to find the first shot, finds the first, can't find the second. Cat will clean things up, and Scarlet... Reclaims the lead, will not give it up to Carlton again after that pistol. And they are one away from double digits. And this is some this is a match. Again, just a grudge match back and forth. Scarlet managing to hold on to that one round lead. And they do have the extra weapon read this round that unfortunately Carlton won't have access to. Our economy has been fully reset. They forced up into that last round. They won't be able to do the same this round. But if they can get the bomb down, specifically if Tranquil can get the bomb down, they do have the Viper's Pit. And that could be something for Scarl for both Carlton and Scarlet to look for as a win condition of sorts. I mean, both of these compositions, you know, the same composition, that Viper's Pit can be so deadly because there's so much trickle damage. You have the pain shells, you have the boom uh, from the rays, and you have the satchels. You also have the brimstone molly, you have the orbital strike. So much damage can be amplified and mow down these opposing opponents in a second with that pit up. But again, you still have to get out to the site first and foremost for Carlton, and they don't have the weaponry to get themselves there, but if they can just be granted a little bit of space potentially could be huge yeah. scarlet's pushed all the way through showers yeah. waiting for someone to make a mistake but here comes the stim pack from helen and plank's able to find a hurt shot onto manic so that viper's pit for the defense is not going to be available and exactly what you wanted that and um that first little entry, that's exactly what they're given trangle is given the spike this should be going up in half a second or potentially but orca does 
Find Levici. So 4v4 situation. Numbers are even. Weaponary strongly in favor of these retakers. Seekers can be invested in Cat. They know where two of these members are. Flash out. Finds one. Finds two with the spray transfer. And yeah, this round is not going the way they wanted to. But Hans and Helen able to even things out. 2v2 situation. Low health for two of these members. Cat's able to find a third. And Helen. Spike still planted. No Molly. No information. Does spot one. But Cat. Trades a 3k for a 4k, the 1v1 won out by the sky. And that's gonna be double digits for Scarlet. A really well played retake from the side of UH. And man, they might have a chance to run away with this if Carlton can't take this next round. Yeah, I would have really liked to see Tranquil inv invest that Viper Spit towards CT. But ultimately, not how things worked. Scarlet actually going to be calling a timeout off the back of their own victory, and I don't, I don't hate this. It came down to a one v one against weaker weaponry, and you know that Carlton have been holding their own for quite a few of these gun rounds. So why not call a timeout? Why not try and figure things out going into this next very important round? And, and it, with them, like you can see, a bunch of you, like ultimates are coming up online. They will have rifles this round, so there's nothing to be playing easy for it. Nothing's given easily from either of these teams whatsoever, Anima. For sure. Carlton, Carlton do you have three ultimates online, including that Showstopper, which is going to be so huge at entrying. They have the Viper's Fit as a way of sort of confirming around, more or less. There is the Orbital Strike on the other side, and that will be very, very helpful in terms of actually being able to potentially counter that Viper's Pit should it go up. There's a lot that both of these teams can do, sort of playing off the back of each other, and I'm very excited to see how they do it. Alita, one way from that neural theft over for the side of Scarlet. So, you know, looking for picks, looking for anything. But it, look at the money for Scarlet. It isn't great. Cat and Altair have a, you know, a little bit of money, but not enough to buy like the entire team the next couple rounds. So, either way, these are huge swing rounds. They are playing each other so close, both of these teams in Manic. Ops to pop the Viper's Pit so early and to be long, but it's gonna be Carlton looking to push Hookah. Alita forced off the angle on top of the box. Off the tube and all five, four members are just holding it. Hookah, a minute 15 left to go. The Viper Wall comes up. They don't have a lot of space, but it looks like they still want to go for this B site. But the defenders over on the A site still holding their ground. They're still waiting for the Lurker. They're waiting for that rotation to come through. Yeah. And unfortunately, Scarlet have taken most of the map control away from Carlton. Carlton pretty much have all of their eggs in this B basket, but they have the Viper's Pit to deal with. They still have some of that Cypher Util, even though they broke a lot of it. And they're just waiting for a chance to re-hit, but the smoke is perfect for Scarlet. Fowler found nothing showers, but here comes the initiation. For Carlton, Showstopper not going to find much, and Alita has a little corner inside the tube that they are still alive in. Trying to find one, does able to find one, goes for the spray, spray transfer, can't find anything, but it will be traded out. Helen and Hans able to find one, but Manix able to even the things out. 3v2 situation, however, Carlton, the numbers in their favor. And these two defenders will be spotted out. Cat looking to find anything. Does have the Seekers, if they're able to find two. Potentially an Altair, no utility in the hands whatsoever. Vandal hand, Helen finds the one kill, wins that 1v1, and Cat left to do it by themselves. Finds the first kill, a huge pick, and that spike is not planted for Garden. Waiting for the push, Hans is on such low health as well. They're playing so safe, but here it comes. Spider Art will be able to spot one, and here comes the push from the Vici. Cat finds one, but able to stay aligned. Levici wins this out. And Carlton are back in this, one away from tying things up, and I talked about money last round, Anima, and look at the buy for Scarlet. Every time you think that this is going to go one way or the other, that one team's going to have a decisive lead or be able to run away with it, it just streaks back in the opposite direction. Carlton evening things up, potentially, with a win right here. Granted, their money's not great either, and if they get thrifted here, then Scarlet can pretty much just run away with the rest of the game. But, prepared for hellfire. Carlton can win this. We're right back in a tie game, and they want to just go fast this round. 
work it with the classic. Gets vulnerable enough. Spots that raise out, but the classic hits just can't land whatsoever. But a kill for Manic and Altair evens the numbers out, but Lobichi's there to clear things out. Seeker's gonna be invested for the defense already and tranquil. Just holding showers in a 2v3 situation. Alita on a huge flank. Could find these kills. And yes, that will make things EV. A 2v2 situation. Sheriffs in hands of these defenders. The spike still yet to go down. A chance to get this out. But it's going to be the push out from the attackers. Finds Cat. And it's now Alita. Neural staff invested. Has a Vandal in hand. Here's these rotations. Ops did not use the TP this time. Just waiting. Waiting for the bait. Spike going to be planted on the B side. In the back. One holding the, the flank. But they're not going to be able to find it. Alita running towards the... Going to be running towards Hookah. Yeah, they're both playing from CT. This is going to be a, such a difficult situation for Alita. But they got to get a move on. The clock is starting to tick. No information on where these defenders are now at this point. So late. To the round. Flash gonna be out. Alita's spotted. Has to get onto this. The tap of the spike first. Another flash out. Gonna be the spam through. Tries to find anything. No. Hans will clean things up. Both of these teams 10 to 10. Tied up on bind. I wanted to see these teams tied going all the way into overtime. And so far, that seems to be what's happening. 10 to 10. And finally, it seems like we're going to have both teams completely on the same foot it's actually carlton that has the slightly worse buy uh but only by having half shields money's still not great for either team but if carlton can get this they will have a chance to run away with things viper's pit and seekers I'm available for carlton so i do give the advantage towards this but the seekers gonna be invested so early on trying to break through. They were trying to make a play. And the B-side looks exactly where they're going to go. Viper's wall goes up for the defense. Looking to try and slow things down as best as possible. Now one ultimate on the board for the entire lobby. The Seeker is going to be... Um, pardon me, the pick going to be a vest, but Plank it falls. Manic's able to span through. And that's where he's gone. That's the initiation tool. That's the entry gone. It's also how you counter most of these cypher traps. Exactly. Levici has to try and break these by themselves, and Tranquil still holding A, keeping these defenders still by themselves, but they're not going to expect the flan. Look at she's going to get pincered. Unless they're able to win this 1v1 versus Altair and push out, but not really. They're going to they're gonna have to fall, but Manic's able to find one, Orchid's able to find the second, so there goes Tranquil. There goes so much utility for the side of Carlton. I potentially might even want to see a save at this rate, but no, it's not going to happen. A 3k for the Viper. And Scarlet get to 11. They are two away from taking the series. Yeah. Han's going to be buying up a rifle for now, but that's about it. That's pretty much all that Carlton can afford. And I think off the back of that, Han's noticed that it might be wise for her to call a timeout. That's exactly what they're going to do. Timeout here. The second and final one for both these squads until we get to overtime. And this ma entire match has been trades back and blow, uh, back and forth. You saw the first half; it was a string of three, a string of three, a string of three, one, 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 basically. And this half, it's been one, two, one, two, one, two. Scarlet looking to try and gain the upper advantage this time, ever so slowly. Carlton on a weak buy; they're trying to fight for overtime potentially, unless they opt to force. They, again, they do have that Viper's Pit to work with. So if you can get onto site, that's where the weaker weapons can shine. But that result for the side of Scarlet, that, if they can get into a situation where they're all forced into those tight corners like a lot of times the team with weaker weapons is bound to do, that result can come up so huge. And it is going to be the weaker weapons for Carlton. Scarlet, full rifles. Carlton, full pistols. Orchid. Oh, and then Hans, a... of course, has to go. And then Hans with a little bit of a stinger. They've been on a roll 19 and 14 whatsoever, but you look on the side of Scarlet, you see their top two fraggers with 24 kills Soaps. each, and Orchid adds one to themselves. A big kill as Helen falls, and all of a sudden Carlton just looking Thompson's to do as much out. damage as possible without the Rimstone. Yeah, and that's going to make this even harder. 
the only way for those weaker weapons to actually close the angles now is going to be by face checking them. They don't have smokes to play around. Just the Viper's Wall, but that's all nasty. invested for passive A. A high-low setup here for Plink to deal with. A trip that's nearly impossible to break. The gun barrel shot him. Oh my god, Plink! A huge little flick finds the brimstone, so there's a brim for a brim. But Manic finds two with a little bit of a... I that was a collat. Collateral, yep, exactly. So, 2v4 situation. What almost turned into Plink winning things out for... Carlton opening up the site has turned into disaster. Carlton now spikes left in showers. Lavici trying to find a kill, gets a little bit of a dink, but won't be able to find anything. 3k for Orchid, and now match and series point for UH Scarlet. Rifle's gonna be available for Carlton. They will have that pit, but we've been talking about that pit for the last, I don't know, three, four rounds. It's just, they just haven't found a way to get onto a site and actually use it. Tranquil Shrink a it lot too. of times has been the player that's been lurking across the map, but that means that she's never in a position to actually drop the pit in response to her team taking a site. And unfortunately, yes, things know. just haven't been working out for Carlton. That timeout for Scarlet coming up huge. Yeah, and they're going to push A short immediately, so all that Viper pressure gone in a moment. Orchid, showstopper invested. Just going to try and get as many kills as he can, but Lafici holds his ankle, potentially can find one, and that's going to be Tranquil and Plink finding three, two more on the other side. They're in this still. Scarlet just crumbles under the huge amount of pressure that Lef uh, Carlton offered, and the, the A short play that, Carl that Scarlet had just falls flat. They don't even need to invest the pit. They could save that for round 23, 24. Toxins going up. And both players, 23. Boxing under hookah is not ideal. Scarlet, do you find a way out after uh, getting the frag onto Cypher there? But they still have four Toxins other players to deal down. with. I wouldn't mind seeing a save potentially. Just trying to do as much damage as possible. And there's some damage. Manic able to find one, but it's going to be Cat stuck in hookah by themselves. Helen cleans things up. We are in round 24 now. This is it. One round from overtime or one round away from UH Scarlet taking the series in a very close endeavor. Yeah, and the ults have swung back in favor of Carlton. I actually don't mind Scarlet going for that if their whole objective is just try and take as many guns out of the hands of, Scar of Carlton players. However, Helen got two kills. Without those two kills, she would not be anywhere close to her ult. She can get ult Thorb and plant, or a kill and plant. And that's the orbital strike on mine. And that's a huge that's thing for Scarlet to give up in the 11th hour. Link, showstopper, going to be invested very early, looking towards Lambs. Molly the slowest down, and the showstopper misses, so that's going to be Lambs control still in the hands of Scarlet for the time being. Boobop to push Altair back. Phantom in hand. Link looking to get aggressive. Spike is still stuck in A short in the hands of that Viper. They're still waiting, and. Gonna be a play here. Viper's gonna be invested early, and Plink is going to punish that. Manic falls, and Han's able to find another one, but Altair and Orchid able to trade things out. 3v3 situation. Altair looking for another one, but Han's once again comes up huge. Viper's pick gonna be invested for the attackers. The spike's going to go down as Levici finds one. The Cypher left to do it all. So Alita, three kills away. And a spike defuse from taking the series, but it's just one more kill for Carlton to bring it to overtime in. That's exactly what's happening, folks. Welcome to the Aurora series. We are going to our very first overtime. We were denied it for the first map of the day. We saw GVSU take it 13-11 over TMU. But this time, we will not be denied. This map is going the distance. OT on the books scarlet going right back onto the attack half that they did very well on lots of streaks meanwhile carlton needs to figure out an answer they did manage to get the last round of the half but it doesn't look like they're changing things up very much at all still opting into this 2-3 defense that both teams have favored i wouldn't be surprised whoever wins this first round of overtime takes it all you've seen the streaks a streak of threes and twos all over the place but right now, Carlton does have the momentum ever so slightly. Winning the last two, winning, winning rounds 23 and 24, but this time they're back on the defense. Poison it took them a little bit to heat up. But Grand Valley looking to be upset. Upset the momentum, swing the momentum back in their favor. And they have to get the spike down. They have to win this. 
both of these teams yeah. balancing on a knife's edge. The initial pace from Carl to, or from Scarlet just slows entirely. Waiting a minute left to go. Altair smokes in hand, potentially looking for burst out towards his V side. It's Manic puts applies a little bit more pressure. Forced to back out a little bit. And actually that's going to be the rotation of Scarlet. They're going to bring these people back to B. They're expecting some rotations to have already made their way. As they've traditionally done for Carlton. They've been Carlton's love to play three on A and then bring one over, but this time they've stuck with their gut. Carlton have all their members on A they want, and Plink has got all showers controlled, this 1v1 has to be won, but Manic falls, Tranquil will win that 1v1, and it's a person advantage, but Orchid's able to trade things back out, Alita trying to get as much damage as possible, finds one, trades, once again it's the name of the game, but it's going to be a person advantage for the side of Carlton. They have to retake in though, Trailblazer spots out one towards Lamps, Hans, the leader. At least in towards the terms of the kill, we'll have to do it. But it's good left to cat in a one v two situation. I don't think no they're... idea where these player is, and uh, it's gonna be Hans once again cleaning things up. Carlton will maintain the momentum. A team ace and a match point for Carlton. Yeah, if Scarlet had just played with a little bit more pace, I think Cat might have been able to actually get around the truck. There was a brief period of time where neither Hans nor Helen were ready for that, but Hans. Head on a swivel, so, so smart, doing so much for a team. Picks up that last kill, and that's it. That's it. That That's Carlton going on match point again. The first lead that they've had in a long while. And it comes on the defense, where initially it looked like they might struggle with. Not a guarantee yet. I know we talked a lot about momentum, but Scarlet has the ability. Both of these squads have the ability to turn things on a diamond. It's going to be looking a very aggressive hit for Carlton as Scarlet looks to try and hold things as best as possible. They're going to be fighting Tranquil potentially in a 1v2 situation. Tranquil can win this out, and yes, they spot the gun barrel. Alita has to win or survive, but they can't. Tranquil finds the first two kills and is going so wrong. For the defense, Scarlet left in a one v a three v five situation. The Viper's pit comes up, and there is so much in the way of this squad. Round twenty six. This might be it for these two teams. Another win in the books for Carlton is on the line, and survival is on the line for Scarlet on the other side. UH. Trying to do anything. Gun barrel for Orchid. Emily the five that kill. The Viper's Pit does fall, but Trinkles find a third kill. That will be it. Carlton will be able to win things down. 14 12 here on Bind. And who else to do it but Hans? Closing it out for her team. I think she was initially uh, just a little bit short of a 30 bomb, but still just doing so much. And Carlton able to notch a win in this heated grudge match. As uh, we bring in our third, our lovely host, Nerdy Bird. That Hello. Was a, that was a phenomenal match. What did you think of that one? I mean, I, in all honesty, and I apologize to all the players <laughs> and to you two, I hoped we'd go a little bit longer. But the fact that we even <laughs> touched OT, I think, really just speaks to the caliber of these two teams we just got to see. I mean, Carlton and Scarlet. It was going so back and forth constantly. I mean, when we hit the 7-7 seven and seven mark, I was just like, okay. Um, I'm anticipating these two to go the distance. I, I match one of the day. That was a hard fought series. It definitely felt very one sided in the beginning, but then it kind of flipped the other direction. But bind, in my opinion, is a very defensive heavy map. And of course, anyone's welcome to correct me on that one. But with that in mind, I always anticipate that the defensive side is going to be a little bit more successful in the early rounds. And then it starts to go back to being a little bit more balanced. And then it gets lopsided again in favor of defense. But between these two teams it just felt like it was a constant tug of war back and forth and that's why they wanted to showcase their caliber on bind as much as uh anima i know you said that i hope we don't see bind again and as soon as i jumped out and we saw the map screen come up i started giggling to myself <laughs> so i apologize for that one but in all honesty i think after that long series both of you deserve a break as does production and the players so we will hop out for just a little bit and we'll be back here in about eight to ten minutes with some more valorant actions so don't go anywhere and we'll see you soon Got the
Welcome back to the Aurora Series First Light Broadcast. I'm still your host, Nerdy Bird, and alongside me is Anima and Janice. So, Anima, Janice, we've had two pretty, you know, neck and neck games is the only way I can put it. Yes, one hit overtime, but do you think this third one is going to hit that same bar that we had set by our first two games? Or do you think it's, it might end up being slow mo back and forth, and, but still end up being very obvious who's going to come out victorious early on? For the sake of my voice, I'm hoping it's a close battle, but not overtime, because we still have plenty of Valorant here tonight. We still have a best of three in our quarterfinals, but either way, I think we should... The way that our producers and our directors have like laid out what games have been here on, st on stream, they've just been neck to neck the entire way through. Like Both of these teams, all four teams that we've seen today, have been playing at such a high level against one another, and I don't expect these next two teams to play any differently. Yeah, and honestly, even if it does start out one-sided, we saw in our first match of the day that that can change really quickly. The team that won started down 4-8, and they ended up winning at 13-11. So even the like most hard-fought of games might not always start out super hard-fought. I'm very excited to see how these two teams play out and where we're ending up going. All right. Well, I'll leave you two to take care of all of the housekeeping regarding map bans. This is going to be North Texas taking on UVic Gold. Best of luck to both these teams and best of luck to both of you. I'll see you at the end of this best of one. Stay warm, nerdy birds. Stay warm. I'm sorry, <laughs> that just came out of nowhere. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's, that's just in my head. I like that one. Speaking of light luck, like, I'm hoping... Let's see. I'm really excited for these map picks. Like, you know, we've got two games of bind. Both of them have been super close. So, you know, no matter what happens, I'm hoping we get a good map. But let's see what these bands are. Okay. Low oh, there's Breeze. I was like, where's Breeze? So. Uh, you got to get see. rid of it right off the bat. Uh, oh. Oh, no. Oh. No. <laughs> Again. Third time is the charm. So North Texas and UVic will be playing on Bind once again. Yep, we're going right back to Bind. Uh, some of you talk about the agents this time. I, I've already waffled for quite a bit about how the like the standard core of Rays, Sky, Brimstone, Viper, that's always like a relative staple, but we've seen a match where we didn't have a Viper. And then last match, we saw that both teams had the exact same five agents. Do you think we're going to be seeing something like that again? Or do you want to see more variety? And if so, who do you want to see? Uh, the standard four is basically kind of a given at this point. The standard three, at least the brimstone, as you were saying, the brimstone, the rays, um, are a, a given at that point. But like, I'm waiting for someone to throw a Yoru in there. I'm waiting for someone to throw a chamber in there. I, you mentioned those at the very beginning of the broadcast when we are starting to talk about Bind as a potential map pick, as our first map pick. And, you know, you're waiting to see these crazy compositions. You're waiting to see all these weird strategies that people have coming up for this map and it's such a predictable map that any wrench thrown in can be so huge either way like we used to see breach uh at a very long time ago i mean the viper is a given i i play harbor on this map because sometimes you go with the viper harbor because this I'm, map I'm... is open so much for just creativity especially when it comes to the double controller setup even if our last our first match only relied on that brimstone yeah i was about to ask what your thoughts were for uh harbor what about a 
if we do end up seeing something uh, weird, do you think it's going to be the Oru? Do you think it's going to be the Chamber? Do you think we see I mean, another situation like that first map where we just don't get Viper at all? I'm I'm expecting the way that things are going. I'm expecting a Viper and a Brimstone, and then I'm either like the Chamber is an option. I think that's really great, especially for that B long, that having control over on the A site. Both of those places are ex where a Viper gets so much value. But I wonder if eventually we'll get a deadlock one of these days here I mean on Bind. She's still brand new, but like I think of like a short pressure where you have one of those trips there that can just halt a push basically on its own if you're trying to burst out of there. But that's a weird con that's a weird pick. Yeah, and she does have the the added buffs. And in contrast to Sage, there are actually uh, areas of the map where Deadlock's Wall specifically just works a lot better. Sure, you can get spam through it, but. I'm thinking areas like a short where you can't stand on top of it and get another angle. So you can actually throw it either deeper or a little bit more shallow and force the team to still play around it. Uh, or areas like B long where it's just a super wide wall that can cut off both access to garden and to the teleporter. And honestly, bind, well, not exactly like initially appearing as such, it's actually one of the better maps for her sonic sensors as well you can actually find some fairly decent value out of them. That being said, that also requires that also requires someone to actually play Deadlock. <laughs> easier to Yeah, something we're done. still we're still waiting on it. Like it's it event it's bound to happen. I mean, we've been I've been getting so much like Deadlock in my ranked games and I like it's like I walk past and I like, go to reload and I look to my right and go, "Darn it." And I'm just like like trying to flick as best as possible and you know at the highest level i mean there's a reason why deadlock hasn't been wasn't seen at all in the main vct circuit hardly or if seen, seen at all ascension. in the game changers yeah we did see her ascension uh i don't know if we saw any of the game game changers scene but like i'm either way there's so much creativity there's so many like different combinations i mean i'm you know, Deadlock would be really exciting because it's new, but also the Yoru is such an exciting pick all the way around. You saw Sentinels bring that out, and their LCC, um, LCC, both them and 100 Thieves, and their last chance qualifiers in the main VCT circuit. So there's something that's like, okay, we're just waiting on someone to pull out a curveball or a slider. Ooh, here's one. What about, uh, what are your thoughts on the comp that Loud ran at Champions with the triple oh. controller? Oh, the triple controller. I forgot about the triple controller. I remember seeing that and people just going, man, why do we play this game? It is a, it is a composition that requires on so much like mechanical aim and so much just positional awareness from both squads. Both the defense obviously has to maneuver around that. They have to figure out where are these players, but also for the attackers, I think the other thing is like you have to move through your own smokes. You have to control the space perfectly, and if a team isn't perfectly aligned with one another, it's going to take a minute, and it's going to struggle. So if I see that, I will immediately favor that team to win <laughs> it, because they know what the heck they're doing. And if they don't, how... Or you, else are you going to tell? Speaking of agents, we're about to get into agent selects on bind. Our third and maybe final bind of the night. But we still have three more maps to go in this, our quarterfinals after this. Yeah. But right now, we see the Viper locked in. We see the Sky locked in. So, at least for one of these squads, we know exactly what we're getting. Yeah. That will be seeing the triple controller. But for the, uh, the side of, I believe, you, Vic, uh, there is no... Oh, I'm sorry. That's actually North Texas. There's no yeah. Viper. Oh, there. So they're going double duelist. So we're going back to what we saw earlier in the first half. In the first match. So we're going that double duelist with the Cypher this time rather than the Sage. What is that Cypher going to give instead of the Sage that we saw earlier on? Well, planting's not going to be as easy, but you do have a little bit different stall. And quite honestly, uh, with all due respect to Sage, better stall. You have both sight blocking and uh, an actual way of stalling out pushes via, uh, via the traps. But more importantly, you get more passive information just by having that cipher in your comp. And that's so important for a map like Bind. Choose your you agent. You could also potentially might not go raise. That would be... See, like, Korovac is holding that jet right now. So see yeah they're they might lock this in 
Yeah. Oh, we got two very different, well, not very different compositions, but at least alterations of what we've seen all day. Raiseless on the side of Uvic and getting another double duelist with a cipher on the side of North Texas. I love the I love the coordinated cards. I know we don't Me really too. get to see it all that much because it's usually behind the the scenes. But I love when teams just go that like little extra mile. I also see the uh, the VCC games changer VCT games yeah. changer on Bab. So yep, I saw a Vamos over on the side of Uvic Gold. I forgot who that was, but they will be the ones starting on the defense. North Texas looking to get on the attack. So, once again, folks, bind here, Aurora Series. I promise you this isn't just a bind-only tournament cycle. This is something much, <laughs> much more. I'm really excited Look, we have to a be best here. of three coming up next, and they, we do. they can't all be bind. <laughs> so you guys will see at least some variety today. It's just uh, not but... going to be for at least another map. Variety, who cares, because bind has been a close <laughs> match all the way through. Here we go. Uvic Gold versus North Texas. As we get into this map once again, it's going to be a short pressure for the attacking side, but a trailblazer up hookah very quickly. Just to get some information. Oh, there's there. ooh, those weird cipher trips. You always love to see that, but pistols slow for both of these squads. No one looking to get hyper aggressive quite yet, but there's Lilac going for a little bit of a peek. There's a cyber cage just to try and get a little bit more cross, but that's going to clear up most a. of uh, lamps, but it's going to be a trade. Kyra and Seiji, Seiji, trading things out over towards the B site. So, but the spike is still here on A. Three members still Ready. holding here, but Jelly is just looking to apply as much pressure as possible. And there's a little bit of some offensive rotates, defensive rotates, pardon me, already on. But Shower's control is given completely to Uvic. Yeah, so this spike is going to be stuck in lamps. They might go for a backside plan potentially if they can clear out Kyra. 30 seconds what left. What is going on with 30 seconds remaining? Also, here's just how far up the jet for the side of Uvic has gotten. That's a huge position for them to be in. It means that they can always ensure that Showers is theirs. But as Kyra goes down, the rest of the site has fallen, and the backstab from Jet not going to be enough. Corvax only able to find one and some damage. That bomb is going Logic down, smoke. and the numbers now favor North Texas. Yeah, excellent stuff. Way to slowly piece apart that entire defense and hold. Really good stuff all the way around. And here comes Zakip looking to get a little aggressive. Satchel and a cloud burst to slow things down. The Molly's going to be invested just so they get good positioning for the side of North Texas. And that's going to leave Sadkip left to do it on their own. The Viper, not a lot of utility, not a lot of health left as Akeo cleans things up. And that will be North Texas winning out the first round. I really like their decision to just cut noise, reevaluate the situation, and then make a decision based off of what information that they do have. Right. Granted, they don't have the Viper util that that type of uh, play style really favors, but they're able to win out the round regardless. And they know what their strengths are. They know how to provide that little extra to get them across the finish line. And that should serve them well going into this next round. Pretty standard stuff. I mean, North Texas is buying up. They got the money and they're forced by... For you, Vic, so they're not going to try and fight this really. Shorty in the hands. Their brimstone. That's about it. It's going to be looking like a very fast B hit with that jet off the back of Lilac. And then Jelly. So there goes Jelly pushing into the site. It's going to be Ermaly trying to find anything, but no. Taken down. Lilac will be able to find that kill. Boombot to clear things down. Here comes Spike going down in a 5 4 situation. UV. Just looking to see if they can even get into this. Spike planted. Not really looking like it. AJ able to find things up, and that should be a flawless victory for the side of North Texas. They were able to clear things out fairly easily, and now we go into the bonus. And now this is where you start to see things get a little bit more interesting. Yeah, great job by Sage on the sky. That's not going to get confusing at all. But phenomenal <laughs> couple of picks. That's enough that's going to get their team right across the finish line for that round and they hold on to i believe all of the weapons yes uh, they do flawless yes. so but oh 
Look at that, Cypher's got a Spectre, so not going to be buying up opting to just go for full util right there. What's that about? He's a, he's an expensive one. <laughs> anyway, slow pressure. Sage just trailblazing out, looking to try and spot any of these trips. Won't be able to, so different uh, setup there. for the defense. Just looking to try and switch things up as much as possible. Throw the attackers off their game if they can, but... So far, North Texas playing this extremely well. Still playing very patient. No big pushes, no big bursts onto the site. Grenade. But here comes a little bit more excitement. Here comes Jelly. Just pushing through. A little bit of a spam through my KO. Just trying to find anything. Pushing out. Finally, that trip is taken care of. And a KO getting the spike down. Two away from that orbital strike. It will be a 5v5 situation as. Uvic decides to just play the retake with the superior weapons. But Bab. Oh, Bab can be huge. There is nothing watching this flank right now. But first, they gotta get there. They gotta burst out. They gotta outrun that flank with Lilac. And that Spectre able to find one. But Sakip, Kyra, and Korovex able to find those kills. Three kills for the side of UV very quickly. And it's a 1v4 onto the site. Now it's finally Bab making it their way up. They'll get a little bit more damage. A Spectre in hand. They're gonna have to carry that over into round four. Yeah, unfortunately, not able to recover a full rifle. So they're just going to have well, to. They had the money to that. buy, though. Yeah. Honestly, I don't mind holding the Spectre, though, especially for Cypher, who likes to spam through smokes a lot of time. I think you can do far worse than bringing a Spectre into things. Could be a Bucky. But yeah. Also, interesting yeah. to note, uh, we've seen this uh, style of comp come out from the last game on the side of uh, Uvic, and they have an almost identical default to both Carlton and Scarlet that we saw last map. They just have their jet playing a little bit more aggressive in showers because she has that damage to escape. Yep, Corvax is going to get spotted out by that camera. Sage with another trailblazer just to clear things out. We'll be able to spot one, but might have been able to hear the footsteps of a second. But it's going to be a little bit of a push. Jelly looking to get ahead of the fight, but Corvax falls and showers out. KO able to find that kill, and here comes Jelly looking for another. Brought to 33 health, but that should be the site given to North Texas. They will get the spike down. Kyra with an Aries trying to see if they can get any spam damage. Potentially a kill, like right there. That is one. That's a really big pick. Spike goes down though. 3v4 situation. Lilac able to find one, is able to trade the numbers down. There's Bab. Cleaning things up. 2k for the Cypher. Kyra's not going to be able to do much. Three on the board for North Texas. As they win the first proper rifle round, and now, once again, Uvic Gold is forced onto the pistols. Stinks. Need to tighten up a little bit more. I like what they're doing, sending Korovex out to play in showers because she can get out. And I like how early she's denying that info. It's just, UVG haven't been able to actually hold on to showers for very long. And I'd like to see them try and double up there, so that way they can actually make sure that they can hold on to showers should that retake need to come in for the A-Site. Corvax one away from the knives, off to get the heavy shield. So yep, it's going to be a play for the shower orb for the side of UV. Trying to get their jet. Here. The weapon is needed, but it's going to be a very quick counter push for the side of North Texas. Lilac already grabbed one, finally going to get taken down. That's actually the spike left over by Box in a weird position. And there's knives, as just you say. Jelly's able to trade one, but is falling. Bab. Gets the neural theft online. 2v3 situation. Weapons are not great. But Zero Knight with a classic. Trying to find one. Stinger for Ermaline. Able to trade that out. But Bab cleans things up. Fourth on the board for North Texas. Really good stuff. Really nice initiation. And a really good counter push. Understanding that the knives were exactly the play that UVG were going for. And trying to stop Core of X from getting those online was the play. Put, counter pushing towards A short. And it works out. They mowed things down. And look at that. It's another rifle round. Yeah, with the rifles back on the board, I'd like to see UVG try and change up their play a little bit. I know that Cypher normally plays B, but maybe switching Cypher and Viper around a little bit to try and counter these A rushes that UNT have had such success with could be something to look into. But either way, it doesn't even look like they're having problems with the information about it. It's just stopping it. Hell. Showstopper coming hands of Jelly, but it's going to be Kyra getting the first pick here. The Showstopper and Lilac, those two duelists in tandem, finds three kills between the two of them. 
four still surviving for UNT as they take their sweet time to get this spike down exactly where they want it. It's going to be a two-person retake for the sided UV gold. And man, it is looking brutal for the squad. Lilac will clean things up. 3K for the Jet. 2K for the Rays. The duel is coming to town. And they're looking to play. And going back to the Toronto Metropolitan uh, versus Grand Valley game. TMU had this double duelist comp that was pretty similar. They just had Sage instead of Cypher. And this is what I wanted to see from them on their attack side. You have ways of going up and going over these Cypher trips and this Viper utility. Why not use it? You can get super aggressive. You can keep hits ambiguous until that last minute just by making sure you always, like, Either throwing out pressure on both sides of the map or relying mostly on sky utility that can refresh. But they just have had no issues with anything. Except maybe using the dog. <laughs> Here we go. Looking like a very straightforward B hit for the side of UNT. They still have to clear out this cypher here in two with a Bucky, but zero. Just unlucky looking the wrong way. Ermily will be able to find one, but that's going to be okay. I'm creating that out. Four still alive for the side of North Texas. And once again, a 2v4 situation. UVG on this retake. I think you need to start seeing them get aggressive. Like, you've seen them, like, control space. Oh, unless Kyra can just hit shots like that. What the heck was that, my friend? Oh, my goodness! From both sides, I don't know what just happened. There's just Lilac hitting shots, uh, Jets hitting shots. That's Valorant. <laughs> Everybody loves a good shot now and again. Coravex trying to put the team on the back. Finds two kills right off, but won't be able to do much. And as we go into a timeout, Anima, I was talking ever so slightly about potentially wanting the defense to get aggressive. What do you think they should be doing now during this timeout? It's got to be more pressure. I, <laughs> If you haven't gathered... I'm a big fan of pushing out B-Long, but I think especially since you have this Jet who can get aggressive really quickly or get out really quickly, there's no reason not to. I think you flip the Cypher over to A, you let the Viper play the fast rotate, have her setups on both sites, and then you just send Sky and Jet to play long. That way you can hold A a little bit more tightly. You have a little bit more power for the retake because you'll have both Cypher and Viper Util on A if it's not dealt with. And that way you can quickly establish whether or not uh, UNT, a team that's shown to be very quick and aggressive, is actually gearing up to hit B or not. Four rounds in a row for the side of North Texas. Rifles and hands for the entire lobby. And three ultimates will be available. Nearly four as Zatkip is one away from that Viper's Pit for the defense. So plenty of pressure can be applied for the defense. But we are just looking for a big push. And I think you're going to get your wish with that B-long push right there. Anima. But on the other side, North Texas looking for that slow A default. Just looking to see what they can get. There's that Viper one-way. It's not the same one that we saw last map, but that style of one-way is just so good at holding down a short because you can't push through it like you can with a Brim Smoke. You just take too much damage and there's too high of a risk of being sprayed out. Rotate's already here for the side of UVG. They're making sure they want to stop things out with the information they've gained over onto the B site. And now if Ermely and Corvex just holding down B short... That has closed the map up immensely. The trip is still holding there, so North Texas doesn't have I've too much to worry about. They understand they've given up so much on the B side. With under a minute to go, they still have the opportunity to go anywhere, but here comes the Seekers. Here comes the Initiation. Here comes Sage with the first pick. Lilac grabs for a second. The last player in heaven noted. Looking for a kill, but Bab is there for the spray through. And just as the round started, it feels like it is over. 5v2 situation. Ermely looking to see if they can get anything done with that jet. Corvax also there just for some spray through, but here comes Bab tucked in. One false, and that will be Jelly, but that will be a practically flawless round. A fifth in a row for North Texas, and as we go into round nine, things are looking bleak. Yeah. And going back to earlier games, when we saw a lot of times the teams get sort of a streak of rounds, there wasn't always money to actually back it up, because especially in the Carlton versus Scarlet game, the rounds were so close. 
here, North Texas has money for days. Sure, Sage is a little bit uh, broke and yes, probably get a team to buy for her, but everyone else is loaded. They have such a long streak of rounds that have mostly been flawless or nearly flawless that they just have so much money. And they can just do whatever they want with it, really. Yeah, what, what you lose with the raise and going for the jet, like on this defense, I'm you're waiting for the operator to come online. I think that's exactly what they should be doing, but you've seen the jet hit crazy Spike shots, and there's a crazy shot from Kyra holding guarded by themselves, finally taken down by Lilac. But it's gonna be the numbers disadvantage for UVG. The spike is gonna make its way to the A site. There's the TP. There are all of North Texas making their way. Just one player here standing. Just to try and hold things off. Slow things down even, but beyond that, what can Zero Side do? Play with that Spectre. They are able to get one, and there's the Neural Theft, so pretty big stuff. But Bab is there for the trade. Find Sad Kip. It's going to be a little bit brutal. The Spike will be able to go down, and Zero Side is able to find that kill in time. Horvex with that Sheriff has hit some crazy shots, but with their teammate falling down, it's going to be a 1-3 situation. Finds the first, though. Bab falls, gets a little aggressive, and if you're North Texas, you don't want to mess with this jet. You've seen what they can do, but so many angles to look, so many places to cross. The bomb isn't planted particularly anywhere, though. Just outside the truck, but the timing is it just isn't right. Lilac takes down the jet counterpart. Eight for the side of University of North Texas. And UVG... Now having rifles in the hands, four ultimates on board, they need an answer, and they need one fast, with six having gone by them in a row. And unfortunately, they don't have a timeout to work with either. It's already been used. They do, like you said, have the ultimates, but they need to figure out a way to actually utilize them in a way that lets them get into the round. I wouldn't be surprised to see them go for a retake with it, but I would really like for them to, again, just try and figure out a way to use them aggressively or figure out a way to sequester the North Texas players into a location that they can't really escape from an orbital strike. And the money isn't even perfect early on a, like a little bit of a bulldog, I believe. But here comes a little bit of aggression. Ermly's got to come up huge to get some kills. There's a little bit of a bait. And Kyra's able to get one. Ermly with a big flash. Luki trying to find the kills. The updraft and dash will not allow Lilacs to survive. The showstopper will cut off her jelly trying to find that pick. Even the numbers out a little bit, but it's a 2v4 situation. Corvax on the side by themselves finds a second kill on the round. And now it's Bab in a 1v3 situation. We'll invest the neural theft. They think this is winnable. And potentially it could be. So you understand where these lurkers are and the air they take down the raid boss, Bab, able to take down Corvax, and that's gonna be a sprint towards the A side. It's going to be a race. Cypher trip goes down. Do they know where Sadkip is? Are they gonna be aware that Sadkip is there waiting? Spike trying to go down, not gonna go on in time. A second round finally won for the side of the Uvic Gold as they just hang on just by a thread. And I mentioned at the start of that last round that they had to figure out a way to use the ultimates to let themselves back into rounds. That was exactly what they needed. They needed that Neural Theft, they needed those Seekers, they did just enough to where the rest of the fights, after they broke a certain way, were very easy to clean up for the side of Uvic. And that's exactly the type of momentum shift they need. Now they just need to not lose this round and have their economy broke for the uh, last round of the half. They do have two excellent tools for, you know, post-plan. They have the Vipers, but they have the Orbital Strike, but the Spike is still over on A. That can get a little bit precarious, but I think the plan is to fake B, move towards A. I, I think that might be why that Spike is still sitting there. I also don't know if the dog noticed the trip there. There's probably a chance that it hurt it, but that, that uh, camera shot should give it away that Cypher is here. Sage able to find the first kill in this round. Horvath there for the trade, but it's going to be the Orbital Strike going off very, very early for that side. So that's going to be the rotation back to the A side, but the spike is still out in the open. I don't think they realize this. Finally, Akeo looking to hit, try and find any kills. They will be able to find the jet, and Sage on the other side finds another one. North Texas one enemy has game. the moment. They are starting to get through this, and Kyra. Left to do it by themselves as the Viper falls. Once again, so brutal. 
Eight to ten, a chance for a spray through, but Lilac is too quick on the finger. On the trigger, Lilac sprays down Kyra, and that's a ninth on the board for North Texas as we go into the last round of the half. Yeah, great lurk out by Sage right there. Just being inserted all the way into elbow, knows that they're going to try and rotate off, and that they're just not expecting that, and spots the one vulnerability in that B-Sight hold. The Viper's Pit completely obscures her vi their vision of actually letting her into elbow, and she's able to come up with two for it. North Texas, a chance to get the double digits in their first half on the attacking side. And, you know, Nerdy Bird was talking that this might be a defensive side in map, but today it's been fairly balanced, but here the attackers, or at least North Texas, are just currently playing as the better team, and there's Lilac with a huge pick. Does bring Sage a little bit low, sad kid, but that's gonna be Lilac. Hard had so much control. The spike gonna get delayed just for a little bit, and it will be able to find Jelly, actually, but Lilac's there for the trade. Corvex with that Sheriff out of knives in the hands, and that's gonna be Lilac finding a third kill. Looking to go for the ace, potentially finds a potential fourth victim. Eight bullets left in the Vandal, a lot of knives. Opting to just play a little bit safer as the spike has gone down. 2v5 situation, Zero Zeit looking for anything. Can't really spot out, Trailblazer will spot that out. Four kills, a fifth kill, and the first ace here in the Aurora Cup. Excellent. Work for North Texas as they reach double digits. 10 to 2 as they switch sides and move to the defense. UVG scrambling for answers. They finally get a little more breathing room, but I don't know, Anima. This looks just about over. Yeah. I, wa I want to see UVic find a way back into this. But at the same time, it doesn't look like they're entirely on the same page. And that's really... Excuse me. It's really, really hard to overcome especially against a team as aggressive as North Texas. And it doesn't look like they're going to stop the aggression. They have both the duelists in the same place, and that's usually not because they're just over there chilling. That's usually because that means that they want to just go. Lilac is 21-3. and three. Just 21-3. and 7.0 KDA. You know, standard stuff. Excellent stuff coming out from that jet, but... UVG looking for answers, looking to get some momentum here on the defense, but UV Sage spotting three members and is forced to sprint as fast as they can. Flash just to confirm this is a push over to the B side, so it will be a retake situation for UVG. Eventually, yeah, the spike will be able to go down. Attack can actually get stopped by a trip, spam through the cyber cage, and that will be it for a little bit, but Kyra and Gort. Tex able to find Pumps two down. kills very quickly on, so the offense able to even the numbers, put them back in their favor. Some really good stuff already. Jelly playing on top of the box in hookah. Akeo separated. Amali just to clear that little area. Here's the initiation. Here's the retake. Lilac able to find one. Yeah, trades all over the place. And Akeo left to win a 1v2 situation. Able to find the first one. The right clicks can't land. And UVG win their pistol. And keep themselves in this. Right clicks not quite working out the best. And UVG finally get another round on the board. All the way back up to 10-3. And sure, they have the stronger weapons. But they really have to avoid being thrifted here. It's still a chance. We saw the last one. We saw um, Scarlet get an absolute upset um, beating Carlton's Thrifty, I believe. Or was it the other way around? It was the other way around. Oh, other way around. So Carlton getting a Thrifty over Scarlet's Okay, no, the other way around. around. <laughs> nah, gosh darn it. I said it right the first time. You did. You did. Uh, I'm just trying to continue. Either way. Either way. It's going to be a... North Texas have pushed all the way through A and Hookah. And they TP'd. They have all of Shower's control and... Bab is going to fall instantly. Corvex looking to try and hold things off, and they will be able to do so. Three kills for the Chet. No ace for this time, but Sage is left in a 1v5 situation. Running back as far as they can, but it's going to be a full all this round from UVG. Pikes looking much better now. More doubts. We're ready. Great job handling that aggression. Unfortunately, the North Texas players just weren't quite space straight, and Corvex able to get one back out get another couple, and by that point in time, she had the whole rest of her team with her. And at that point, UNT just didn't have much of a chance. Not with those weaker weapons.
But this time they will have the rifles. They will have the ability to fight back into this. No ultimates really close for either of these squads. I mean, you're four away, three away potentially, but still long ways away from those to be coming into effect. So right now, it's a gun game. UBG looking to try and win this bonus round. It will be so huge in getting themselves back to this map, but Jelly finding the first kip on the sad kip is not the way you wanted to see a Corvax and showers by themselves with their sky looking for a play with that trailblazer. Spots one, but not much else beyond that. At one point didn't spot that brimstone tucked very close in. Akeo looking to try and get a huge pick. Potentially could get spotted out. Molly, two smokes, there's one being used, trying to hold the cross, and Jelly, able to take down Korovex, Chet unable to cross in time, and that's going to be a second, a two kills for Lilac, actually, and it's now Ermaly, a bulldog, trying to do as much damage as possible in this round, finds one, 16 bullets left in the mag, trying to see what else can they do, finds a second kill, a 3k for Jelly, so good, um, good, Build up on that showstopper, but two people fall for the side of North Texas. So I consider that a half win for UVG. Yeah. And UVG actually does have enough to buy. They were able to just full bonus that last round and make sure that they could buy for this one. However, if they lose this, they're going on to uh, University of North Texas's match point with very little money for actually purchasing up weaponry. Gorvex kind of has to go huge here. That's who we're looking for, both between her being at the top of the leaderboard and being close to knives to potentially offset the economy if they do end up losing. UVG is off two from that orbital strike, so potentially if you can get the hand, a spike, or potentially a really big play, but it's going to be actually Ermely grabbing the Seekers first, so that's going to be the first investment, first ultimate ready in this half. That kept pushing towards, going for a TP play, so it's actually going to be the pivot towards the B site. But it's only two, it's a 2v2 situation, and Bab is going to be the only one holding the site. They don't have any guarded pr pressure, and Sage is just left there, but Corvex able to find Jelly on the cross. Lurking, trying to find a timing, but it turns that out to be in UVG's favor. That kept tagged out, trying for anything, but it's going to be the flick. Zeno, Zite falls, but... Part of me is going to say finds the kill, but it's going to be the sky staying alive. Spike still over onto this B site, looking to try to get the plant, but Sage is looking to deny it. They're still alive and kicking the Guardian, and a spray through a 3k with the Guardian finally falls from Zadkim. And a second kill from the Viper, looking to stay alive, but Lilac is on the other end. Finds the first kill, Spike in the open, Lilac clutches things out! It is match and series point for North Texas! A valiant effort for you, Vic, but... They're just unable to come up with the kills at the right time. And that means that they are going to be on match point. Eight chances. Eight chances. We've seen crazier things, potentially, but... We we but, have indeed seen crazier things. But I don't know about this animal. I mean, we've, we've seen, like, you know, our first couple matches of the day. Like, not just, like, the one we got to broadcast, but, like, all the matches. You saw a lot of 13-0s other than the one we broadcast. You've seen blowouts, so... But we've been lucky. We've been very grateful to get some really close matches. This one just seems to be slipping out of the hands of Uvic Gold. There is a chance. They are close to that Brimmel. They still have some pieces of utility that they definitely can get back into this, but they have to come up huge. They have to find something. They have to find just a little bit of an opening and exploit that. They but are... North Texas. Man... Uvic is one off of two different ults. One of those is going to be that Blade Storm. The other one, the Orbital Strike. So, there's something to work with. It's just a matter of whether or not they can actually secure either of the ult orbs in the first place. Three ultimates off by one for UVG. You have the Neural oh, Theft, yeah. you have the Knives, really and you have the Seekers. But Lilac does have the Blade. It's not really super important, but Sage does have the Seekers coming online, and more importantly, they are getting that Showstopper online right now. So it has gone from bad to potentially even worse for the side of UBG. The trades come out, though, and that's going to be a little bit decent, but Jelly definitely has that Stopper on right now, but it's going to be the TP 
The shower play for the side of UBG. Trying to get out to the site. Bab holding heaven. Spots out ahead. Grab. Clicks one. Cage to just play a little bit more safe. But the plan comes through. Still no vibe. For ultimate, Bab looking to try to find anything, closing things out right here. It'll be Jelly finishing the job. North Texas will win this series 13 to 4 for our last match of the Wild Robin series here on the Aurora series. Excellent stuff from North Texas, and really shout out to you, Vic Gold. They put up a fight, but man, North Texas was the better team today. That aggressive style just so hard to deal with, especially without that raise to help slow things down. And unfortunately, just they weren't able to get an operator online on defense. So the Jet yeah. couldn't really do what the Jet was there to do. And ultimately, there's a lot of things that they can look back on and just be like, okay, yeah, we could play that a little bit differently in the future. And that's really what we're here for. Like, really, I mean, it's close Valorant all the way through. And speaking of close Valorant, we're going to bring in a close friend of ours, Nerdy Bird. You ready to come back to the desk? <laughs> yes, I am ready to come back. And... I in all honesty, I have to just agree with what both of you were saying within regards to not being able to really facilitate. And this happens in everyone's games from time to time. Like, no one has a perfect game. So at the end of the day, like you mentioned, you, all you can do is learn from it and continue to move forward. But if you can't get your duelist like, to lock in and can't facilitate your duelist to be a little bit more successful, it can make a game extremely difficult. And unfortunately, I think that's really just what ended up happening. Whereas North Texas, they... They were solid. They popped off. There was a couple situations where I sat there and I was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? There was also a default push that confused most of production, but I sat there just kind of quietly like, what are they cooking? When I saw multiple yeah. ults dropped on B site when the spike was sitting over near A site and no one had touched it, I was like, okay, so they're defaulting, but what, what's the plan here that's about to happen? So that sort of stuff, like, of course, we're not in their minds, but at the end of the day, like, you can go back to these situations, watch the VOD, watch the broadcast, and learn from it. So, you, Vic, you have a lot of stuff that you can grow on. North Texas, y'all didn't play perfectly either, so obviously there's chances for them to grow too. With that being said, do you two foresee North Texas going the distance here based off of what they saw? Do you think you're in what you saw from them, or do you think that what we saw earlier today in our group stage, they've got a really tough road ahead of them? There are some really good teams that they'll have to play against. But if they can keep up that aggressive play style, it's such a well-defined way of playing that they look very cohesive with, and they all look in sync with each other. And I think that could catch some teams off guard. Kind of like how a, like a Paper X style team would, where it's not always like the best comp per se, but they know how to play it. They know how to play with each other. And ultimately, that's what really matters. And they know their composition very well. You were talking about earlier when we saw the Cypher and the Double Duels coming out. We were comparing it to the Sage Double Duelist that we saw from the Jet and the Rays. And a Sage earlier on in our first series. And you mentioned the benefits of having that Cypher, that passive information, the better stalling tactics. And on the defense, you saw North Texas absolutely clear the way to prevent Uvic from ever getting a chance to get back into the series either way. North Texas, they also have some mean aimers all the way through. <laughs> Uvic, both of these teams, they have some incredible aimers, but man, North Texas all the way are balanced wise. Like they are all hitting shots. They are playing their utility so well. And on Bind, as we've seen, I've become very familiar with Bind today. <laughs> They've played that very well. I think we understand why Bind was picked. Also, I'm hoping that as we, I mean, like, there's no possible way that we only see Bind. One of our production <laughs> members was like, what if we had a full tournament of just Bind? And in my mind, I was like, imagine a best of three of just Bind. I didn't say that out loud, but I was like, I'd be ripping my hair out. If I was a player, I'd be like, if I mess up map one, you better bet that I'm changing things up so drastically. I'm like a different human being in map two. So, uh, so thankfully, when we move on from our group stage into the semis, which the brackets are currently being set up, well, it's quarterfinals, brackets are currently being set up for that. So thank you so much to our staff for taking care of that because seating is not my thing. But with that <laughs> being said, um, like we, we've seen Bind three times in a row. We're going to end up now into best of three series. So we can't just see bind, but I am also predicting we're most likely going to see bind still yeah. in our best of threes. I do believe we actually have an interview coming up with one of the players from North Texas. With that being said, both of you can run away, go grab some drinks, maybe get a snack, give your voice boxes a rest. Cause with best of threes, you're definitely going to need those vocal cords intact. So you two relax and I'll take care of this interview and see you both back in a little bit. Thank you so much.
<laughs> Hello, Nina. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> I cannot hear you. I'm so sorry. I lost sound for a second. Okay, so unfortunately you are a bit quiet on my side, so if you could bear with me a moment while I get that figured out. It's probably something to do with me. It's always my problem for hear. some reason. <laughs> I cannot hear uh, anything. With that being said, I just want to say, Bab, your Cypher play, I absolutely adored it. I do not play Cypher. I'm not I a good know. Sentinel player in any regards. So... With, they can't hear me I either. I think we might have just gotten it figured out. Can you hear me at least, Bab? They did. Uh -oh. I can't hear. We're anything. both awkwardly smiling at each other right now. So something tells me yeah. I can't hear you and you can't hear me. And I just got a kathunk noise from someone in my production. So thank y'all. I love you. I can't hear anything. <laughs> um. All right. Uh, we'll actually take a quick break here, real fast, while we get this audio figured out. And Bab, please stay here with me. We'll get this worked out, and we can actually talk to one another for a moment.
Welcome back to the Aurora Series broadcast. This is First Light. I'm Nerdy Bird, and joining me alongside right now is one of the players from North Texas, Bab. How are you feeling after that win? I'm feeling great. I'm super excited about this tournament. It's been so much fun. There we go. Can you, would you mind repeating that? I'm so sorry. I said I'm feeling great. Um, super excited about this tournament so far. It's been so much fun. Okay, so a little bit more of a a personal question here more like your comfort going into the remaining games that we're that are going to be for out the rest of the day granted yes we don't know who your opponents are going to be moving forward but are there any teams that just kind of have already stuck out to you that when you go up against them you know you're going to have to be basically and i say this not to be insulting because this is what i do and i know a lot of other gamers do it but like go full goblin mode while you're playing and just like zone in hard focus and do everything in your power to be just an oppressive force when you're playing like any of those teams kind of standing out to you right now that you're a little scared to go against and are prepping to be in those situations um at the moment no i think most of us are kind of just we're taking it game by game really we're not really looking towards whatever's happening next until it is time to do it um i think our energy is too kind of high to like try and look forward to the next thing right now but um we're just having a lot of fun so whatever th gets thrown at us we're prepared for right now i like that mentality that's definitely one that i think uh, other people myself included could benefit from but uh, i overthink everything when it comes to <laughs> anything in my life so i applaud you for that now as we move forward throughout the day i'm not trying to get you to spill any strategies but might we see you playing something other than cypher because i mean like yes your sentinel play solid i love me a good cypher but is is he your main do you play other agents that we might be able to see today <laughs> Um, it's actually funny. No, he's not my main. We've had some uh, team switch around this semester. So um, I have taking on kind of a fill role right now, but I actually made breach. So <laughs> we'll, okay. see. we'll see. Yeah, very different. <laughs> Well, I hope I get to see you on Breach at some point today. Granted, I don't get to call all of the action that you will be uh, having on screen, but I'll be watching from the prod room. With that being said, Bab, thank you so much for joining me here for this quick interview. I'll let you go so you can take a quick break, go get food, get, I, I guess, maybe de-energize a little bit so you can focus <laughs> up for your next game or just stay as hype and excited as possible. Whichever one that is, it's up to you. But thank you so much for joining me here, and I hope your next game goes well. Thank you. All right, so that was Bab telling me that uh, she's not a Cypher player, she's a Breach player. Um, I'm a little <laughs> caught off guard by that. Does that change anything with in regards to you? what you two think we might see from that North Texas squad going later on in the day? Uh, more Breach, I'd assume. <laughs> I, but I hope that, so. Honestly, I mean, I Split. If splits are available. That's the premier map right now, so I would expect people to have a Split somewhere. So, honestly, if we get but, off Bind... Maybe see Split. Anima, what do you think? Do you think the, the Breach is going to be coming in clutch and absolutely demolishing? I mean, that would be awesome. Like, get all the way up to the best of fives, map five, and Bab finally gets unleashed on Breach. <laughs> but no, even, like, just knowing that you have a player who's playing off-roll and still doing as well as she did, that's a huge confidence boost for the North mm -hmm. Texas team. I look forward. I look forward to seeing what other agents Fab's going to end up playing. <laughs> Goes I on do to as speak well. for everything about like the entire <laughs> flexibility, the entire roster, how aggressive and how much fun they're going to be to watch, regardless of how they do. That team was so much fun to watch on Bind with that double duelist setup and a Cipher that is like, oh yeah, I don't really play <laughs> Cipher, but like I can play Cipher. And you two, you touched on it, the aggressiveness that the team showed, I think is really funny because when we're, when I was talking to Bab, she mentioned like, you know, we're just really excited and really happy and having fun. And I, in, in my mind, I'm like, okay, so is the excitement what's causing the pop-off gameplay or is this just how you normally play? So if you're even like calm and nothing, like nothing's going through your mind beyond just like, all right, I'm going to hit this shot, I'm going to round this corner, you know, dink that person, walk away. Uh, is this always the quality of gameplay we get from them? Because obviously we've got hours to go here and it could either go up, it could go down, it could stay the same. 
But either way, they have to go through a lull period, just like all of us are going to have to, because we're going to take a quick break, let everyone go relax for a little bit, because we're about to jump into our actual best of threes for quarterfinals. So both of you go rest for a little bit longer. I appreciate you, and we'll all be back here in just a little bit.
My mirror shows the other side of me All these ones and zeros, nothing in between But there's so much more to me than eyes can see Than eyes can see I'm not binary There's so much more to me than eyes can see Than eyes can see I'm not binary
everyone and welcome back to the Aurora Series First Light broadcast in partnership with Xfinity and joining me is Anima and Janice. Now with that being said, I made a mistake earlier and I said that we were moving on to our best of threes when in reality we go from round robin to playoffs then to quarterfinals, semis, and grands. So now we're in our playoff stage. It's still best of ones and so it's going to be Western Wings. I like that name but it makes me want chicken wings and Ponestega going up against each other. Two teams we have yet to see on broadcast but Nonetheless, I'm super excited. With that in mind, I'm sorry, Anima, but do you think we're going to see Bind again? Uh, if it's Bind, I might just leave and go get chicken. <laughs> Dude, I have my... Mad. That sounds really good. And I have a friend bringing hungry. me chicken Chick-fil-A, so I've got chicken on the way right now, y'all. I'm vibing. All right, Janice, is there a map you would like to see? Uh, bind. Because I'm insane. <laughs> Um, and all serious, Lotus would be fun. But I mean, like that was the first map banned last time. But I think Bind is like, I, I, all jokes aside, I mean, would I be a little annoyed casting Bind again? Yes, but <laughs> I mean, it's been such a close map all the way through. You know, last series wasn't as close, but still, there was a lot of huge plays all the way around. I love my Breeze enjoyer. I would love to see Breeze, especially this new renovated Breeze that's now been out for a couple weeks. You know, the halls change hasn't come through yet, but that would be a fun map to go through. Um, I'm always an Ascent enjoyer if you're up for that. But I know Are you a duelist? I'm a controller main. I'm a controller. Oh. I play Omen and Viper. Okay, okay. And Anima, what do you, what do you main? Uh, everything, but also mostly controller. Okay. All right. The breeze makes sense. I just, you know what? I, I just get to don't, be Don't let me in host. with the breeze. Don't let me in with the breeze. I, <laughs> I won't, want no uh, okay. part of the breeze. What map would you like to see? I think I heard Split. I already I already mentioned it, but Lotus. Split would be yeah, cool. Lotus. Okay, uh, Lotus. Honestly, give me Sunset, though. Let's see how these teams Ooh. deal with Sunset. 
Sunset's such a fun map. Possibly coping for some teams. Um, <laughs> it is in our possibility of rotation. I personally, I'm an ascent enjoyer. I'm also an icebox yeah. enjoyer, but that's because I'm really crazy and people don't like icebox. So it was out for a really long time. I casted a lot of events where like it was like the automatic first ban was icebox. It made me laugh. So it'd be great to see I, uh, icebox. I'd like to see ascent. There was there was one night a couple years ago where I had like no sleep schedule and I watched like. I want to say it was in 2022, so I was watching, like, VCL, like, Northern Europe, uh, like, the Australian tournaments, uh, the Korean tournaments, and in total, I watched eight maps of Icebox, seven maps of Ascent, and four maps of Breeze across, like, eight best of threes. It That's absolutely <laughs> wild. <laughs> I forgot Icebox, Icebox is back in a rotation. I forgot how much I enjoy that, especially as someone who, like, whenever I have a team that knows how to listen to me and I get to play Viper and I just get to, like, just follow the orb, just play mid, just play around my utility. It's so much fun, but... I, I mean, Sunset would also be such a fun map with that new addition. Either way. Well, with that being said, I think teams are still trying to get figured out what maps they're banning. I know earlier we accidentally had a team call the map pick too soon in the ban phase, and so their twice. map pick ended up get twice ended up getting banned. It happens to everybody, and I'm the devious person on the other side who's like, "Oh, you want that map? Do you?" Well, oh, it was it was worse. It, it was the last map that they banned. It like they held it out for so long, <laughs> and it was the very last map that was banned. Oh, uh, that's what that's when you're playing with your food sometimes. But in all honesty, at the end of the day, I, I actually am a Haven enjoyer, even though I'm a Sage player. I'm a Haven enjoyer. I love Haven. So we don't I get miss Haven. haven. Here, I miss the, Haven. The next option for, you know, the three point fun map is Lotus. I just as a Breach player, I'm OK with. Well, sorry, as a Brimstone player, I'm OK with Lotus because I feel like I'm useful on Lotus as a comparison to other maps. It's not because he's not a good agent. I'm just bad at Brimstone and I'm bad at Breach. So with that in mind, I'm curious to see if today we're going to see a little bit more variation in our agent selection or production and I were talking. We were shocked that on Bind, we did not see a Gecko. Oh, true. Were you two at all like caught off guard by that? We we threw around some agents that we'd like to see, but I don't think Gecko came up. We did not bring up Gecko, and that's surprising considering we brought how... up a lot of we brought up Omen. We forgot about Wingman. <laughs> we forgot Wingman about Wingman. Is my favorite agent. <laughs> Wingman and its that. owner. <laughs> Imagine do, all you do is just sit your cuddle bit of backpack. Where we just play as Wingman. Please. Next that, April Fools, you just really get to cool. backpack onto someone and just get launched, and that's the entire game mode. You, you get to play as either Wide Joy or Wingman. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be an interesting game mode nonetheless. I am hoping, though, like, what we've not... Genuinely, I want to see some Fade. I love Fade. Fade is... I have a standee of Fade in my living room because I worked nice. one of the Red Bull campus events, and so oh. I, I was given that. All of my friends are like, are you okay when they walk in and see that? And I have yet to be, like, my want to see Fade has yet to be quelled during this broadcast. So give me Fade. Give me some Wingman. I don't care if, you know, it is a last-ditch effort. I need to see one Wingman plant today. Just one. A little buddy plant. I miss when Fade was, like, super good. I know most people, like, most, like, professionals don't. But, like, I loved seeing, like, as a viewer, loved seeing all those little traps you can do with the eye and the prowlers and how good yeah. they were. And that ultimate was just I devastating. I don't really miss that time. But that's mostly because that was also when Chamber was really good. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, like, I don't hate Chamber. But I am I glad that he is not as good as he was. <laughs> I hate just... Chamber. I don't. I used to play Chamber when he was good, and then I was like, wow, I feel good at Valorant. I'm going to keep playing this. So you have I Chamber still to play think. Chamber sometimes. I do too, but like, I, I was like, I also have power issue where I was like, I need to control space, and if not, I feel like I'm useless. And if not, that's everyone else is just in the way. You feel? That's what Premiere's for. Yeah. Don't look at me that like that, please. Nerdy Bird. Don't look at me. Don't look at me like that. I am going to look at you like that. I <laughs> I am the person who, you know, I'm, I'm the brimmy with the stimmy. I throw the stimmy down and everyone, you know, we swing together. We work as a team. I'm that supportive, like, let me drop my util for you to engage type of player. And then there's people who are like, you are in my way. 
<laughs> yes! Look, them. at the very least, none of us here install Ocarina's. I Real. think we can all agree on that. But the frustration when you like, you know, someone gets on a scent and they take omen and then they smoke genera generator and they refuse to smoke door and they smoke like the right side of heaven and you're trying to initiate and like every single angle is available because your smokes doesn't know how to play. I, that's for me is like, I, makes me cry a little bit. Well, you know, being a smokes player is not always fun, and we too like to cry because we need to because our team bullies us. With that being said, we uh, we are in. I want to reiterate our our playoff stage that will lead into our best of three. So right now we are once again in best of ones. We're going to watch the team that's going to make me want food. Western Wings taking on Conestega, but off broadcast we have. And I can't believe this is a team name. I'm not throwing shade at y'all. It's just I've heard it. I don't really understand what it means, but it's become a meme. We have oh, Phantom Tax taking on I the don't... University of Delaware. <laughs> Anima, I don't Do even you know want... how to explain it to me. It's going to go in one ear and out the other, or I'm going to, like, hear it from you, and then instantaneously when I'm done broadcasting, okay, like, no. get I, in my I got, Discord I got and this. judge my friends. All right. Trust me on this. Uh, <laughs> you know how, like, when you were a kid and you'd, like, go out to eat somewhere and your dad would like steal a bite of food off your plate he, that, yes imagine uh if a very popular streamer had a friend who did that cheese that's it that's, that's all it is <laughs> i'm just thinking about the cheese tax right now that, like that song is just like running in my head right now <laughs> okay well um uh, <laughs> that's uh that's our number five seed taking on our number 12 seed <laughs> respectively and then we're going to have Scarlet taking on Knights, uh, UCF, Knights Pink, which is our 7th seed versus our 10th seed. And then our 6th seed and 11th seed, which is the Terps Esports Lilac Squad taking on the uh, Grand Valley Game Changers Squad for our 4th and in the entire, this entire playoff round. Those are all four of the games that are going to be occurring. So, interested to see how this goes because the winner of this game in particular... Goes on to play North Texas. Ooh, North Texas, our number one seed. That's going to be really exciting. A lot of familiar faces in this bracket. We do see North Texas back. We do see Carleton. And once again, Grand Valley State's back. UH Scarlet is back. Um, and yeah, either way, this is going to be such a fun way. we got the 8 and 9 seed right here playing to fight, a chance to fight North Texas. And we saw how dominant North Texas was earlier on today. Either way, I'm really excited for what we get once we get started. Not to mention, they are, North Texas is, I'm not, again, I'm not saying this to throw shade. Typically, I'm used to gamers, probably because just I've heard it in the background of, you know, other arenas when they're playing Valorant. They are tryharding, so, like, <laughs> screaming into their mics, tryharding, and just to know that they're, like, relaxed, having a good time, they're hyper, and they're just enjoying themselves, and they played that well is scary. So the question is, are we going to see them go full gamer mode? later in the series is someone going to give them a run for their money well north texas is your upcoming opponent conestega western wings which one of you is ready to go up against them is my question and we're going to start answering that question first with figuring out which map these two teams have landed on so i'll leave it to you two to take it from here best of luck this is your last best of one of the day so don't go too heavy on the casting here we got to <laughs> save your voices for later the last uh best of one that can only be bind Oh, we are it's... guaranteed to have another map after this one. Yes. Uh, I haven't... I have no idea. I, this could be Bind for all I know. I'm just really hoping it's not Bind. Icebox I taking... Okay, Breeze is still there. Banning a scent. Somebody's banning Bre a scent. That means that they're probably There's banning Breeze. the boring ones. So oh, no. I, no, it's still there. It's still there. No! <laughs> <laughs> you got to be kidding me. I'm <laughs> so I wonder what we're gonna see on oh, on Bind. I bet it's, it's gonna be no a sky way. and there's a rays no way. and a brimstone. <laughs> so, hey, go ahead, I, go ahead. I have I always uh, keep notes on like every every match I've casted, and I am very tired of just writing team versus team best of one. Bind. I now have four sheets of paper that all have best of one bind on them. In, in... And given that so many teams want to play with it, I wouldn't be surprised if we see it map one of the 
best of three stage as well. But who knows? Either way, that's later. This is right now. This is bind again. 4.0. Two teams that we haven't seen yet. We have no idea what these two teams are going to play. We have no idea how they're going to play. And we have no idea how this is going to end up. But all we do know is that whoever wins has a date with North Texas. And let's just say that they should be glad that they're getting the fine practice in. I have a friend that's watching that has never watched any Valorant. And I'm sure by the end of tonight, they're going to be very familiar with Bind. So shout out to you, Thea. But here we go. Agent select. Immediately, we're getting a Viper. So we're getting... <gasps> Chamber! Chamber's locked in! All right. Okay. We also have a Breach uh, being locked in as well. All right. We have some two very different compositions. So Brimstones for both sides. Raises for both sides. And Skies for both sides. But we got... On one side, we got the Chamber and the Viper. The other side, a Breach and a Cypher. What are we looking at? Let's start with the Chamber and Viper. What are we looking at? Okay. The Chamber and Viper, that's pretty standard. That's something that we've seen from a lot of different teams throughout the years. Uh, it kind of started popping up as Sage was falling off. Uh, I just noticed the Brim's name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Chamber, very good for when you want the op power of a jet but you also need some sort of extra stall utility he's like a very nice middle ground for it uh meanwhile on the other side the breach over the viper tells me that western wings is going to want to get aggressive with things and i'm looking forward to it especially because uh Constega does not have a hard sentinel they have chamber and chamber is great and all but he's not a cypher no one's a cypher other than cypher. Either way, once again, bind, folks. This is Aurora Cups presented by Xfinity. We're really excited. I, I, I joke about this, but I'm excited we get bind again. This is going to be a close match. Either way, again, this is playoff time. Nine and eight seed playing for a chance to face our number one ranked North Texas. Here we go. Constega versus Western Wings. I'm hungry for, for some Valorant. I hope... You know, I hope Nerdy Bird got their getting their wings, but right now we got some Valorant right ahead of us. Again, it's going to be fun. I just like to point out, Conest uh, Conestoga, very similar default to what we saw earlier. They just have Chamber over towards uh, A instead of Cipher over towards B. Conestoga on the defense, getting a little aggressive towards B main. We'll be able to spot one Cipher player from Western Wings, but not much. That dog will get some plenty of information. Some really good little spam shots from Panko. Won't be able to find much. And that's going to be the rotation out for the side of Western Wings. Moving back over to that B side. Running into this Viper and Sky. Yeah, They are still running, but they're going to have to slow down here a little bit. Rotations for the defense hasn't come. I think they're within range of the, the guy's audio. Oh, oh. Them shots not quite landing. Yeah, unable to find that kill on its puppet. Able to find that one. Cypher left on the site. Ghost in the hands. But that's going to be MGD, actually. Pardon me, the Viper grabbing one before taken down. And that will be the spike getting planted on B. A 4v3 retake. But look at the health on some of those attackers for the side of Western Wings. They are low. And Panko looking to get aggressive. No pain shells quite yet. Just a ghost in hand. So no real big utility to invest into this fight. Trying to peek out, look for anything. Low health inside the tube. Kaz with that TP available. What's going to be? Nick's horrible finding the first pick. Panko able to trade things out, but it's a second kill for that second raise. Kaz finally trade things out. Once again, 1v2 situation. 1v1. Kaz with a 2k. Taps into the spike. Looks for the headshot. Finds it. Gets a little aggressive, but it's going to be Hans Puppet. Waiting things out. A pistol given to Western Wings as they start the board first. Very, very strong attempt by Kaz right there. And ultimately, just not enough. Puppet playing that very well. But already, Conestoga showing that they have what it takes to re-enter those sites, to kind of get a grip and just claw their way back in, even if they're playing with a player disadvantage. We have Pookie versus Tarek's girlfriend, apparently, in this match, which is pretty... pretty... A few pet names. <laughs> yeah, you know. Opposite team, so, you know, it works out, but either way. Oh, anti-eco for the side of Western Wings. Looking to use that weapon advantage to the best of their oh, ability, and it's going to be looking towards this B site. 
to start things off. Walking up long. Viper wall gonna go up for the defense as this prowler, uh, probably trailblazer, looks to find any information. But here comes the paint shells. Here comes the tip of the spear. Inexorable looking for a pick. Headhunter shots will not land as Kaz falls in the back of the site. The spike should be able to go down, but MGD looking for someone to get aggressive, but L is holding hookah. There's one, and MGD absolutely goes huge, finds two kills as the angle is not cleared. Alice Puppet able to find this Ella Bloom. One sky available. 3v3 situation, but the gun's still not in favor of Conestoga. And Haru able to find one more kill. Finds a second, but MGD coming up huge on this Viper, but left at 21 health. Two members ahead. Either way, excellent dumb damage done for the side. Spy Cam Dart will notify a little bit, and you know. Excellent stuff either way, even if they fall. MGD goes down, Taro cleans things up, but it's only two members of Western Wing surviving. I'll teach them to respect their elders. They do keep the two Bulldogs in, but interestingly enough, it looks like they might try and force up a little bit more into this. Potentially. Um, no, I think they're still they're treating this as a bonus, right? So you got yeah. Sheriff and we Haru. Saw the, we saw the rifle flash a little bit earlier for mm -hmm. Inexorable, but... Ultimately, it seems like she's opted in for the Spectre. Haru actually going to pass the uh, the Bulldog over to Pookie. Safety's off. And Exorable, so. two away from the um, Showstopper. But MGD, three away, which is very close for a nine-point ultimate in that Viper's Pit. So a chance to build that up very early into this half. But it's going to be pressure once again being long. Ella Bloom looking to make a play. Still one Guiding Light, potentially. Here's that Trailblazer, and there's that Breach Stun. Absolutely going to slow things down. That's going to leave Ellen a very precarious situation. Barely gets out of there with their life, and the round slows down once again. Yeah, and there you can see some of the things that that Breach allows you to do that the players on uh, Conestoga, or Conestoga, I'll get it eventually, <laughs> uh, might not be ready for. Minute left to go. Plenty of like space to play with if you're on the defense, but the offense they're still stacked towards B main. They're still very evident here. And here's MGD getting pressure early. Here stuck in the tube. It's gonna get flashed a little bit, but it's gonna be the defense actually coming with the first couple kills. Pookie finally able to trade things out, but Panko puts things in their favor. Throws out a paint shield to slow things down. Left to 29 health. No heals available, but on the other side, Pookie is left to 45 of their own. Here comes the rotates, and here comes the smoke, and here comes the TP play. Here it goes. The wings making their way towards A site. Trying to clear things out, play things as safe as possible, but they need to get the spike down before the defense comes here. Looking to deny the spike plan. 15 seconds remaining. And yeah, Ots Puppet gets the spike down. A little bit of damage from Pookie, but that will be it. Kaz cleans things up. And CCW, Anastoga, will be able to get one on the board. quite able to get it over the line, but still, good damage done by Western Wings there. Only two rifles going to be saved over, and that's huge, and especially on the attack. Not giving the defenders enough tools to actually sustain a purchase can be very, very helpful, especially when you play on a map that's more defender-sided, as we established, even though today it's been kind of back and forth, and the one lead that we had was on the attack. Early Molly invested for the side of the defense. And Kaz, however, over on A short, able to find the first kill, finds Haru, and that's the brim smokes gone for the side of Western Wings. So much utility lost in Tarek's girlfriend. That's so weird to say, but they're just gonna hold the shower space as passively as possible. Yeah. Now losing the brim's huge. The orbital strike going to have to be saved for that next round. And smoke's not online. Yeah. Trademark gonna get broken over there. And that's gonna be Panko finding Pookie. Spike that's a spike out of position. And Tarek Zero finally falls. Try to get trade, but Exorable is just a, built a little bit different on the other side of the map though. M G D finds a kill with that boulder walk. The spike still stuck in short. Panko gonna get pressured out. Showstopper available, picks up the vandal for the weapon upgrade. And there's the showstopper trying to find something. One That's going to be the breach no falling. Gerb, no way of surviving. And the paint shells come online for Panko. 3k for the Rays as they take down their counterpart. And we are tied up here on Breeze. Ah, oh, I said Breeze! <laughs> <laughs> I'm I fine. Wish. 
I wish. But no, phenomenal hold by Panko right there. Just getting one, getting out. It was very, very risky though. Inexorable, getting ahead of that one way was a very, very dangerous situation for CCW to find themselves in. But yeah. Please consider though, Western Wings now going to be on an eco. They have three ultimates to play with. They might try and use them, especially since they do have the Showstopper and the Orbital Strike, but it'd take a really tight foothold for them to actually consider using them right now. Owl of Bloom getting a little bit of information. Spots two out. That's going to be a slow backup as the Molly comes in just to delay ever so slightly. Exorable. And the rest of Western Wings just looking to find a little bit more space. But it's just very quiet, very slow, despite the weapon's disadvantage. Tarek's coming in a very aggressive yeah. position, and wow, as just as I say that, excellent observing. Woo! Spots out, takes down the Cypher, but Pookie's able to get that trade down. Here comes the Showstopper. We're going for a big play. Has to be heaven cleared out for just the time being. Terry's girlfriend's still stuck in shadows, but the spike is still making its way on the site. Has to find that brimstone, which they, um, which the side of Western Wings are very aware of. But here comes Ponko from heaven, pushing fast the smoke, looking for some picks. Weapons advantage still in favor of Conestoga. Here comes MGD in a very tight place here in Lambs. Potentially could get taken down, but will be the spot one. Here comes. Snakebite trying to find one, We're finally taken down, Haru able to get the weapon upgrade and has that orbital strike if they choose to invest in it. Here it comes early potentially, might not happen in time, no it will be able to. So Pookie able to get that pick, but Panko finding that brimstone, Pookie left to do a 1v2 situation. Seekers available, but the headshots are will not be found. Derek's girlfriend cleans things up and Conestoga take the lead. Very strong defense for Conestoga right there. A little bit risky after they lost the uh, control of Lamps and gave over the, uh, the orbital strike to the Brimstone. But ultimately, Conestoga managing to hold things together. They keep two alive, and the economy's still pretty good. Chamber also uh, providing a little bit of a benefit with the Tour de Force right there, meaning that. Their money is good for at least another round after this, even if they lose. So, Tour de Force being played a short rather than the typical like B long position that you usually see. Yeah. I actually don't hate that. There's not a Viper that would normally shut down that sort of angle. So that's just taking advantage of the comp difference between these two teams. Exorable. Looking to get aggressive. That single duelist for both of these sides. You know how important the raise is. We've seen how integral the duelist is, especially for Bind in of itself, but this time, slow, just trading paint shells, just trading information. Panko looking for a pick, potentially. Tags Gerb a little bit, but here comes the initiation from Exorable. Finds the first pick, kills the counterpart, finds MCD, a second kill for the raise. Now Pup is able to find Ella Bloom. That's Neural Theft gonna be invested. Both of those defenders are still making their way from CT, and that will be the plant, and a Fairly easy um, round for Western Wings, I presume. Yeah, especially trying to retake through the smoke with the operator. That's never going to be an easy thing to do. That's not the best covered though. Ah, but inexorable. But off that fault line, he'll go be able to take that chamber down. Tarek's chief girlfriend left to do it on their own. Runs into a firing squad, a 4K from the Rays, and that'll be a flawless round to tie things back up for the side of Western Wings. Inexorable, very quickly becoming one of the players to keep an eye on. 11, five, and three, <laughs> and that's on rounds where she's not always on the winning team. And more importantly, is the like, the first person to go in, is the first person to create space. True. You saw that really big 2k to get onto the site over on B just that last round and then two more kills for the cleanup. So really good stuff but here comes CCW Conestoga now having rifles in hands once again just trying to find information but I don't know what they were looking at. Here's a fight that we're looking at. Dodges the fault line but 
Uh oh. Ah, uh, really good awareness for Nick's horrible and the rest of the squad to know that there's a little bit of a pocket right there, and that's going to give the person advantage to Western Wings. And now things slow down. Who can control Given? There, you can just see how hard this breach is to deal with. One enemy MGD remains. making herself down, very beat. hard for the other team to deal with. Western Wings just can't get onto the site. 1v2s, just those 1v2 situations have been so good for Conestoga. They've been able to win those out. Guiding Light's going to be able to spot things out. And a 3k for the Viper. Viper's pit now online for these next couple defensive rounds for Conestoga. And just as fast as they lost the last round, they are back into it. Taking the lead, and that's going to be a very strange buy. Well, a very strong buy for the side of Western Wings, but that's going to be their last if they don't win this next one. Yeah. And Gerb doesn't even have armor. Gerb yeah. has armor. I th but I think she had to sell off a piece of util to actually get that armor. Because she was chilling at uh, 350 creds for a bit. So lo loses a flash in favor of the Light Shield, so... Interesting stuff, but the rest of the team still doing decent enough economy-wise, but still a must-win round for Western Wings as this map has been so close all the way around. Trailblazer gets two. That's some really good information. I'll also know that the raise was there because the uh, paint chills came out in response to the boombot pressuring towards Hookah. So. Really good information for the side of Western Wings. They understand three is still on the B site, but they're Playing slow, so the rotation could come at any minute, but right now they're still playing very confident. Kaz goes for a big peek, gets some plenty of damage, but can't find any of the kills. Nick's horrible pushing in the lamps, trying to find some space, but Kaz with that HUD Hunter can't find the shots. Nick's horrible finds one as on to pop it on the other side, grabs another. Alaboon with the Seekers is a big enough flash to take down Pookie, and Panko on the other side able to grab one. But still, still have to root so many of these players out of position. But Inexorable is low. Show stopper in hand. But with 18 health, do you want to pop that quite yet? As Panko pushes towards Lamps. Right here. Two defenders coming through. Has a smoke. Here's a show stopper. I heard one doesn't find. Yes, it is able to find Panko. So really big stuff coming up from the raise. A 3v2 situation. Terry's girlfriend trying to find anything. Elabu finds one, but that's going to be a 3k for the raise before being taken down. 1v1 situation. No time onto the clock as Terry's girlfriend tries to find something. Gets one. Gets that orbital strike to go. But we are tied up once again. This is back and forth. Yeah, shades of the uh, the Scarlet versus Carlton match that we saw earlier, where no matter how many rounds a team was able to get in a row, they could never pull away from the other team entirely. And after a slate of early round streaks, or early game streaks, we're just trading rounds now. This is four rounds in a row where no team has won more than one in a row. And that momentum is going to be so detrimental to whoever's economy finally breaks first. Rifle still in hands of Western Wings, Watching despite smoke. losing a couple players that last round, but they'll still survive with a Guardian, some Light Shields, and looking towards this B-side once again, that's been where they love to start defaulting. Alabloom dodges the fault line, backs up. Flash not going to get all the oh, way through, and inexorable going to be Thunder. going in following this Rolling Thunder. That's going to create so much space, and... Gonna put us into a 5v5 retake situation. Spike planted. Launching smoke. Lots of bolts available for the defensive side. Including that orbital. Going to slow things down, but not enough. Orbital strike gonna be vested early as Kaz finds two kills. So 5v3, 5v2 situation. Pardon me. Pookie still has the seekers and a flash available, but really on puppet. It's gotta come up huge. That dog will be able to spot one. But Panko gets a little aggressive, finds the first kill, but the spam through isn't good enough in time. Ella Bloom cleans things up. 5-4 to four is going to be the scoreline. As we go into round 10 next round, Conestoga getting that back-to-back, -back, um, getting that extra round win. The money shouldn't be good for uh, the side of Western Wings with them all dying, so that's going to be a save for them and potentially a way for Conestoga to start getting to 6 at the very least. And ultimately, I think a lot of this is coming down to just breach has gotten unfortunately more value out of 
being breached than actually doing anything. Like, he's new. He's different. He's something that they're not necessarily prepared for. But at the same time, he's a very telegraphed Blinded. agent. And it's kind of hard to figure out how to do what you want to do with him. And, and unfortunately for Western Wings, nothing that they've wanted to do with him has worked out particularly well. I haven't. I've been. I've been. I want to kind of see them like dedicate like them pushing with that fault line, trying to get like lamp control, trying to get strictly showers control, and then just hold that space. They haven't been able to do that. It's one thing that I wish I've been seeing a little bit more. Just these big plays to hold space and then hold that for the rest of the round. But right now, a minute left. They have hookah on the side of Western Wings. With that lurk, but Panko finds inexorable, and there is so much damage and so much initiation power gone. Cast playing on top of the box, finds a head, but the bo box is gonna help delay that a little bit. Haru gonna get stunned up, left at 30 health, walks into the TP to just barely stay alive. Panko does go down though. That is spam from the classic. Right. So 40 seconds remaining though, the spike is finally starting to make its way towards B. And still two defenders on each of these sites. 30 seconds remaining. 30 seconds left. Flash doesn't find anything. So potentially some false information. But Elaboom is going to peek out. Spots the Cypher. Not a lot of information. But here's the steps. Here's a kill for the Sky. And Elaboom is just going to back up. Play with the numbers advantage. As Haru's got to make a move on. Keep these defenders here. Do something with 30 seconds remaining. You need to get a move on. Western Wings. 10 seconds left. Still slow. They need to... Yep, there's a kill for Ella Bloom. One enemy Second kill, there's MSG, and now it's just Haru. Left to do it on their own. Potentially find anything. Nope, no more damage. Kaz finds that cleanly, and... And, uh, Conestoga gets a half. Get the six. Yeah, already guaranteeing themselves a even defensive half, if not better. And even still, the money's not great for Western Wings. No. Obviously, it wasn't good last round, so they'll have a buy this round, but Haru's still forced onto a Guardian and Light Shields, which isn't something that you want your Brimstone, who's one off of an Orbital Strike, to be playing with for the most part. Seekers will be available for Pookie, and Ons Puppet, if they can able to get a pick, that Neural Theft could help with rotations, help with so much, but Kaz, right off rip, finds a pick on Ace Shore, inexorable once again, the first to fall. And that race being out of the picture reduces so much space that Western Wings can grab. Scout destroyed. And it's gonna be a brawl of the showers potentially, but Paco comes up huge 3k for the raise. And just as fast as things go, they scroll to a halt. I don't think so either. I think she just out aimed and just perfectly sprayed through that. That was excellent stuff coming from the Rays, and now Hans Puppet, a Vandal in hand, not a lot of money going into round 12. I want to see him save this rifle, potentially. Maybe that's what they need to do, but a 4k, give it to Panko. She has been on fire these last couple rounds this entire map. Round we were talking about how Inexorable was a uh, player to watch out for. Panko is very, very quietly, not necessarily quietly all the time, <laughs> Uh, overtaken her in the scoreboard. 16 and 8. One off the showstopper after using it a couple rounds ago and now going to round 12. You know, every, no point in saving. As said, use what you can in this round. CCW still have so much in the bank, but on the other side, Western Wings still have that Snurl. That still have that Orbital Strike. Still have those Seekers. They need to use them this round because it's now or never. Defensive Seeker is going to be invested first for Ella Bloom. Fault line to just push a little bit, but not going to halt Ella. They're still going to hold that space. Finally going to push back by that Prowler. B hit. Viper just providing so much stall utility here. But once that Viper wall goes down, Stoga is going to find themselves in a very difficult situation. Down players on the site. Panko does have her ultimate online though, and that can be huge at slowing down this push, especially out of long. Here comes, Here comes the showstopper defensively. Where's that so, show? Yeah, yeah defensive like showstopper to slow things was, down. I think it was in response to a, a smoke being pop. Potentially, but here comes the push That's towards the B site. Operating shops go wide and the site's given up, but Kaz is able to find Exorbal who had pushed super far into lamps, finally taken down by Haru with the Guardian. 
But now, supposed plant utility for the side of Western Wings. They have to use it this round. Especially that overall strike that is in the hands. So keep that Brimstone safe. And Hans Puppet's going to fall onto the side. Triple Box is where the spike is going to be planned for. Tarek's girlfriend looking to play aggressive. And Gerb flashing out. Elbrum able to dodge that. Tap of the spike. Cuts them off just for a second. But still, plenty of time left to play. Ella Bloom wins that 1v1 against Gerb. Spam through so far is so good for the side. Conestoga, and that's going to be cleaned up. A Molly late, but the spike is already half. You should be good, potentially. Is there time? There should be. Yeah, they, they have it. Not even close. 0.43 seconds remaining. We are going into the half with Conestoga up 8 to 4 as we switch sides. Really good stuff. A little bit close for comfort, but ultimately, a win's a win. Conestoga go up 8-4 on the half. It's something that they're probably very excited about. Absolutely. Especially since their comp does skew a little bit more towards the attack site. They do have that chamber instead of the Cypher, who isn't necessarily a better Lurk agent, but he's a, he's sort of a second entry if that race falls. And for post-plant situations, you know, and that being TP... being able to hold down to angles like mm -hmm. he can is very, very strong. Cypher on the other side for Western Wings. You're looking towards Ans Puppet to come up huge and try to hold things down. And this is where you guys see Gerb starting to really see what that breach is made for. It's going to be great on that retakes are great grabbing orb control. So maybe putting your duelist up in a great situation seems to be the play. If you look towards Shower, that's exactly what's going on. MGD. Only the beast hearing that orb taken. But here goes Ponko pushing towards Elbow. But the trip is going to be huge and it's going to burst. Down the race, Pookie, here, to help that Cypher out. That's going to be so much pressure. But here comes the spike, finally take it, plant it. Third time's the charm. Ma oh, no! Teleporting. Yeah, because look at on the A site, it is I completely think, cleared out. The lurk. I think they realized that uh, Cypher was all the way into um, Hookah. All the way into Hookah. Yeah, and MGT had already lurked all the way through A, so the spike's going to be planted towards Truck. So, you know, after 20 seconds, that spike is, gets, goes down, but it's a 4v5 situation. The defenders still have the advantage for the most part, but they still have to make their way. But Anand's puppet finding another pick for themselves. That's absolutely huge. Here comes Gerb. Try to find anything. Finds the one, and it's Ella Bloom and Tarek's girlfriend left standing. Not for long as Pookie cleans things up. A fifth round given to Western Wings as they win this round. Retake. That was the word I was looking for. <laughs> it's been a long day, and we still have it plenty happens. more Valorant to go right yeah. there. Especially if this game does end up getting as close as some of the last uh, games of Bind that we've cast. They will. Yeah. Rifles right bought up. Flanked by Puppet there. Yep. Great hold by Puppet as well. Uh, her trips were the essentially the whole reason that Panko couldn't get anything done. It looked like she was initially going to be able to uh, satchel through it, but. I think one of her feet just barely clipped a trip yep. like at the last possible moment. And it's just a mow down even through the smoke. Shower control once again for Gerb. Fault line's gonna slow things down, but it's gonna be traded out with plenty of utility, so here comes the dumpage. Over here towards showers. And still, it's still a stalemate. Flash gonna go out. Gerb gonna get spotted, but it's gonna be inexorable. Finding two kills. Gerb finds another one, but it's going to be taken down finally by Tarek's girlfriend. And now, 3v2 situation. Either way, for Conestoga, good damage done. But they still would love to get a huge thrifty. Bring themselves to 9 in this half. Have a chance to run away with things. Last player standing. Nah, but oh, Haru. A lot of damage. Yeah, but MGD, not able to stay alive. Tarek's girlfriend, 100 health, 3 smokes. Nothing can be done. Pookie finds the headshot, and that'll be a six for Western Wings with three surviving. So, all in all, not terrible. Very solid anti-eco. You wouldn't like to keep two more alive, but ultimately the economy's going to be fine. Gerb gets dropped a ghost, dropped a specter. Uh, inexorable just buys up a stinger and light shield, a bucky for Haru, who's been playing over towards Lamps normally anyways. So, not a bad area for a bucky to be in. Nope. Gerb and Inexorable both, well, five towards their ultimate. Three away for the Showstopper, four away from that Rolling Thunder, which I'm guessing they want to build up for retake situations. 
right now. Just playing pretty slow as the Cytokana Stoga. Switch on the Trailblazer to clear B long. Stint beacon for the Trailblazer. Interesting. Yeah, we got to see some of the other teams doing that as well. Just to extend the dog's range a little bit further and let the Sky Drone come safer. In. But here comes Ponko looking to avoid those trips, but it's gonna get hit and burst it down and instantly pop it. Able to grab that kill, flash to slow things down for the rest of the team, and now the CCW stuck in hookah, stuck in garden, and the rotates are starting to come here. Smoke's invested very early on, and not from not much. Cypher Cage as a secondary controller is really underrated part of that utility, especially when stalling. But here comes MGD finding a nice little spray transfer. Grabs two and evens the numbers out nearly. Actually puts the numbers in their favor. And here comes the TP play back to the A side. But still, two members of Western Wings are waiting here. They didn't rotate back to B. And they have full control of Lamps and are not going to give it up very easily. Molly to slow things down. Brings time for the rotate. It brings so much information. Look, MGD's already here in short. There's a chance this goes back to B. Potentially, but with 13 seconds remaining, they have to make a play now. And Ella Blue with terrible timing looks the wrong way. It's taken down by the Stinger. 3v3 situations now. Once again, CCW trying to get as much of the Canteric scroll from finds one. Haru looking to find it. No, won't be able to. MGD finds a 3k. Terex girlfriend cleans things up. Three survive for the Saikon Stoga as they get to nine. Yeah, Terex's girlfriend one off of ult. Ella Bloom also went off of ult. Lots to work with here. It's just a matter of whether or not they can actually figure out how to get those orbs. And also whether or not Inexonerable is going to also try and push for an orb of her own. Western Wings' buy is not good whatsoever. They bought a lot of utility that last round. And without the spike plant like bonus, like there's a, a Spectre, a Guardian. Not a lot of utility, so it's going to be a very strange defensive hold. Or the side of Western Wings, but it's going to be on the other side. Conestoga looking to pressure A very quickly. And here comes Kaz, that little initial, like that duelist that we were talking about, getting onto the side first. We'll spot one, but won't be able to find any picks off of that. But here comes Ella Bloom, evening those numbers out. Breach is falling the other side, finding Gerb, but the Seekers, terrible timing. Ella Bloom trying to get the Seekers off, but it just won't happen in time. Finally, the spike goes down from Haru, able to take that out, but it's going to be a 2v1 situation. The attackers manage to get the spike down and have the personnel advantage, and Ans Puppet left to do it on their own. Cage three. Here comes the cage, they'll spot one, 1v1 needs to be one, and there's one, and potential spray through, not going to happen. Kaz holds on tight with barely enough health as they get to double digits. Stoga just barely managing to hold on. Not exactly the greatest, and also I unfortunately believe that's the second round in a row that Elizum has gotten just hard timing. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just completely unlucky over there. It's never something you want to see, but Kanastoga have done a great job of keeping their heads level, figuring out ways to get back into the rounds that they're initially struggling to get into, and now they're being rewarded with Western Wings going on to a very poor buy. Showstopper gonna be invested very early for next horrible and they will be able to find a single kill off of that. The classic won't be able to do much damage, so MGD able to trade things out. Haru placed in a very precarious situation and gets punished. I don't know if I like that play. No one, I mean, you have to hold space somehow, but unfortunately the Raisney just doing such a great job of splitting up the players. Running to the Cypher setup is the side of Conestoga. Trip gonna be taken out. Puppet looking to try to hold things as best he can. And here comes the counter show stopper. Going to fire. Won't be able to find the kill nor some damage, but that's gonna be the spike. Giving up for free. An orbital strike and a molly for Tarek's girlfriend. So you're definitely going to see them playing back, playing a little bit more passively potentially, but no. Tarek's girlfriend is still on the site. They're looking to play aggressive. This I mean, the gun's advantage, potentially. Here's Ox Puppet trying to get a kill on MGD. No, second kill for the Viper. Sheriff in the hands of Pookie. Looking for a kill, potentially. Get Flash. This Ponko, but won't be able to find the kills. Ponko and Kaz clean things up. 11 on the board for Conestoga. And now, it's do or die time for Western Wings. Yeah. Honestly, I really like the play staying on site for the Brimstone. 
you've already used the molly to stall, so there's no reason to go back and play lineups. But also, if you have the orbital strike, you don't necessarily need to use it, and against weaker weaponry, it's better to just have the numbers on site so that way you never never have a chance to get overwhelmed. Because you have more players. The worst I guns are better when there are more players, but don't get some more players. Here's a couple of ultimates. A very fast hit for the side of Conestoga. They are investing a ton. They want to bring it to match point. They want to put the pressure right to Western Wings, and they have done so terrifically. MGD on the smirk, ah, potentially giving a 1v1, wins it out. Pookie can't find anything. That's the spike planted. Tarek's girlfriend expecting some kind of denial of utility, expecting but. Breach ult. Yeah. There it is. Spike won't be able to go down, it's but. Clear lamps, though. The, the lamb, yeah, exactly. As you said the lamb's players were not cleared, but it's gonna be trades, but Kaz, Hanko, and Ella Blue, the side of Conestoga, mowing things down. It's a firing squad out there as they reach match and series point. Match Western point. Wings on their last leg here in playoffs. Here. On first light, they're looking to play things out, and they're trying to hold on, and here comes a timeout. What do we need to see Western Wings do? differently honestly they need to take advantage of having this breach and get some sort of aggression aggression going they've been playing back quite a bit which is fine you have the cypher so that's only natural but because you don't have that viper i'd really like to see them do something like they did earlier where they used breach and raise to take control of showers let brimstone hold short and then keep cypher and sky over towards uh be long just for information, just for gathering information. Uh, alternatively, you can try and play to deny the Viper's Pit, because if that goes down, then that's going to be really hard for you to deal with. And finally, you can always try Rat Corners. <laughs> I don't think we've seen them play Hookah, so that's an option. We've seen that Haru already likes to play with uh, the shotguns. Having brought up a Bucky earlier. So. And Gaz just walks in the lamps. Like, just kind of holds out. Like, I've seen it, like, twice now. They just hold out their um, headhunter and just go, like, All right, I'm going to hit some heads this round. So. I mean, that is kind of what the ability's for. Right. But, you know. But it's not a good buy for Western Wings. They forced that last round. So it's a share of a stinger, I think. Not a lot of stuff this round. Be that need going back site is going to hurt a lot. Uh, I, I think it might have just missed or oh something like God. that because no damage has been done for the defenders. To the defenders, pardon there. me, but Gerb left to hold lambs by themselves. If they can maybe get one or two of these picks, that could be absolutely huge, but inexorable in an off angle playing on top of these boxes. Gonna get spotted out and taken down. The Rays wins the 1v1. Gerb gets one, but it's not gonna be enough as Tarek's girlfriend and Ella Bloom. Clear the site, a 2v4 situation for Western Wings. And they are split up apart. Neural Step gonna be invested, Fuku with a flash. Gonna get spanned through, Panko wins that out, and Ans Papu, a sheriff, needs to win this. Won't be done, MGD win this out, 13 to 6. And they will go on to face North Texas. Yeah, that should be a really exciting game. Two teams that we've seen have great success on Bind so far. I think North Texas technically went a little bit harder than uh, Conestoga, but even still, that should be a very fun matchup. Uh, it's not going to be the one we're bringing you, but it should be fun nonetheless, and uh, that actually brings up a good point. Um, we have player streams. Some of the players are streaming their own runs or their team's runs, uh, so you should go check those out if you can find them. Uh, otherwise, keep chilling right here. We're going to have a best of three coming up soon, but, I mean, come on. We can't have a match go all this time without at least some input from Nerdy Bird. <laughs> okay. All right. We sat so... through four matches of Bind. What are your thoughts on four matches of Bind? I'm sorry? <laughs> I mean, you're the one that asked to just, like, start. throw it to the box and just, like, hey, you guys deal with this. Have fun. I'm going to go back to, what were you, crocheting? Painting? I'm doing a rhinestone painting. <laughs> Ooh, analyst in rhinestone. 
<laughs> yes, so that, that I'm doing a Stardew Valley rhinestone painting, but I'm still able to watch and see everything that's going on. I'm glad that we're, I mean, like, well, yes, we're getting a lot of binds, so a lot of sepia tones have been coming out today. Thus far, I'm, we're seeing a little bit more variations. There's a little bit more flavors being thrown in. I mean, we finally, you know, we got, we got to see the chamber come out during uh, this last match. And in all honesty, Conestoga, I wish you best of luck against North Texas. Well, that's not the one that's going to be on broadcast for us as we intro into finally our best of threes. So you might still see Bind, but you'll get to see at least one other map, maybe. Um, so our next matchup is going to be between whomever wins between Terps Esports Lilac and the Grand Valley State uh, Game Changers squad. Whichever team wins that ends up to go up against UCSD Navy. But before then, we're going to give them a moment to wrap up their games. You two, an opportunity to rest your voice one more time before we jump into a best of three series. And so don't go anywhere. We'll be back here in just a few minutes with some more Aurora series.
get some headphones, my dude.
Hello and welcome back to to the Aurora First Light broadcast sponsored by Xfinity. I'm still your host, Nerdy Bird, and joining me is Anima as well as Janice. And finally, finally, we are in a situation where we might not just only have to see Bind. I, I say not just only because these are best of threes. And so theoretically, yeah, we could still see Bind. But one of the teams that we're about to witness for our first best of three here on desk live for all of our viewers as well is going to be the Terps Esports Lilac team. And they actually just went up against the Grand Valley State uh, Game Changer squad. Ended up being 16 to 14 on Ascent. So maybe some good map juju will carry over <laughs> as far as banning in this next phase. And we see something other than bind, at least for map one. Spice up the day for you too. But beyond that, I mean, Terps, six seed, going up against the 11th seed, going into 16 to 14 for overtime. What do you think that means for UCSD Navy going up against Terps Lilac? I... Don't play a set, I guess. <laughs> They've shown that they are resilient, but at the same time, we're getting into that uh, sort of territory where do you want to play a best of one and do a best of three or have to wait for at least an hour, if not more, to play your best of three? So there's a chance that uh, Lilac is able to come in here, play super hot right out the gate. They're already warmed up. But there's also a chance that Navy's able to take advantage of a more exhausted uh, Terps Lilac team. I mean, we we saw earlier today Grand Valley State like play a very hard fought match on Bind, of course, but we saw how hard they can play. They came up with a really huge win, thirteen eleven, and you've seen they've been able to push the distance. And you can see, obviously, they've pushed uh, Lilac all the way through to the very end. And what was it, triple? overtime basically so either way double overtime either way i'm expecting navy to get a really big push from lilac either way could they be exhausted yes but that momentum definitely i'm gonna favor lilac either way all right and just to catch everyone up we went through our group stage top two teams from each group stage advanced into our playoff bracket in another best of one series across the board there was four matches that then went into what are now our quarterfinals. There are four matches taking place right now, which we are going to see Navy and Lilac on screen. Off screen, we're going to have Waterloo versus Scarlet, as well as Carl uh, Carlton versus Phantom Tax. And then our number one seed of North Texas taking on Conestoga. So if one of those players is streaming, be sure to check them out. However, I am aware that these two teams are geared up, ready to go, about to start their map band. So why don't you two take it away from here, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much, Nerdy Bird, once again. Another map bans, another, our first best of three here in Aurora Cup. I'm, Aurora Series, I'm so excited for what we're going to get now. Yeah, and this time we don't have to wait all the way until that sixth map to know whether or not we're getting bind. We'll be seeing it right out the gate. Yes! No, no bind at all! And they're playing to our strength, so Icebox and bind off rip. And there we go, Ascent going to be the first pick. That's actually this really thing. interesting. And a breeze! Holy... <laughs> I'm happy. I'm so I'm happy. That's my happy. two favorite maps. And but for our and decider, Lotus. Lotus. So we are in for a very excellent series. What that are we going to be seeing? I think, real quick, I think that was all three of the maps that you, me, and Nerdy Bird wanted to see. Yes, I think that's exactly what it was. So that's interesting. Uh, really curious for me, though. UCSD picked uh, Ascent. Not Lilac. Terps Lilac just won on Ascent. So I mean, it has to be a comfort thing. A second ascent right out the gate. And yeah, I guess it has to be a comfort thing, but that's still really interesting that they're willing to go back to that map after Terps Lilac just showed that they could put up a very solid performance on it. And speaking of a very solid performance, we're about to see another one as we are about to get into Agent Select here on Ascent. UCSD Navy taking on Terps Esports Lilac. And what compositions are we going to be seeing out today? a sky already interesting and hovering a brimstone if those lock then that's already some big deviations from the uh units that we're normally used to seeing that's so a odd. brimstone oh and the double duelist for the side of uh ucsd oh and this boy. is their pick oh boy if they uh, yeah if tina goes onto that phoenix that's what is the brimstone doing in there instead of the omen what is that 
calling for. I will say, there are some things that Brimstone lets you do, and having the longer smokes is nice. But yeah, it's a very curious pick. Not one that you're used to seeing a lot. Holy crap. And first best of three, we got a brand new map to see on stream. Brand new compositions all over the place, and we get some curveballs being thrown either which way. I am so excited for this. I mean, you got a standard composition on one then. Luna on that jet. I'm excited to see these I jets mean, 1v1s. Even that, it's not a perfectly standard composition. They're running Sky instead of KO. Oh, I didn't, I didn't even, I forgot the Sky. Oh boy. This is going to be a very interesting, very interesting series all the way through. Again, this is our best of three, our quarterfinals. These teams have battled all day for the last like four to five hours. Some teams a little bit more, such as Terps Esports, who've, you know, just went through a snot, like a knocker in a 16-14 battle. But right now, that's not what matters. You look ahead, you don't want to eliminate yourself. You've came so far, both of these squads, and now this is what it all means. UCSD Navy taking on Terps Esports Lilac. Like, this is Aurora series. First light. Winner goes to the semis. Loser will have to wait a couple more weeks to play and try again. UCSD playing on the attack. That double duelist are wanting to see aggression this time. And the defense. Lilac seeing what they are going to be capable of. It's going to be a big B stack for the offense to start things off. What can this defense do to slow things down? Meanwhile, on the other side of that, Jet and uh, Sky getting very aggressive out towards A main. I wouldn't be surprised if they try and push a little bit further past this, especially since Jet has a sheriff. Can I get this? Which is usually one of the hallmarks of Jet's not wanting to just sit around and do nothing. Semi final, quarter finals, here we go. And it's going to be a very fast mid pressure. Alarmbot going to be able to hold that angle down. So that's going to get spotted out. Here comes the brim smoke. So that's gonna last a hot minute. Just dry clearing for a little bit. And here comes the B split. Turret's gonna go down. Jet Dash is gonna be out, but that Sova tuxedo won't be able to stay alive. Shroom with that friend to able to get that clear. That's gonna be the entirety of the B set. Give it up. So the lilacs looking to retake. Three coming from spawn. One still holding the CT. And Care Bear. Just trying to look, trying to look for a way in. All five of these attackers are still playing on site, I believe. Drill Wizard out to gather some information. Both teams just waiting for a second. Here comes first contact. Shroom going to be taken down so low, but it's going to be traded out. Amali to slow things down, and that's absolutely devastating. But Luna Rose able to find the first pick. Luna Rose. Rucci, everything for the trade. Clock's taking down Giraffe. Finds the trade, but Rucci the Brimstone finds two more. It's down to Giraffe by themselves. Won't be able to find anything. Three survive as UCSD take the pistol. I alluded to some things that Brimstone can do that uh, Omen can't do on the snap. That's one of them. You can do a very, very quick B split through mid by taking advantage of the fact that you can get the three smokes. You can smoke off Cubby in mid. Uh, in mid and then you can smoke off uh, the area near market and CT for the actual B split itself all very, very quickly. And that's something that a lot of controllers would struggle with. But having three smokes means that Brim can just play really, really pacey. Four stack over for the defense. Lilacs just holding A, but already off rip. They're going to give up the B site. So UCSD will have no one standing in the way, but it's going to be this mid pressure potentially. But Tina on the other end. Able to find one out as the Lilacs try to get aggressive towards that A or won't burn out, won't pan out, pardon me, as Lena looking to get onto the site. It'll be a full retake situation unless the spike for some reason can't go down. And yep, standard business for the attackers. UCSD gets the spike down and now it's just post plant. Spike planted. Their post plant fundamentals are very, very solid. We got to see a little bit on the pistol round, but they have so much cell utility between the Phoenix. Shadows the Brimstone traveling. Molly, the Sova Shocks, the, K or the KJ Nades. There's a lot that Twilight are going to have to do to actually get back into this. Here. Lena, however, is going to make things so difficult. Oh, finds a kill. Luna is able to get a huge right click that gets hits all the head of Dokio. But still, 3v4 situation. Luna giving a Bulldog to try and maybe make something out of this, but not looking happy. So all they can be doing right now is damage as much as possible. UCSD needs to wing this fast, if not, they're all gonna be gone. 
Uh, they'll be able to just survive the spike blast, I believe, but still a very solid bonus round nonetheless. Four survives, so they'll keep most of those guns. But now, Lilacs handed a chance to hold those rifles. Already, uh, Lena, or Tina, sorry. That's not going to get confusing at all. Uh, <laughs> Tina has already bought up a Vandal. I believe she had the, uh, just the Sheriff from last yep. round. So, having that rifle on hand is going to be huge, especially since she's already relatively close to the run it back. Early flash for the defense, just trying to find anything, but it's actually giving so much false information, and oh, this could be a bloodbath if they're not careful. Are they going to recognize? First flash, Luna has the Cloudburst get out of there, left to 30 health, but that will be so much information given, A orb given up. For information. Only spots one, so not the most helpful. Spike starts to lurk bat mid. Draft chance, potentially to get a pick. We'll spot the jump peak. Ops to play more safe. Spike's still top mid, though. They're looking for a pick, both of these squads. Big dart. I think it's only going to spot out the killjoy though. I th no, I got the soul, I think, as well. But here's an opposing dart. Slowly things down. Tuxedo Sam holding here on lane. Trying to see anything. Here comes the Brin Smoke, so it's going to be a B hit for the side of USCD. And the other side, Lena's able to find a pick with that Vandal we talked about. But Tuxedo Sam's got to hold things down. And yes, they do. Care Bear and Tuxedo Sam hold the four with some help of the turret. And that's going to leave Tina in a 1v4 situation with 20 seconds remaining. Curveball out, won't find anything. Luna picks out, and now will be a first round of the board for the Lilacs. The slow play not quite working out as well, and that's one of the disadvantages of running the Brimstone. You don't have those smokes to constantly yeah. refresh areas of the map, so if you really want to save those smokes, you're going to have to leave something uncovered. And unfortunately for them, they can't take map control as easily, especially on a map like Ascent where long sight lanes are so common and you kind of need to have them smoked off. UCSD now having rifles in hands. One Spectre, but I believe that was just given to the Sova. Salty Soap, once again a big flash play. Information, but that's going to be Salty Soap falling. Luna's left to hold a main as long as they can by themselves. The dart to spot them out as they force are forced to retreat. And here comes Lena, run it back available. For Tina, trying to find any information, any kills whatsoever. Get used to this. Lou is able to get one, traded out by Shroom. The run it back wears out, but the spike is going to go down in front of Dice. Planted. And just having that Molly to stall the defenders from being able to flood the team is such a nice part of Phoenix's kit. Shock Dart going to do a little bit of chip damage potentially, but Tuxedo Sam has that dart. Off, push it out, it's going to get broken. Now it's a very difficult retake for the side of the defenders, but UCS Doggio goes down, so even the numbers out, but they gotta start getting a move on. A nice little trade potentially, but Care Bear is left in heaven by themselves. Draft gotta make a play, finds one, finds a second, third kill for the Omen. Time's wearing out, and a nice little curveball from Tina. 3k for a 3k, and Tina comes out on top for the side of UCSD. There's just so many things that Tina's able to throw at you on that Phoenix. Like, going into this, I'm operating under the assumption that if you're putting one of your players on Phoenix and also another on Jet, you have a player that's really, really good at Phoenix, right? The question is, how are they going to be able to use Phoenix on defense specifically? Or alternatively, how many rounds can they get on attack to where defense is no longer an issue? Fast crush for UCSD. Gonna be investing the lockdown here as well, so just trying to clear as much space as possible. That's gonna lead to Sova all by themselves. Just trying to hold as much space, maybe get a pick, but no, they're gonna get stuck here. Tuxedo Sam is left on an island by themselves. Gonna get sprayed down eventually. And yes, there they go alongside the Killjoy. Care Bear can't find anything. Marshall spray through the break the door, but it's going to be a 5v3 retake for the side of the Lilacs. Down. The personnel down the weapons. 
And the money's starting to roll for the side of UCSD. Look out! And honestly, one of the worst things that they could do there is give Tina more kills. She's already gotten at least one this round. Dalkyo going Last to with standing. another. Dalkyo actually with two. Very solid showing. At Hunter's Fury working even closer to coming up. Just good spread across the board of kills. The Phoenix doesn't get any more if they didn't get any that round. I think they just got the one. Tina's are oh my god, you're right. Tina's already at four two away from another run it back used just last round. Yeah. Uh round four. So it could have already been, It could have been more. Uh, they yeah. actually didn't grab the B orb, which I was kind of surprised. Because normally you're used to seeing uh teams running a Phoenix prioritize getting Phoenix orbs, getting Phoenix the plant, just so you can keep getting these run it backs because they're so cheap and so good. So I'm kind of surprised to see that they didn't end up going that route. Trail, um, Guiding Light. Gonna get some little bit of information. The one-way smoke. Missed, actually, so... Not a... A little precarious for the side of the Lilac. There's the A orb. You still know people are there. It's gonna be a bit of a rotation. So three people stacked towards this A side, but that's gonna have UCSD yeah. backing up. What I, what I expect they're going to do is they're sending Phoenix back to go get the other orb on B. Because that would give uh, Tina run it back. back. Yeah, Dagio's just sitting here, and I think that orb is still there. Yeah, and they still have yeah, Odin is. Spray, potentially, if they want to try and counterman that. But at this rate, let's see. They're not going to get caught up by that Guiding Light. But Joke's over. You're dead. Dead. there's the run it back. Tina does have the spike, so that spike if they could be in a very strange position, but it looks like it's going to be pretty solid. Tina, with that lurk, gets one traded out immediately, but Ruchi's there to make things in favor of UCSD. Force the Ruchi to the classic, finds the headshots. Wow, excellent stuff from the Brimstone. Salty Soap able to find one, but that should be all she wrote. Salty Soap left in a 1v3 situation. Guiding Light just came on, nearly taken down. Finds Three. one. And these players are split up technically, but they still have to find the one. There's one. Okay. Potentially 1v1's given. But they gotta get a move on it. No, can't find that locked on headshot. UCSD starting to run away with this one. Five to one here on Ascent. And you see why this is their map pick. Yeah. They play a style that not a lot of teams are ready for. This is a very... It doesn't look like it... But this is a very control-heavy composition. Or at least the way they're playing it is. Not a lot of teams are much into just sitting around, playing the wait, grab an orb, wait, grab an orb, and then we go somewhere game. Because a lot of times it just doesn't work, and you don't have a, uh, a way of just constantly maintaining pressure across the map. But by having the double duelists, and by having Phoenix be the one that gets the orb so often, you're just constantly applying, applying pressure. And that's just really, really hard for a, a composition like this to deal with. They do have a slight advantage for the side of Lilac, in the sense that they have Sky as a second uh, recon gathering agent instead of Ko, Because Ko would gather even less recon. But that's also making their stall a lot worse because they don't have either the zero point or the fragment to actually slow them down. And I like what you said about controlling for UCSD. That brimstone, like those smokes lasting a little bit longer, allows people like Tina to really get in and utilize that space to the best of their ability and manipulate the map and right put it in favorable position for both duelists. Lena's only four and three, still at the bottom, but they've been getting so much value. Now Lilac's Forced on a weaker buy. Knife's gonna be popped out for Luna. Just holding A. Just trying to hold as much information. Revealing area. As they can. You can already see the mistakes. You can already see the counterplay coming out a little bit more. They've pushed Sova up. They've pushed Omen up using a smoke. Jet being the only player on this A site is slightly concerning, but they'll still have control of tree. So that's at least something that can help. Luna's gonna get spotted out, so they know exactly where that is. Hot Hand's gonna be knocked out. Really nice flash, and that was a mow down against Luna. Salty Soap able to trade that out, takes down the opposing Phoenix. 
So a 4v4 situation, but the spike will be able to go down. It's going to be a very straight retake. Half by a really funky half by a judge, Spectres. Not a ton of information. Weaponary given to Lilacs that they want to get into this. Seekers are available for Salty so but they want to invest it, but they gotta start getting a move on now before it's too late. Paranoia from Giraffe. Try to clear a generator. We'll be able to find that pick, but it's going to be traded out. Lena still holding hell. Marshall in the hands. Opt for the Vandal is Care Bear, but it's going to be taken down. Lena still tucked in the hell. Still holding things to the best of the ability. The spike ticking Bad down. Will not have enough time as Ruchi and Lena clean things up. A 3k for the Jet and a 6th round for UCSD. I hate to say and it, already there, we get this other thing that Brimstone can do that Omen can't. Brimstone Spikes here. plan. Omen, a lot of times, once you get onto the site, you've probably used your paranoia in actually taking the site. So, outside of the occasional smokes, he's essentially just another body. But Brimstone, if you're not using your molly for the site take, which you have a Phoenix, you have a Killjoy, you have a Sova, why would you use the Brimstone molly? You have so much extra stall, and that's not even counting the orbital strike either. Blinded. Three ultimates for the defense. If they look, they want to get a second. Here comes the flash play. Not gonna spot anything, but there goes the A orb. Hunter's Fury available for Doggio. If they want to get aggressive or for post plant. But it looks like the spike's gonna the make spike. their way towards B, and oh my goodness. Tuxedo Sam is pushed out so far. Brought the 23 health. Able to barely stay alive. And already, that's messing with the rotations a lot. Sky going to rotate over to uh. help stop the push, and also because Omen and Jetta pushed out. But uh. he he's kind of messing with the rotations. Dagio brought down to eight health, and Luna's already holding mid, but They're won't be able to win that 1v1 against Ruchi. Seekers going to be invested for the defense, and Spike makes his way to the A, but. This is this map has turned on its head once again. This is a very strange rotation. The defenders are already here, but it's not gonna matter. Care Bear falls. Salty Soap stuck here in tree, trying to find anything. Tuxedo Sam in heaven. These two initiators trying to find anything whatsoever, but the spike's gonna go down. The playing drone. They're just trying to get farm ult orbs this rate. Spike planted. They really are. They have full control of the site, so they just give the spike over to Killsway. Why not? Everybody else already has their ult. Timeout already spent for the Sigh of the Lilacs. Terps looking to see if they can get anything done. Maybe a heroic play, potentially. Doggio's low, but not going to matter. A flawless round for UCSD. And they have surpassed Everyone six. They are on seven rounds now. Efficiency. Ha -ha. Just keep yeah, laughing. This is... This is starting to get crazy. I don't even know if Shroom will be able to get their ult online, but just the foresight to know that, hey, Killjoy's the only one without her ult. Let's just give her the spike plant because we have time and we're in a good position. It's just a great heads up play by UCSD. And it shows that they're thinking about more than just running it down. Uh, unfortunately, we do have a slight tech pause not entirely sure what it's for, but we hope it's able to be resolved relatively quickly. And speak of the speaking of it, we're it's resolved relatively quickly. They just didn't so, want to see our face, uh, Anima. That's all it was. Yeah, just keeping like us on our toes. Or more importantly, they wanted to see our face. You had people that just wanted to see our pretty faces, and not just hear our pretty voices. But here we go. A little bit of aggression for me. Man, this time, Doggyo misses the dark herb ball. Gonna go out. Hey. And Salty's stuck in wine now, and that's going to be really difficult to get out. Potentially trying to spam through, won't be able to find anything. Luna's forced to retreat. Hold that Sheriff in hand. Run it back, available for Tina. Going to get blinded up a little bit and burst it down with the help of that Sheriff from the side of the jet. But team, Lena's already on site trying to make the most of it. Ruchi's going to be able to steal that kill. Out 5v3 situation. Lilacs looking to retake as the spike goes down and dice. Good information from the cam, but it's at this price is it even gonna be worth it? Three players, two players stuck in hell. There goes Giraffe. There goes Tuxedo Sam in just a moment as Care Bear falls and Lena gets two. Tina gets one and Doggio cleans things up. 
There is so much wasted utility on the side of UCSD. And yet, flawless. Flawless? The run it back was shut down by the omen blind. At least one shock dart missed. The brims molly that I was talking about, how it's such a good post plant tool, was used to clear out wine instead of the phoenix molly, which is a little bit weaker, or a killjoy molly, which is a little bit more expendable. And yet, still flawless. UCSD is playing this so well. The most amount of deaths is four right now. Over the top two fraggers. And here comes Luna trying to go aggressive, looking for a play, but the jet counterpart and Lena will be able to take Luna down. And now Tuxedo Sam looking for a play of their own. We'll run into this Phoenix potentially. Could have the timing if Lena's not prepared for it. But Lena, Tina, pardon me, is completely prepared for the 3v5 situation. And Dokyo finding salty soap adds salt to the wound for the side of the lilacs. And now it's becoming desperation time. If it wasn't already, 8 to 1 here on round 9. Tina looking. This is so unexpected. Out for blood right now. And just as fast as the round started, it is over. Another flawless round. How many of these are we going to get? Have the orbital strike used? No. We have not. Knives haven't needed to be pulled, I believe. Hunter's Furies is still in the back pocket. The knives make sense. But, like, we haven't seen either the Brimstone or the Silver Ults online. I wonder if... I'd bet one of them is probably just to shut down the Killjoy ult. Right. But I'm very curious now. as to why the other hasn't been used. Tuxedo Sam still just holding on to this. Waiting for a retake situation. Waiting for maybe like the right lineup to appear. But right now it's just kind of going wasted. We are one away from the end of the half. Prowler is going to be good. Trailblazer is going to be pretty good as it's going to be a three-person push here towards Gelato now. Salty Soap going to be point of initiation with that Stinger. And I think UCSD know there's aggression here. No, no they didn't. Luna able to find that kill and Rucci held that spike down. Had that spike. It's going to go down and Tina's forced to back up. Backpedal out of there. A little bit of bunny hop and they're going to move that spike over to the B side which is completely empty. Yeah, They'll have to worry about the cross in from tiles but it seems like that's just going to be given up. The cloud burst actually enough to bring them back over the line. Uh, I think the spike plant gives... It does. It gives her another run it back. Oh, a third? Third run it back, I believe? Honestly, that's kind of like... As far as run it backs go, like, three is not that many. As far as any other ultimate goes, that's in, that's like absurd. Ha yeah, Tuxedo Sam able to get things down to a 4v3 situation. Tina able to even things out a little bit, but it's getting fits from both sides. But it's Tina and Lena holding the fourth down. 3k for the Jet. Giraffe left to do it on their own. So many things to look for. They are getting spanned through in this duelist duo over on the side of UCSD are playing absolutely phenomenally. There it is. Tina 2k. Lena 3k. Phoenix and the Jet, they are one away from making this an 11 to 1 half. And there's something to be said about just how, uh, just how the Phoenix ult is able to turn what looks like a player disadvantage into an even player count, if not up one. Because a lot of times, when you have a Phoenix running at you with whatever util they want to throw at you, they're probably going to be good for at least one. But you can also trade the Phoenix ult. Get out of the my Phoenix way. ult can get you information. It's just such a valuable tool, especially in a post plant situation where you're pretty much safe regardless. It's not going to be online for the rest of the half, though. This draft is able to shut down Tina for the first time in what feels like like eight rounds. Slowly pushing up, UCSD playing absolutely dominant for lack of a better word. And they're finally, the side of Lilacs are starting to change their setup. Here's the lockdown, the first four 
defense, but it's going to be countermanded by that orbital strike. That was what it's waiting on, but Luna trying to make a play, not going to work, even with the help of the Seas of Sam. The Jet and the Sova for the side of the UCSD, just too great. Giraffe able to get one, finds one on the cross. So Dog Yu does fall, but Hunter's Fury gone for the side of the Lilacs. Nothing to deny this spike plan. Nothing to even slow things down. The only good news is Lena is low on health. They're going to try to close this door, but Salty so can't find the heads. The lineup just not there in time. And that should be the spike being planted. The 3v2 situation. Such low health on Giraffe. Does have the from the shadows that they use it, but not much they can be used for. Slowly pushing out. Care Bear's gotta be the point of initiation with the little health they have. If they're able to get that Lena, it will be possible, but one so much remaining. to be done. It's gonna be Care Bear taking one down. Shroom able to find the low health omen, but five bullets remaining. Less than 10 seconds. Couple seconds remaining for Care Bear to get onto this. Can't find it. A 3k for the Killjoy. For UCSD, Shroom cleans things out, and it is 11 to 1 beatdown against. The Terps. Yeah, just a very, very strong showing already for the uh, for UCSD on their map pick. We were initially questioning why they would pick it after seeing Lilac have such a strong showing against a team that we'd already seen to be good. This is why. They're the there's number three good, seed for a reason. Ascent, and then there's better at Ascent. <laughs> this I mean, is we better. We talked about like the fact that oh yeah, Lilacs played against like a you know a, a young a, a weaker seed and like they went all the way you know 11 seed Grand Valley State taking uh, Terps Esports Lilac to you know 30 rounds and now you're seeing Navy with that momentum from taking that three seed they're pushing forward. Now as we switch sides, you're looking for something. You need something, anything from you're looking to Luna. Maybe get a huge pick. Come up with a 2 or 3k. They need the momentum. They need the confidence at this point. Going into the rest of the series. Because this is a best of 3. This is not the be all end all. We still have more maps to play. But Lilacs. They would love to go into. Either win this out. But even still. If they are not able to do that. Go into the next ha map. With some momentum. A little dash out from Luna. Gonna get blinded a little bit from the paranoia. Shroom. Rucci's pushed ahead, and that's going to be taken down. Tuxedo Sam able to punish that over-aggression from the Brimstone, so that utility is going to be out of the Those question. Shocks. Spike goes down. Salty Sam able, so able to get that down for just a moment. But here comes the retake. Looking for some picks. Doggyo and Tina able to find the first one, and Tina grabs the second. Shroom, the retake's great. The Frenzies go absolutely hard here for the retakers. Trying to clear these last two members out. Care Bear finds one, but Tina's still staying alive with a 3k for the Phoenix. Make it a 4! 12! Match point for the side of UCSD. And as you were saying, there is the run it back for Tina. This duo between Tina and Lena, they are absolutely devastating. So, they get the ult orb from B main because there's nobody there. One. They rotate over to A. Get four, no five, ahead. and then the defuse. Yeah. Just a typical day for UCSD Navy. And now they're running right Ouch. into the the stack of five lilac players. With <sighs> a phantom and light armor and both flashes. Don't hold back. 21 and 5 oh, for sorry, the star Oh, sorry, just one flash. Oh, 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 sorry, Nine. just one flash. But also the complete help of the entire team, and there is Lilacs just having to back up as fast as possible. One playing behind the hut, looking for kills. Tina finds two, finds three, and it's a mow down! Defenders win. Yep. That's Producer's that's not even ready for the standby to change the cams, and we're not ready either. That was a mow down all the way that's through, that's and UCSD Navy come out with a dominating win to start this quarterfinals off. Yeah. I have no words. <laughs> Nerdy Bird, do you have any words? <laughs> Honestly, earlier we discussed, you know, UCSD maybe don't go Ascent because that is where Lilac managed to 
be very successful. Granted, yes, it did bring it to 16-14, but they were very successful. However, UCSD was undeterred by the fact that that was the game that Lilac just came from and decided, nope, we're going to send. So that was UCSD's pick. Now, we got to, I don't know about you two, but when I was in the other chat room and I saw the map bands come up and the first band of Vine, I was like, yes. Now, the next map, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I could be crazy about this, but I'm pretty sure that the third possible map, actually, Janice, I think this is the one you spoke of, being Breeze. So, theoretically speaking here, you want to be rooting for Terps Lilac so that we next. can go to that map three, right? Lotus will be our map three. Breeze oh, will be our Lotus map three. So Anima's hoping we go to a map three, so we're hoping to see Lilac come up huge on their map pick of Breeze. Well, let's see if they're able to accomplish that. However, we will give them a quick opportunity to reconvene, talk with their coaches, their in-game leads, figure out what went wrong, what they can do better, and hopefully come back swinging so we can take this the distance and go all the way to Lotus. With that being said, we'll be back here in just a few minutes with more Aurora series, so don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to the Aurora Series First Light broadcast. We are currently in our first series of our quarterfinals here. M map one was on a sense. We had a change of pace as far as viewership because we've basically only been seeing Bind all day. And UCSD Navy had a dominant performance against the Terps Lilac squad. The end score being 1 to 13. And now we're going to transition over into Breeze. And with that, I have to ask where was we had some discussions about controllers. And I'm, I'm going to start with you, Janice. What controllers do you think we might see here from either squad? So, obviously, Breeze means Viper. I love playing Viper on Breeze. That is, like, basically the quintessential controller. However, again, this is a reworked Breeze, and this map has been changed a couple of times the last year or so. So there's chances you've seen, like, some weird compos compositions. You've been seeing some Astra, potentially, some Harbor occasionally. I don't know. But what I'm excited is what Animal was talking about, potentially a weird pick coming out of left field in a duelist. What are we looking for, Anima? Okay. So, we've seen that uh, UCSD like their double duelists. They like their kind of out there comps. I would not be surprised if we saw something like a Yoru or a Neon, given that they have two very talented duelists, and there's only one jet in the game. <laughs> okay, okay. Anima, you mentioned is seeing the possible yoru play but you didn't mention the neon i lean more into the neon on that and i wouldn't be surprised if we saw that either but with that being said it's going to be up to the teams and up to you two to call the action here for breeze so i'll leave it to you maybe we'll see the creativity come out perhaps we see some og strats as well at the end of the day it's up to the teams good luck you two thank you so much nerdy bird i forgot about Raina. Oh my god, I Reyna. Reyna I forgot Reyna exists too. This... Tina and Reyna is going to be absurd. Oh my god. Not, just, not and... even would, just is. Tina that's, and Lena, both the of them were playing so good. I, I, I can see a Reyna jet. I can see a a jet for sure. But like, yeah, Tina, whatever it is. But I, again, I'm really curious about these controllers because I feel like Viper isn't just the one play, one controller that we're going to want. As we about get ready into age and selection. I'm really excited to see what creativity we're going to get out of UCSD, but on the other side, Lilacs, they played a very mostly standard ascent, you know, a sky instead of that KO. So, I wonder what we're going to be looking at as we're now here in Agent Select, but there's the Viper locked in for Care Bear. Over on the side of Terps, Lilac. And, oh, Cypher. We forgot to talk about the Cypher. Can you just run me down how good Cypher is on Breeze right now? Uh, very good. That's it. The, the, there's not mu that much more to say. Uh, surprisingly, it looks like we're gonna get mirror comps. It seems like Tina is uh, actually the like sort of flex player, sort of the uh, the unstable role for the old BSG game changers squad. Uh, that's kind of why I was thinking Yoru because you have to have some sort of flash initiator. Uh, and depending on what you do for Breeze, uh, especially with Doggyo running Sova on Ascent. I wouldn't have been surprised if we went if we saw Yoru Sova. Um, but no, it seems like Team is actually going to take a little bit of a step back. Not going to be as aggressive this time. That being said, Sky is still pretty, pretty aggressive if she wants to be. It's it's a safe composition all the way around. You know, you have your Cipher and your Viper for controlling a ton of space. Choose your agent. And you're looking at Lena this time, looking to step up. But again, Tina was absolutely devastating. I believe 25 and seven over on the Phoenix that for the side of it on Ascent. But either way, Breeze will be our map pick again. UCSD Navy up 1-0. Winner goes to the semifinals. Terps Esports Lilac looking to play for their tournament lives. And as we get ready to go into lobby i mean again mirror compositions you're going to see some really standard stuff all the way through this is still on the current patch so it doesn't have like the halls open back up so you're not going to see some like big lurk plays that you see from like folks like i don't know staff like sierra that i saw their tweet where they're like oh i can't wait to lurk in halls again i was like oh you're one of those players yeah also something interesting so last map we had an omen a sky and a killjoy for lilac the sky is now on cypher the omen is now on sky and the killjoy is now on viper that was so a lot a of words of a... what the heck <laughs> you're right oh so my a goodness. little bit of role switching coming out from the lilac players which i'll be honest 
if it works, it works. Uh, I, it's not, like, super uncommon to switch roles like that. I just find it very interesting that you have two different players who are playing Sky on two different maps. Especially since one of them is a map that you don't usually see Sky on. Revealing area. Here we go. Lilacs on the attacking side. This is their map pick. Looking to play for the tournament lives. Viper wall out. Trailblazer out. Looking to try and clear Lena out from back. Gonna be able to take down one of those trip wires as Lena's forced to pull, pop the dash early. And here comes Luna onto the site. Spike's gonna follow shortly behind. Here comes a flash out from behind the wall. Lena able to get Tina able to get that first pick. Once again, going back to that form a second for the sky. Lena and Shroom clear things down. And it's up to Salty Soap on a lurk from B. Trying to see what they can get done potentially with that classic. We'll be able to find one, but it's not going to be much as they're brought down to 21 health. 4v1 situation, 21 health. This should be a pistol oh. for UCSD. Yeah, not too much you can do uh, with Hall still being closed off. That's one less off avenue of attack. And Shroom's just going to finish it off. Kill on Duke Premier. And UCSD just continuing to, to see. ramp things up. Grin, we haven't seen how they play defense. Uh, very much, because we only got to see two rounds of it. So I'm very curious to see how they play defense on a map like Breeze, where you can't necessarily always be aggressive, but you do have to figure out where you're going to get aggressive from. Again, this uh, roar for first light, we are not allowing the outlaw, so no little light sheriff, like, just mow down from one gun that costs 2400 So, sticking with just... Ghosts and specters for the side of the defense. Meanwhile, Lilac st stuck to classics. Very little uh. armor, but it's going to be Doggy with that share. Finding the first pick. Potentially going to get caught out. Finally traded out, but there's Ruchi for the help. Finds two kills, actually, and that Viper's going to back up. Two players remaining for the attackers, and they're going to fall just before I can finish my sentence. Yeah. They're not even going to lose any weapons because the only player that died lost a sheriff, and that was very easily recovered by Lena. Granted, I think Doggio is probably more happy with the vandal that she bought, but still, it's nice to it's nice to have a teammate who cares like that. It's an excellent bonus. Now uh, you know two like a bulldog and a vandal all the way through a stinger for Tina. You know not the greatest, especially on the performance on Phoenix. But Lena's already picking it up. Three kills, no deaths for them. But now lilacs, four vandals, a phantom. Mid seems to be the name of the game for salty soap. Is they're just gonna try to push. It was very slow default. And that'll be just it. Just nice and easy. Defensive wall gonna come out early, just slowing things down. And a Molly too as well. Rounds playing very slow for Terps Eve Sports. And I'm honestly not surprised. That UCSD seems like a team that if you rush into them, they're just going to have a chance to tear you apart. And Breeze is a map that exposes you to a lot of different angles, just like that one. Doggyo able to barely stay alive, but it's going to be Luna and Giraffe finding the first two kills. Finally, the Jets taken down. Take care of them. It's going to be a 4v3 situation. Salty Soap on this mid lurk. Not going to find much. Ruchi finds another kill. And Shroom's here for the reinforcements. 3v3 situation. Vandal's still in the hands of, of Lilax, but they're trying, they're trying to get a move on. And Giraffe is still stuck here. He's going to get a 1v1 situation. He's able to take down the Viper, which is absolutely huge. No one here on the A side for the side of UCSD, left. so Ma Lilac was able to get the spike down pretty yeah, easily. Three. Two shock starts available. I believe one Molly. No, no Molly, just the uh, orb. The draft on 5 HP is going to have to go huge. They're on a little lurk. Oh, never mind. Caught out. Could have been huge if they were able to get one pick, but this 3v2 situation, just play your life, I believe. Yeah, just constantly make the players for UCSD aware that they could be getting flanked at any given moment. For a pick, will have to find the first pick with that Spectre. So much damage done, but it's going to be Tuxedo Sam trying to hold things down, and will be able to do so. Giraffe with five, Sam with plenty of health, but it's only going to be these two members standing as Lilacs get onto the board. Alright, they have uh, tied their score from the last map. <laughs> 
Hey, and that round looked pretty well. They played that really well, you know. They you did. took a little bit of damage. I think the biggest thing was, like, they didn't follow their jet out onto the B site, but, you know, that it worked out. They were able to get their round win, forced to buy up three oh, extra rifles this nice round. Stuff. Now, win this gun round, you should be pretty smooth sailing to add, <laughs> at least play a little bit better. Get the momentum on your map pick. Plus, I really want to compliment the decision-making of Giraffe there on the sky, knowing when to split off from the team, how to play that 5 HP game the best that she could. And she ends up getting rewarded with it. A kill and a whole lot of damage, all from just being on 5 HP. And that's going to give them two away from the Seekers. And opting to potentially try and fight this 1v1. We'll spot the first head, but Tina will be able to spot the opposing Sky. Or we're going to come up just to slow things down. But this guy is still is the only player for the side of the Lilacs that are here on B. But Tina falling. Tina able to find Giraffe. That's going to be devastating. There's all the B side pressure. So it's just mid and A. The name of the game. And Lina still tucked into A. Has to be cleared out. If not, it's going to be devastating with the spike already here. Cypher spots the head. Trip spots the trigger. And Lina is... Not caught out, finds two, and there's the spike left in the open. A 2v4 situation. Tuxedo Sam looking to try and find anything as their Care Bear falls. A 3k for the Jet over UCSD. And they will win the first rifle. And again, it's Tina and Lena just continuing to wreak havoc on there. I believe that's another round where they got all five of the kills. Yeah. And Lena's just showing that she's really, really good at maneuvering around on the Jet. Knowing when to tuck, when to pop out, how best to exploit the various gaps that Lilac's executes have in not having a dart, or having a flash, or having a molly when they need to. And she's just been maneuvering around it perfectly. Playing this pretty slow. Now, even with the weaker guns, Lilac still want to just try and get anything done. It's going to be one lurking mid but it's gonna be an a hit all the way through a mid wall from mid to cut off the site in half this time it's a little adaptation potentially try and get this spike down as fast as possible but lena is still kicking and screaming finds two kills care bear left in mid to try and find anything we'll get one but that will be all she wrote as tina's there waiting with open arms four for ucsd and we're starting to see what happened on the last map and the timeout just already starting to spiral a little bit out of control. The money's great for UCSD. The timeout's already called. I don't mind it being called this early, but especially after what happened last map, I probably would have saved it, especially since the only two rounds you've lost in a row are a full rifle round, which kind of a toss up, and then an eco round that you're probably not going to win. Especially on Breeze, because Breeze is just super punishing for ecos in general. So I would have liked to see the timeout be saved for a little bit longer. Uh, I think at this point, like, you know, you, you just lost 13-1, right? On your opponent's map pick, but, you know, just want to slow things down. Maybe just allow the coaches, allow the team to just take a moment, relax themselves. Again, or, you know, at this point, just try, try your best, try to get on it. Change something up, maybe. I don't know. And again, I would love not... to see a mid-hit. <laughs> True. And again, we're not in the like the players' VCs. This is a player called timeout, not a coach called timeout. So, who knows? It might just be a timeout where you just go, "Hey, we're still in this. Just take a breath, relax. We've got three ults to play with. Let's make something happen." Instead of a, "Okay, we need to do this, 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 and this." They're actually really close to almost all of their ults. Yep, seekers and neural theft could be here already, and tuxedo Sam top fragging with. One away from that Hunter's Fury, which didn't get a chance to use it last m map, but this time, definitely useful here on Breeze. But there's the dart, looking for kills. Lena brought out to a little bit of health as they're dinked up. And Tina's here to help and try and ex help the extremities, but it's going to be Tuxedo Sam and Salty finding the first two kills. Use the SD from Doggyo. Here. From Ness finds one. There's a little bit more reasonable. Four to three. Luna. Finds the kill on Shroom as they were trying to just find anything. 4v2 situation for the side of the Lilacs now. They're 
starting to get a little bit. That's exactly what the timeout you needed. Rucci falling, not able to win that. Tuxedo Sam is starting to play on a different level, and that's exactly what you want to see from these players. Playing at the top of their game. Giraffe cleans things up. The tree. Such a beautiful skin. And that will be a second round for Lilacs. Very strong showing out of the timeout. That You're right. That is exactly what they needed. And they managed to get away with only using one of their ults. I didn't even realize that the Viper's Pit had been popped, but... It did. Uh, that's eight. Oh, that's eight. That is That's eight. an eight. I am blind. Five yeah. ultimates going to be available for the Lilacs, but on the other side, UCSD also has five ultimates. This is going to be a bloodbath, especially if this is going to go A, if this is a fast hit, which that Viper Wall is going to be invested early. Usually that's done like mid-round or something, but Dart's going to be able to spot one or two. Lena still looking, trying to find a first pick alongside Tina. These duelists are absolutely trial. devastating, but it's going to be the Seeker's going to be Hold invested back. first. For the side of the attackers, but Care Bear is able to take down the raid boss. Tina falls, but it's gonna be trades all over the rest of the map. Shroom and Ruchi able to hold things down before Luna's able to grab one, but the Viper still holding mid, still holding strong, but Luna's trying to make things up as best as they can. Another updraft. Care Bear finally here for the help, but it's gonna be Luna left to do it on their own. Objet. 1v1 situation. Nose Dogios has pushed on this site, and it's gonna be a race towards B. And it's one that Luna's going to win, and win quite handedly. That's the opportunity to plant for wherever she wants, wisely choose to plant for CT. Planted. It's a very ambiguous plant. She could be anywhere at this point, as far as Dagio is concerned. I believe Dagio still has that drone, has a dart coming up on a couple seconds, so... Utility to help clear a little bit of angles, but still so much to look for. It's such an open map, especially here on the B side, but Luna's not looking right now. Here's the dart, the clear back side. Dokyo on the tap. Gets it to half. Holding it, but it's gonna be looking the wrong way! Dokyo comes up clutch and gives a fifth round for UCSD. The money for Lilac should be pretty bad at this point. I, they will have knives to play with. Actually, no. Their buy is a lot better than I thought it was. Timing on that. Oh my god, Anima. That was close. Too close for comfort, but... Yeah, knives will be available for Luna, but on the other side, the m economy is starting to fully flourish. We're the side for UCSD. This has to be a round one for the Lilacs. If not, we might be looking at another ascent. I'll find them. Five ultimates online for the... for UCSD. They're not even going to invest the, pit, the Viper's Pit for the defense because they're going to just wait for the aggression to use it. They know they don't need to invest it early. And that's going to be all of A granted. You see Lena already pushed all the way through. Look at the Cypher Trip and Shroom here in the backside of B. Holding on as far as they can, but it's going to be nothing found for the Cypher. Neural Step going to be invested for the side of the Lilacs along with that Viper's Pit. The spike is going to go down into a 4v3 situation. And Dogyo, these shots are coming out so huge. Able to even the numbers and finds Giraffe. Seekers were already used in the last round, so not going to be available. But Dogyo, strong going to be invested. Hunter's Fury is needed, and Ruchi does have their own Viper's Pit if they choose to use it this round. But Dash are going to be invested into the pit. Viper goes. Luna in such low health, but Care Bear is able to win the Viper 1v1, 2v3 situation. But it's going to be a pincer to the back site. Luna and Dogyo. Have Molly to push in this pit. Not a lot of time. One Molly available. Tap into the spike. Spam through. It's, and there is plenty of time. I believe. Yes. A second and a half remaining. UCSD. Hold on. And they're able to get a sixth round. An excellent retake from these two players. I'm so good for Lilac until it wasn't. They had the 3v3 post plant. They had the Vipers spit up, but they just weren't able to convert. They got pins. They, they, they got pushed. They got they just trapped in that back site. It's absolutely devastating. And guess what? UCSD, still five ultimates. They didn't invest anything into that round because they don't need to. They are playing at such Get a high level, way. both in terms of mechanical aim and confidence. Like, this is a team that is going to be so scary going into semifinals if they're able to take care of business here in this series. 
still plenty of Valorant yeah. left to play, but Lena wants to make it as short as possible, finds the jet for the side of the Lilacs. 30 seconds into the round. Dokyo looking to get aggressive, finds the first crosser, wins that 1v1 against the Viper and is looking for more. Hungry for blood is the entirety of UCSD and it's down the Salty Soap left by themselves. And Dokyo is already pushing. Gonna get spotted out. Marshall headshot won't find anything. The spike is laid barren here on B and Lena. Holding it. Flawless victory for UCSD, Anima. And now you're you're in panic territory if you're a Lilacs. Here. Yeah, you've already effectively lost the half, and UCSD still have so much to work with. I'm also wondering if we're going to see Lena off at all. We didn't really get a chance to on Ascent, but and I, they, especially Lena. not like Breeze. If she's favoring the rifle over the off, that's almost scarier to an extent. <laughs> Hunter's Fury, Hunter's Fury available for Tuxedo Stam, still holding on for when they can use that, but it's going to be a defensive wall to hold mid for the side of UCSD. And that's just going to have all the Lilacs backing up, trying to find anything. Three towards A, Cypher on B, one holding top mid, Ruchi just holding this angle. The spike still over in A lobby. The nerves. It's just another slow Lock round. And now finally they burst onto sight, but they're being stalled by the Viper Spit coming out. Yep, towards doors, and Ruchi is going to be able to have a huge opportunity to mow things down. Lena finds one, Ruchi finds a second, but Salty Soap's able to trade that out. Hunter's Fear going to be invested for the side of the defense, trying to find anything. And yes, Tuxedo Sam is down. 4v1 situation, and Salty Soap gets their head chopped clean off. Eight rounds for UCSD. The round that they finally used these two ultimates, it ends up going pretty convincingly for them. I respect a little bit unsafe, but I like just weren't able to deal with it until it was too late. There is currently, I'm not sure about you, but there's like a sense of just like, man, you can tell when a team is just playing on a different level. They are playing above and beyond UCSD and the Lilacs. Like, I'm not sure if they're feeling the same feeling, but it is just weight weight in the shoulders weight in your chest as they are now two rounds away from the half they're looking to try and get anything on this attacking side but not great two marshals a guardian two sheriffs and more importantly on the other side tina and lena playing at a high level the ucst brimming with confidence and tina fighting tuxedo sam already off rip it's a mid push for the defense something you never see No hard for them to deal with. Sure, they've got players that can look to try and alleviate this pressure from the mid push, but with Lena fighting, they're there. And, there. One and enemy now Lena, everybody's falling. Long. Nothing is going right for the Lilacs. Nine for the board for you, CSD. Lilacs, the only hope Last they have is a 9 half. 3 curse, potentially. <laughs> but. Beyond that, they're looking towards Luna. They're looking towards their three ultimates. They still have not. Haven't got a chance to invest it. The Hunter's Furies is still in the hands of Tuxedo Sam. Neural Theft built back up. Seekers built back up for Giraffe as well. They will have full rifles and everything. But on the other side, Lena, Tina has their Seekers. Shroom has their Neural Theft as well. They need some picks. They need to push it. It's going to be a different hit. A B push this time. I've got your train. Looking to go very fast potentially. And they're running right into the cypher utility. There's no cypher on site to actually defend against it, but it's a full retake for UCSD, so a chance. There is a chance for the Lilacs to get this. They just gotta get the spike down. Seeker's gonna be invested now. For the defense. Looking to clear anything, and Lena falling is absolutely huge. Care Bear! Able to win that 1v1. Tina, however, there for the trade, potentially. But it's going to be stuck in a really strange crossfire. Able to find the first one. Crossfire isn't good enough. The trade isn't there. But Tina, able to find two, but on site. Giraffe and Luna playing absolutely huge. Doggy, Tina, looking to 
see what they can do. 1v2 situations now as Doggy has fallen, but it's gonna be Luna holding things down. The Lilacs get a third round on the board, and there is still some hope Switching here sides. on Breeze. We do have the 9 3. That's at least <laughs> something to hang your hat on. I, okay, I joked about 9 3, you know, but more importantly, that was a very, like, for, like, the shots wise, that was really well done. It's the execution the for death. the Lilacs. Like, there's yes. nothing to be wrong with, like, there's nothing to complain about for Terps Esports. Like, the biggest thing was, like, okay, maybe you want that crossfire to be better, but now you're on the defense. Now you're on a side that could utilize your Cypher Util, that could utilize that Viper Wall to stall things out. And more important, it allows the attackers to run into your crosshairs, and that's exactly what I think they were going to want. Luna holding a sheriff. That's going to be the fight towards A. Here in shop, jump peek for Luna. She wisely is just going to back out. Yep, playing the super safe, and hey, that's a nice little cam. That spotted one out mid. Or it was a Sova Dark, actually. But Luna, first shot, goes a little bit wide, won't be able to find anything. Guiding Light doesn't either, though. But the reinforcements are already here. The Sigito Sam already here to help out. This wall is just giving the attackers so much space to jump up on. I, we're going to have to talk about this after this because Tina just, just bursted on with that. Onto the site. Excellent stuff coming out from UCSD on his attacking remaining. side. And Lena, hungry for blood. So is his entire team. Double digits inevitable for UCSD unless Salty Soap can make some classic magic. <laughs> Lena going to have the kill I'm stolen here. by Dagio at the end right there. But ultimately, it doesn't matter. It's another Come flawless pistol round for I UCSD. I really like that Viper wall. Again, I was talking about earlier, I love playing Viper here on Breeze, but that wall that I saw came in, coming from the mid pillar, um, crossing over doors and over yellow box. It's a very yeah. good wall. I, I've seen it quite wall. a few different times on the new Breeze uh, as a way of both dealing with mid and splitting A. Help. And it just always seems to work out relatively well. With the one caveat that you have to have a way of actually clearing the conventional part of backsite A. UCSD on the attack does have the rifles bought up this round. Flash not going to be able to spot Here. much. Cross over. Those footsteps are going to be hurt, but if you look over at the B side, they have pushed all the way through B main, and they are murking their way as far as they can. Giraffe, however, going to get taken down fairly quickly as UCSD have pushed all the way through A. Tuxedo Stam here on yellow, trying to find anything. A right click from the classic won't be able to do much. Spikes can go down. 3v5 situation. No guns. And the location spot out. Amali can push through. Ruchi grabs one, finds a second as Lena helps finish things off. A flawless round for the side of UCSD. They are two away from taking this map and bringing themselves to the semifinals here in Aurora. Again, just a very strong showing. Another flawless in a row. They're just not making any stupid mistakes. They're playing the advantages that they're given. And yeah, it helps that Lena and Tina seem to be one of the advantages that they're given. But Doggio has also come up huge. 15 and 4. This entire squad is absolutely a force to be reckoned with going into the semi and semis and potentially finals. And even a player like Shrimp, whose numbers aren't the greatest right now, a lot of those are just because she had to pretty much stay as the solo anchor on that one site, and yet she's still possible and still has not died. Unfortunately, I can't really say the same for the Lilac players in this interaction. Tuxedo Sam able to grab one with that Guardian, but this first rifle round, not going to be given much. Traps able to get a couple cute little headshots, but it's going to be Salty Soap, Phantom in hand. Looking for anything. A chance, potentially, but no utility to help clear things out. Cypher set up all the way over on B, and his heads, they're going to be hidden from him. Flash out. Nice little dodge, but it's going to be Tina and Doggyo cleaning things up. A 3k for the Sova, and we are on match and series point, folks. Match point. Again, just really strong purchase. The timeout going to come from coach for Turf's Lilac on map point, trying to stay alive in this tournament, trying to force a map three, trying to bring us to Lotus. A 
the question isn't whether or not they can try to do any of these things, it's whether or not they can. And right now, UCSD look to say that that answer is they can't. I like need to figure out a way to work their way back into this, but when playing up against a team like US UCSD with so much pace, they have to figure out something different on defense because it wasn't working for them on a set and it's not really working here either. I love the word pace for UCSD because they're playing. They're able to just switch their pace at a moment's notice. They play super passively. You saw their own attack. They played a really spread default. They play super slow. Then they all group up and they burst onto the site like that. Over on their, even on their defense, on their retakes like that. You saw how good they are. How communicated. How well like coached they are as well. But Lilacs, again, still a chance. But it is, it is a shot in the dark. You know, and then the guns aren't going to be great. A judge, you can see in Salty Soap here on B. Tuxedo Sam will be able to buy out that Vandal, but I'm sure UCSD are very much feeling like a cool cat. I got this spike. Almost forgot the spike. Well, here comes the defense. They got to make a stand. Flash out, trying to clear Doggy out. Doggy, a nice little move, but that's going to be it. The Sova goes down, and that's going to have UCSD backing up all the way towards that B site. Running into the judge, potentially. But the noise should be heard by Tuxedo Sam here in short. Cool. Yeah. It's only a judge online with Salty Soap. Yep, and it's going to get caught off by that Trailblazer. But the first kill is going to be found. Looking for a second. Too many people to look at. It's going to be a trade. Cypher for Cypher, but the people advantage still in favor of the Lilacs, but the spike is down now. Camera going to be taken down for Shroom. Luna backed up. That dart did tag two. Potential. So oh, Tuxedo Sam's got to come up huge, find these kills, but Carrier is able to find one. one. Tina, however, takes down the Sova. The, Trailblazer the dog. kill. Dog kill alert. Dog kill alert. Feeling like a cool cat, but that's going to be the defuse starting to make its way for Luna, but it's going to be Care Bear cleaning things up. A crucial round win as Terps Esports able to keep themselves in this map just for the time being. Care Bear drawing closer to her Viper's Pit, going to keep that in the back pocket. That could be very, very important for later rounds, but they've still got to get through this round yes. first. The buy is not the greatest. There's going to be some uh, inconsistencies, a lot of light armor, but it's Raze. It's not the worst map for light armor. Nope, and it, it's a reasonable, like, weaponary, like, weaponry all the way around. So three Vandals, a Bulldog, and a Phantom. That's not bad at all whatsoever. And Giraffe has that Seeker. It's great for the retake opportunity as we prepare for a B hit coming from the side from UCSD. Playing nice and slow, trying to just find and work my way anywhere. That's not uh, what Lilac's doing though. They've already sent two out A main. I know exactly yeah. where. able to find that first pick and Lena dodges and weaves. Tuxedo Sam animal unable to find the pick. The Fender sided. Secret's gonna be invested. A draft able to find one go. kill. Cannot find the second 2v4 situation. This is it, folks. Lilac. Left to do as much as they can. Care Bear. No Sorry so much. Oh God, All to use. Hunter's Fury gonna be invested. Gonna attack two. One That's it. Remains. Gonna be Luna. Finding two picks. So some decent damage, but Care Bear is left to 80 health. Not a lot of armor. 1v2 situations. Can't find that second kill. 3k for Doggy. And that will be a 13 for demolishing here on Breeze. And UCD, UCSD Navy will be moving to the semifinals. A very great showing for them on both their map pick and their opponent's map pick. They will, in fact, be moving on to the semifinals tomorrow. And I cannot wait to see them there. <laughs> they look very, very strong and if, like a force to be reckoned with. But this is a team you, you don't, don't want to hear play. Our thoughts on them. We have Nerdy Bird back to share their thoughts as well. Okay, so Lena and Tina, I know for a fact I'm never going to run into you in any form of casual play or ladder <laughs> play, and I feel very grateful for that because they are a dynamic duo that's a force to be reckoned with for sure. And tomorrow, as far as UCSD Navy, they're going to be going against Waterloo. The only other game thus far that has finished was the game between Scarlet and Waterloo. Ended up being 2-0 in favor of Waterloo. So 
We know one of our semifinals is going to be between those two teams. It's still up in the air whether or not it's going to be North Tec Texas or Conestega going up against Carlton or Phantom Tax. We'll have to wait and see how those ones shake out. But my goodness, I mean, we started out on Ascent. Very dominant showing from UCSD. It was 1-13. to And then here on Breeze, a little shaky at some points. I mean, of course, you want... At the end of the day, every team wants to 13-0 or, you know, get the get the 13-1 maybe. But it was a little bit in, more in favor of Lilac at different points in time. And having them actually, you know, get to that three-point mark. I was like, perhaps we're starting to see, you know, the, the swing of the momentum, that pendulum going back in their favor. But unfortunately, it didn't shake out that way. And they did make it far enough that I believe they'll still be getting circuit points from this regardless. But now we just get a look at UCSD. How they're going to post up tomorrow against Waterloo. I'm really curious to know like what's going on in their minds right now. I believe that's our second and third seeds now going to be going up against each other tomorrow. What do you two think about that? It's going to be an explosive match, first and foremost, all the way around. I mean, University of Waterloo did have two close maps, a 13-9 victory and a 13-10 victory. And, well, you know, we just saw UCSD absolutely demolished, giving up only what uh, a total of five rounds towards the terps the rank six terps esports lilacs but either way i'm really excited to see really excited to see ucsd play this aggressive and really patient style their ability to transform into whatever team they want at a moment's notice that is something that cannot be underestimated yeah and Animo, i'm just what are your thoughts oh sorry go ahead I'm, <laughs> no, I'm just eager to share uh i'm just so glad that we have quality players in the scene at a collegiate level it's something that i wasn't the most aware of uh up until like relatively recently but even just seeing players like lena or tina or doggio or even like quite a few of the other players that we saw both in this match and others like luna was playing very well too it was just she happened to be on the losing team but seeing that we have good players in the collegiate game changer scene is really inspiring and i hope more people uh, use it as a way of like showing what they have and branching out into the competitive scene. I 100% agree. And if anyone is interested in joining in on these tournaments, it is while we do want it to be school specific, it can be you can have three members of your school at minimum, and then the other two can be from outside of your school where there is this is a circuit series. So first light is the very first one we have we have two additional tournaments and then a last chance qualifier that will then lead into the big tournament we have at the very end so if anyone's interested now that was so adorable if anyone <laughs> is interested if this is sparked interest if you realize you have enough friends to get together that go to your school you can start forming a team do it now that's the encouragement i give to anyone i mean chase your dreams do what you want to do you want to be I can't say curse words on broadcast. You want to be a really good Valorant player and show off? Well, then do it. Come here, show us what you got, and play your heart out. Hopefully everyone here, regardless of where they ended up in the divisions, whether it was knocked out in group stage or are a, uh, at the beginning of playoffs, they walk away knowing that they are, A, good players, and B, have a lot of opportunity to learn, because that is what most of these are all about, is if you don't finish at the very top, and even if you do, you always want to walk away knowing that there's things you can improve upon and knowing that you tried your best. I'm just, in, I, I completely agree. You cannot have said it any better, Dirty. Like, it's just an honor to be around here, even um, both as a player, for talent. Everyone here has been absolutely phenomenal, and I'm just really excited for another day of matches tomorrow because this isn't it. We still have plenty of matches tomorrow. We have both of our semifinals, and we have our a third place match and grand finals happening tomorrow after, which is something you guys absolutely don't want to miss. We are still, once again, waiting on what matches those will be, especially for our other semifinals. But right now, I mean, we just saw U UCSD play so well and we've seen a couple of the other teams we did see carlton we did see north texas early on today so whatever we're gonna get tomorrow it's going to be lights out i actually just refreshed the bracket to see if anyone's entered in more scores unfortunately the other two games that are happening perhaps are going the distance on their maps and maybe just started map two or are into map three i don't know it's up in the air on those but anima if you were to make a prediction as to who you might think we'll end up seeing in grand finals what two teams would those be it's so hard to bet 
against UCSD after what we just watched. <laughs> I'm excited to see Waterloo, though. I hope that... Uh, I don't know if their match will be streamed or not, especially since we just streamed uh, their opponent's match. But I'd like to see what they've got. Scarlet was a very good team that, unfortunately, I don't think was able to close it out against uh, Carlton. But if Waterloo can 2 Scarlet as convincingly as UCSD 2 the Terps Lilac team, then that should be a very interesting one. And while I don't know who is going to make it from the other side, I wouldn't be surprised if the winner lives on this side of the bracket. All right. Very bold prediction. And Janice, right before we're jumping into interview, I'll give you a chance to to support whichever team you think might make it into Grands. Do you have a prediction? I mean, I mean and Anima said it best. The way we just saw UCSD take down a very good opponent in terms of esports lilac. Again, they are, have no slackers whatsoever. 2-0, a dominating performance like that. I will not be surprised to see UCSD take it all and win first light. Well, with that, with these encouraging words coming from the R casters, we will actually have the opportunity to talk to Doggio, one of the players for UCSD. It will be joining me for an interview. You two are, I believe, now free. You can grab food and relax. Unless I'm crazy, right? I'm not crazy. We're not. Free oh yeah, quite yet. we're not. We got, we, we're gonna hang out a little bit longer. We got a little you bit to deal with us. To do. I'm crazy. With that being said, you two can take a short break, rest your voices, and I will have a chat with Doggio. Hi, Doggio. Thank you so much for joining me here on broadcast. Hello. All right. So I have to ask this question. I always ask people. So Sova, we saw you consecutively two maps in a row playing Sova. Is that your main agent? Are you typically playing the initiator role for your team? Uh, yes, currently I am playing the initiator role. I tend to fill a lot for the team, but our team is pretty confident in what we play. So we just usually stick to our roles. That's completely fair. And one of the things that with casters and I were discussing before we jumped into your guys' first best of three series here was the idea of what maps we thought we might see coming from your squad and what maps you might want to avoid. But one of our casters actually straight up said, maybe don't go Ascent. Your team chose Ascent. And I, I want to know, is that a map pick that you're very comfortable on? Because it seemed like your team knew everything you wanted to do 100% of the time. Yeah, so we always banned bind that was like our bind like pick for like every single like play that we do is always like bind is like out of the map pool and i would say that ascent is like our most comfortable map we have scrimmed it and lapped it the most and our players know like what we want to do and what we should be doing when we have whenever we play ascent so i think that's like our most comfortable map pick well, it definitely showed on broadcast. The casters were saying time and time again how much of a dominant force your squad was. Now, tomorrow, you are slated to go up against Waterloo. What are your thoughts regarding that game, that matchup? Are you nervous at all? Or are you just straight up excited and going to go at it this be uh, with a kind of calm state of mind and just approach it the best you can? Um, I believe that we were all pretty nervous, like since it was like our first tournament together. We didn't know what we were like getting into and just looking at other teams, we were just like kind of nervous the whole time. After we've won the past like four matches, I think we're pretty confident. And we're still very nervous about like playing Waterloo, but I think we'll be okay. Well, if you get, if your squad was nervous, we didn't notice it. You guys played phenomenally. I look forward to seeing what you bring to the table tomorrow and for the remainder of the Aurora Series circuit that goes on the rest of the year. That being said, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful uh, rest of your evening because I don't think I'll be able to interview again, you, interview you again today. <laughs> thank you so much for having us. All right, so the dichotomy <laughs> between the Houston interview to the UCSD interview. Wow. I am can, shocked. Can I just say, I this was my reaction when I heard, oh, yeah, this is our first tournament playing together. Yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. The way, like, I have been complimenting, like, their, like, their, 
like the pace they play at and how like well they've been doing able to get trades and how well they're just able to like just instantly communicate because let me tell you it is not easy to like communicate with a team especially if you're just starting out and for this to be their first tournament to go like yeah we're just gonna roll over like that man that's a testament to both to every single player all the like coaches or whatever they have man that's so cool to hear what are your thoughts about the uh, inter- about the interview responses that we had there, Anima? I'm I'm on the same page as Janice. I heard that that was their first like tournament together, and I like it took me a bit to process that because I was just like, oh yeah, it's like yeah, that's just what teams do. Wait, no, this is like their first first tournament together. That's absurd. Like, like Janice said, they play so well fundamentally off of each other that it's really easy to think that this is a group of like seasoned veterans who's been like competing in tournaments for a while and like have like years of built-in synergy but nope this is just their first time with that in mind it's being their first tournament that they're playing together and i anticipate we'll see them in the follow-up tournaments that are here for the aurora series and this is their ground floor so to speak (laughs) I am going to be thoroughly impressed the next time we get to see them. Obviously, I am impressed right now by the sheer caliber and cohesiveness that we got to see from these players because I was floored, blown away the entire time. I was very, I was enjoying being able to watch that. And as I previously mentioned, also begging that I never get the RNG to run into any of them, even in casual play. That was scary. I'm, of course, complimenting their squad. I wish them luck tomorrow against Waterloo. But I do think we all should take a quick break, relax a little bit after all the chaos we just got to see. So, yes, we are going to do that. Um, Actually, wait. I misinterpreted words earlier. I I am right with in regards to we are going to officially take a break for the rest (laughs) of the day. That's what I was referring to. Like, you don't have to do play-by-play and you don't have to do analysts anymore. So thank you two so much for joining me and to everyone that joined us today. Come back tomorrow. We have more Aurora Series First Light. We're going to bring you the semifinals, the grand finals, the third place match as well. So you'll definitely want to check in to see those games. If it's not on broadcast, odds are one of the players will actually be doing their own POV, of course, on a delay. And we want to give a huge thank you to Xfinity for sponsoring this event. Before we say goodnight, Anima, Janice, is there anything you two would like to say? Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm right there with you with hoping that I never run into them in ranked. <laughs> that would be awful for my RR. Uh, yeah, would I say something sentimental about thanks for having me on and woohoo, I'm really happy to for like this to be like such a cool event that I could be part of. No, nah, I just hope to not run into those players again because man, that, those that's my are only freaks of nature. <laughs> that, that's my only takeaway. It's like great experience, like lovely environment. I enjoyed working with everybody here, but like keep keep them in like their elo and me in mind. And also, may I just say shout out to our entire like staff today. You know, we have reached that, and Kale over observing again. Nerdy Bird, thank you for hosting all the way up, and of course, Sar- uh, Sarko Pels. I don't know how to pronounce that, but thank you for being a producer. This has been a fun day. Indeed, it has from all of us here at Aurora. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you tomorrow with more Valor in action.
We'll be right back.